department president for 2019-20, and because of the pandemic, we ended up extending that period a little bit. So I guess now I'm president for department 2021, um, which is something that I really hadn't counted on, as I'm sure all of you haven't counted on, uh, returning to many of your positions. But I just want to welcome you to our first uh, virtual fall conference, and this is a way for us to share information uh, keep in touch and for the members to be able to learn and view information at your leisure. We've got a great, uh, a great conference planned for you. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you'll give us feedback on it. And uh, the best thing ever is you don't have to do this all at one time. You can sit down and you can watch a segment that uh, is particularly interesting to you. You can do it when you want to, while your dinner's cooking, you know, while you're watching your grandchildren. Uh, at your leisure. So just sit back, get ready for some, some good information. Um, we welcome, welcome each of you. And like I say, please give us some feedback on how you like this because this is a format that we can add information to our YouTube channel um, as we go along during the year. So I realize that this year has been a challenge for all of you. I do want to thank everyone for pulling together, thinking out of the box, and keeping the American Legion Auxiliary at your unit running. Um, your mem all of our members, each one of them, makes things happen for our veterans, our children, and our community. So we are the greatest organization. We are very proud of Department of Florida. So enjoy the videos, and thank you for being here. Our department chaplain will now lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today, even if it is not the way we are used to. Our world has changed, but we are still working our programs. May each of us embrace the changes and learn new ways to do things. May our members always keep our veterans first in their hearts. We will support them in their time of need. They are special to us and are our fallen soldiers. We need to keep their families strong and protect them through the storms. We ask for your guidance, wisdom, and strength as we continue to fight for our freedoms. We ask that you heal our country and our souls as we battle through the biggest storm ever. May you show us the path to take to continue to our goals. All this we ask on thy holy name. Now, our Department Assistant Sergeant-at-Arms, Lois Glosh, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All rise for our national anthem.
Department Constitution and Bylaws Chairman Kathy McMullen will now lead us in the preamble. For God and country, we associate ourselves together for the following purposes. To uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. To maintain law and order. To foster and perpetuate a 100% Americanism. To preserve the memories and incidents of our associations during all wars. To inculcate a sense of individual obligation to our community, state, and nation to combat the autocracy of both the classes and the masses, to make right the master of might, to promote peace and goodwill on earth, to safeguard and transmit to posterity the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy, to participate in and contribute to the accomplishments of the aims and purpose of the American Legion, to consecrate and sanctify our association by our devotion to mutual helpfulness. And here's our National Executive Committee woman to introduce some very special guests. Hi, I'm Michelle DeGeneri, your National Executive Committee woman. And it is with great honor that I have the opportunity to introduce our next speaker. Nicole Clapp of Glanbrook, Iowa, was elected National President of the American Legion Auxiliary during the organization's 99th National Convention held in Indianapolis. Nicole joined the ALA as a junior member at age four. She's held numerous leadership positions in the organization at the unit, district, department, and national levels. At the national level, she served as 1987-1988 ALA Honorary National Junior President and chaired many committees and served special appointments, including National Finance Committee Chair, National Children and Youth Committee Chair, National VNR Committee Chair, Future Focus, Focus Committee Member, and ALA Centennial Strategic Plan Committee Member. She's also served as the National Vice President in the 2018-2019 administrative year. Nicole graduated with honors and distinction from the University of Iowa where she obtained her bachelor's degree in nursing, followed by a master's degree in nursing administration. She then relocated to Wisconsin for a 22 year career at Grant Regional Health Center. She's board certified in healthcare management and an American College of Healthcare Executive Fellow. Clapp was named the Wisconsin chapter's Young Healthcare Executive of the Year in 2004. She was also recognized as one of Becker's Hospital Review's 50 rural hospital CEOs to know in the United States. A 44 year paid up for life member of the American Legion Auxiliary, Glanbrook, Iowa Unit 127, Nicole is eligible for membership through the service of her grandfather, Roger Schroeder, who served in the Navy during World War II. Nicole's journey in the ALA started because she wanted to hand out poppies in exchange for donations. The little red flower is what attracted Clapp to the ALA, but its mission is which is why she stayed. As a junior member, Nicole recalls how she felt each time she went to visit veterans and saw the smiles on their faces. Nicole still has that same feeling while serving on mission today. Once again, it is my honor to present to you our distinguished speaker, National President Nicole Clapp. Hello, Department President Ann officers, members, and guests of the Department of Florida. It is a pleasure to be with you for your conference. Our 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, once stated, our lives are in the midst of alarms. Anxiety clouds the future. We expect a new disaster with each newspaper we read. Oh, how true are those words, just a mere 150 plus years later. If we think about this year, we know the COVID pandemic, along with protests, some that have turned to riots, have interrupted our lives, but not our resolve. We are here, united together, to do our mission work. I would not be standing here as the national president if our collective resolve with Vice President Kathy Dottestill from Kentucky and friendship and mutual respect were not in play. It is our duty to lead and serve our members in the new century of service, 
no matter what our new normal entails. We are here, as you recall, back in March. I was at the halfway point. I had 33 trips completed, planning to come to Florida for department convention, and 33 more trips. Well, we realized life is anything but normal this year. So I'm very glad to say that the, all the national officers, national chairmen, and all but a couple national committee members are continuing to serve in their capacities all the way to National Convention 2021. And many of the departments have followed suit as well. I'm very honored and privileged to be serving as your national president for a second year. Our members have demonstrated their duty and resolve by making thousands of face masks, delivering and preparing meals, hosting blood drives, scrubbing graffiti from historic monuments, waving at drive-by birthday parades, and the list goes on. Our membership team's Caring and Sharing Week took on a whole new meaning this year. I know personally I made over 60 some phone calls to members across the United States. We wholeheartedly embrace technology as we're doing today. I choose though not to total up the number of hours I have spent on Zoom or go to meetings since March. But it was quite inspirational if you think about this. One day I attended the virtual ALA Girl State program in Hawaii and the next day I was at the program in Rhode Island. I know that would have not been possible without the use of technology. Remember our virtual Poppy Day program? What a huge success. Just being able to think outside of the box. We as the American Legion family are made up of common looking people with a purpose. Well, President Lincoln also said, common looking people are the best in the world. That's the reason the Lord made so many of them. I fast forward that statement to today to mean the American Legion family, three million strong. With the passage of the Legion Act and spousal eligibility last year, and now new members from the Space Force, our membership opportunities continue to expand. I want to congratulate you, Florida, on making your 2020 department membership goal. Way to go. I am so proud of you. Realizing that as our year progressed, not many departments, nor us nationally, did we get to celebrate our 100th anniversary celebration. How many businesses and people do you know that celebrate their 100th birthday for two whole years straight? Well, I'm here to tell you we are going to celebrate all the way to Phoenix. And so with that, we realize that our membership, we can only do so much virtually. Things like this, but we're all about the human touch in our relationships and our organization. So I've got my fingers crossed that I will see many of you in Phoenix, if not before. It is my privilege and I demonstrate my commitment to you and my passion and knowledge to lead the ALA into this century of service by celebrating our accomplishments. We continue to celebrate a century of service while we are focusing on the health and well-being of our veterans, military, and their families. I'm very proud of all the efforts you've accomplished in Florida, and I want to wish you well. Please stay safe, wear your masks, and I will see you on our travels in Phoenix, if not before. Thank you very much in service, not self. Thank you and have a wonderful conference. Hi, my name is Michelle DiGennaro and you're, I'm your National Executive Committee woman. It is my honor to introduce to you our next guest speaker. After a year long national search, the American Legion Auxiliary was pleased to announce that an executive director for the national headquarters located in Indianapolis had been selected. Kelly Circle joined the organization on November 12th, 2019. Her responsibilities include management of national headquarters staff and operations, physical management of assets, working with the governing board and its chair of the national president and building external relationships. Circle graduated with honors from Northwest Missouri State University with a bachelor of science degree in psychology. She earned her Juris Doctor from the University of Kansas School of Law and completed her PhD in education at St. Louis University. Her dissertation, dissertation research, College Choice of Veterans, Variables Affecting and Factors Veterans Consider When Choosing Their Institution of Higher Learning, helped her gain insight into the wants and needs of veterans returning to school. 
Dr. Circle has spent the last 13 years in higher education administration, most recently as Dean of Instruction at Red Rocks Community College in Lakewood, Colorado. Kelly's leadership philosophy is one shared of governance with collaboration, communication, and respect among all constituents. Where there is an environment of mutual respect and open communication, the best ideas come to the surface, Circle said. Kelly Circle joined ALA Unit 153, Olith, Kansas in 2006 to honor the service of her father and mother who met while serving in the Navy. Circle served on a variety of district and department committees as well as second district vice president and president before moving to Colorado in 2013. She's been honored to serve four years on the government staff at Girls Nation. It is my honor to introduce to you our national executive director, Dr. Kelly Circle. Greetings from American Legion Auxiliary National Headquarters. It, I'm so excited and honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to participate in your fall conference. I can't believe that it's been almost one year since I joined the staff here at National Headquarters and what a year it's been, right? Uh, certainly didn't turn out the way that I initially expected, but it's been even better, I can say that. Uh, I've just been overwhelmed with the creativity and dedication of our national staff. They have been absolutely wonderful through all of the turmoil, all of the changes. They have adapted and improvised, and it's been great. Hopefully you have noticed the staff working on virtual events, and we have changed a lot of our mission trainings to an online format so we can still connect with our members, and our members can connect with each other and share, continue to share ideas. Our staff is also learning the software that runs those meetings and trainings. They are learning how to operate it behind the scenes so we don't have to hire a third party to come in and run our meetings. That saves us money. Every time we do anything online, we're saving money because of the staff's willingness to work hard and learn a whole new set of skills that they had no idea they were going to learn a year ago. I also want to thank the unit members. The unit members are the lifeblood of our organization. Without you, we wouldn't be here. And I am amazed at the creativity and dedication of every single unit member out there that has adapted and improvised to continue to work our mission, no matter what the challenge may be. You guys are doing great work with the creativity that I've seen with members making masks for their communities organizing drop-off food drives, organizing calling campaigns to reach out to those who are alone and just might need a friendly voice to talk to. So thank you for all that you're doing and keep on doing the great work that you're doing. Continue to help each other out, help each other with the technology, reach out to those who can't make it to meetings, help them to stay connected with our organization so that we can continue to be strong. The National Headquarters is here to serve you, the members. Every member counts. We want to hear from you. We want to connect with every single member. So please share your ideas, your thoughts, anything that you have. Just know that we are a phone call or an email away. So thank you again for all that you do. Thank you for inviting me to your fall conference and keep going. We're going to make it. And once again, here's our National Executive Committee woman. Hi, ladies. My name is Michelle DiGennaro, and I'm your National Executive Committee woman. Since my article in the October issue of Mail Call, we've had some exciting news from National. The newly designed National website is getting closer to production. Stay tuned for the official launch date. The American Legion Auxiliary Fund application has been updated and it is available online. The new process will allow members to receive the help they need much quicker. In other news, ALA National has been awarded $75,000 from the Child Welfare Foundation to support national scholarship funds. The ALA Academy live training has been a huge success and look for more virtual training to be available. During the NEC meeting held virtually in late August, President Nicole created and the NEC ratified two special purpose committees, the National Code of Ethical Conduct Review Committee 
and the Inclusion and Diversity Committee. The next step is to reach out to you, our members, and find qualified individuals willing to serve on these committees. Log into the My Auxiliary Member Portal at www.alaforveterans.org to apply by December 31st and help make a tremendous impact on the future of our organization. One last thing, on November 14, 2020, get those governing documents ready and commit to reading them for the ALA National Read Your Constitution and Bylaws Day. That's it for now. Thank you for allowing me to continue to serve as your NEC and everyone. Have a great year ahead. And now I'm sure we're all very excited to hear from our wonderful district president. Hi y'all, I am Kim Edens, um, District 1 President. I am here with some great, great auxiliary members from our district. I didn't want this video to be just about me. I want it to be about what we are about, a family. Sisters, brothers, and um, our veterans. I am wanting to introduce um, some very fantastic auxiliary members that are here with me right now. I want to welcome past department president Edie Harrington. Sit. Yes, ma'am. Sit. <laughs> Our district chaplain, Jana Staples. She has done an amazing job for her first year, going into her second year as a district chaplain. Sharon Lavoy. She is our Girl State District Chairman, and she has done a wonderful job. Thank you, Miss Sharon. In my district membership person, sister, Connie Hendricks. And as you can see in the back, this is some of our auxiliary members from the district. Some come from Navarre, some are here, some came up the street. And we have a couple junior members, and this is their first time doing a fall conference. Emily, if you girls would please stand. Emily and Rachel Wagner. Yay! So last year was a good year. Um, I want to thank um, past district president Pat Carpenter for stepping up to do some installations while I was going to boot camp. Um, we really appreciate you, Miss Pat. Um, we had got most of the installations done. Uh, we had a, in December, our department president, Ann King Smith, came, um, and she brought a lot of the rain and weather weather, but we were able to visit most of our units, um, with her. But the week before she came, we, in our district, had a horrific terrorist attack here in Pensacola aboard NAS Pensacola. We lost three of our active duty sailors to this senseless act. Our district pulled together to offer a safe place, a safe haven here at um, Post 240. For those of us that are waiting to hear about our, our family, aka my husband, and our friends and other families that were aboard NAS to find out if they were safe. Six and a half hours later, we found out my husband was safe and our friends aboard NAS were okay. We reached out to all the first responders and offered them a big thank you for stepping up to help take this terrorist out. We offered them to come in and we fed them and gave them hugs and we cried and we pulled together as a family, as a community, as we should have. Should not have taken a senseless act of terrorism for us to be able, you know, to pull together, but we did. 
So, out of the 14 units here in the panhandle, we only have, unfortunately, four units to do the reporting. We have a lot of units that are still recovering from Hurricane Michael. But I am proud to say within our district, we had almost 30,000 volunteer hours. We, in the district, served over 460 veterans and their families. Um, we had over 100 hours for Girls' Day hours. We had over, well, we had $2,425 towards Girls' Days just in the district. Um, <coughs> and we had over 4,400 miles driven by the auxiliary members. We had two scholarships that were presented and that was from Unit 382 and Unit 75. It's over $4,000 in scholarship money that was awarded to these individuals. So now we are in to 2020-2021 year. And as most of you know, this has been a hard year for everybody. But I would like to get a give a big, big shout out to all of our unit officers that stayed in place and, have, and the ones that have stepped up for the ones that could not stay in place. During the pandemic, our units have continued to keep working our programs. And I personally want to thank each and every one of our units, our members, for helping out with these programs. Other than that, you know, um, our membership in District 1, as of today, which is October 19th, 2020, we're a month and a half in for doing renewals and stuff, and we are already at 41.73%. Mm -hmm. Keep the great work up, ladies and gentlemen. And most of you know, here in our district, especially here in Pensacola, Hurricane Sally has hit us and hit us hard. We are still doing our recovery. We are still trying to help out our fe felon, fellow Legion family members, our community, as best as we can and can. A lot of us have damage of our own, but we put that aside to help out our brothers, our sisters, our veterans, and our community. We are F-L-A-L-A -L -L -A strong. We are District 1 and we rock. Yay! I respectfully submit this video on behalf of District 1 members. God save our country. God bless our troops. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Unit 217 Quincy 
104.80%. And Unit 241 sneeze at 117.24%. Let's give them an applause. Unit 13, Tallahassee, keeps the food pantry at the VA clinic stocked for non-perishables, for um, veteran transit veterans. On Veterans Day, Unit 13 may time to celebrate the sharing of apples, oranges, and uh, homemade Valentine cards from homeschool kids in the area. And all the veterans receive Valentine cards and fruit. Unit 13 collects, buys, and makes buddy baskets for the veterans when leaving the veterans housing facilities. Buddy basket items are essential for veterans to start a new life in their new home as baskets are filled with shower curtains, sheets, bath towels, kitchen towels, uh, cleaning supplies, and etc. At Christmas, Unit 13 purchased 52 gift cards for the veterans at $10 each. Unit 13 collects stuffed animals to distribute to the local authorities of children of domestic violent cases and partners with local funeral homes to supply stock Christmas stockings to the veterans abroad. However, this year, due to COVID-19, stockings will not go to any of our vet veterans abroad. Special uh, holidays are served, Veterans Day breakfast, copy distribution throughout the city of, for Veterans Day and Memorial Day, for chaplains ceremony, Memorial Day service in the local and national cemeteries. Auxiliary members assist in special services held at senior and assisted living facilities. Unit 13 hosted a district-wide reporting and how to write narratives this past year. All attendees appreciated the extra help on writing our reports. March is designated as Women's History Month. Unit 13 successfully held the second year an appreciation luncheon for women veterans to let them know they matter and to acknowledge their accomplishments. Unit 13 supports the honor flight by volunteering with breakfast before departure and welcome the veterans and guardians back on their return trip. Unit 13 participates in sending delegates to the Girl State program and we're happy to play, uh, announce that in the past several past years we have been able to uh, send an over quota delegate as well. January 2020, Unit 13 held an ABC school with five units represented. With anticipation, Unit 13 will be hosting an arts and crafts show for post, at Post 13 on Saturday, October the 24th. Proceeds for table rentals will go to the purchase of chairs at the Tallahassee National Cemetery. Unit 82, Lanark Village sponsors a weekly food sharing project called Farm Share. Their post is the distribution point of four local areas. When the food arrives, post and auxiliary members divide the food equally into four shares. These shares are transported to the surrounding areas within the county. Lanark Village is responsible for distributing the fourth share to their surrounding communities. Items distributed are fruits, vegetables, dairy, beverages, meats, etc. for the local citizens to pick up for their family needs. At Christmas, Unit 82 report supports several nursing homes with gifts requested by staff members for veterans and non-veterans. The auxiliary cooks made to order hamburgers every other Friday night. The profits help with the Christmas presents for the veterans in two nursing homes 
Eden Springs, and the St. James facility. Also, they donated $500 to the Big Bend Coalition for the Homeless in Tallahassee. Also, Unit um, 82 prepares, participates in sending a delegate to Girls State. Unit 84, Havana, has had a very busy year. Major projects including placing flags on veterans' graves in Havana, Cemetery for Veterans Day and Memorial Day, placing a wreath at the Medal of Honor recipient in Quincy in December. Unit 84 participates and gives, to, t gives 10 to participate within, um, within approximately $100. Unit 84 holds an annual Christmas dinner for the homeless and at-risk veterans serving 100 to 150 veterans and their families. Unit 84 assists with Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners for veterans in the forensic unit at Florida State Hospital in Chattahoochee. One of the members sews comfort items for veterans at the Lake City VAMC. They also send toiletries of ditty bags, all totaling arrangements of approximately $800 for two shipments per year. Members assist families with shopping uh, doctor's appointments, preparing dinner for the ill, and helping the family when a new baby arrived by furnishing meals to buying toys and books for the boys and magazines for the mother. Unit 84 joins Unit 82 with a fundraiser and a joint dinner for the department president's visit. They continue helping members and community with cleanup after Hurricane Michael. Unit 100. Mariana has been very busy this year. Even though they are small, they keep on going due to age and illness. Monthly, the auxiliary members take a cake to the raffle at their monthly social. During the holidays, the auxiliary sells chances on gift cards for Walmart and other items. During the week of Veterans Day, three nursing homes are visited to honor veterans with a pen, certificate, music, drinks, and baked goods. Coffee, fruit, and cookies are taken to the VA clinic regularly for the veterans to enjoy during their medical visit to the clinic. The week of Valentine, the auxiliary takes sorted baked goods to the VA clinic for all to enjoy. Also, Mary, uh, Mariana Unit, 80, Unit 100 gives a scholarship to the Chapala Junior College. The auxiliary honors a senior graduating class at Hope School annually with a pizza party, gift cards, and certificates. Unit members distribute poppies during Memorial Weekend. Unit 100 participates also in the Girl State program. Mariana continues to work through the destruction of the path of Hurricane Michael. Unit 217 Quincy serves coffee and donuts every Tuesday in the, at the Tallahassee VA Clinic. These ladies drive approximately 50 miles round trip weekly to ensure our veterans are welcome and arrive when they arrive and that someone cares. In November, the Legion and Auxiliary prepared six boxes to be distributed to disabled veterans in, for, at, uh, uh, for the elderly. Dinner was served to the Usher Union at Gaston County on, on Veterans Day to veterans and their families. In December, the unit hosted an annual Christmas party for local um, guests. February brings the unit's annual signature fundraiser, the Love Breakfast. It's the biggest fundraiser of the year for the Quincy unit. Attendees enjoy grits, eggs, bacon, sausage, 
pancakes, fruit, toast, you name it, and you will not go away hungry. Poppies are distributed on Memorial Day, followed by a dinner from the Legionnaires. Unit 217 volunteered hours add up to 4,314. Also, on a sad note, Unit 217 Quincy lost two members this year to COVID-19. Unit 241 Sneeds. They start the school year out with flag education at Sneeds Elementary with 100 students attending, including two post members. They demonstrate how to properly fold the American each student receives a bad bag containing a mini U.S. flag, presidential ruler, and a flag pamphlet. October 31st, for Halloween, Unit 241 holds an annual Halloween party. It's a safe place for the children to celebrate. They served last year 373 guests for a total uh, expense of $471.88. The requirement for all attendees is that they wear a Halloween costume. Halloween 2020 this year, because of COVID-19, will be a drive-through. The kids will receive their little ditty bags with the candy and etc. but no one will get out of the car. Unit 241 gives annually copy paper to Sneeds Elementary School, Sneeds High School, Grand Ridge, and Victory Christian Academy with a total of $425.90. $500 was given to the Sneeds High School volleyball team for travel expenses to the state tournament, and the team brought back the state championship for the sixth consecutive year. A $500 donation was given to the Sneeds High School Foundation to assist with the annual student trip to Washington, D.C. Sneeds holds a school staff appreciation luncheon for four local schools, serving 180 teachers and assistants with an average of $919.98. Candy was purchased to participate in two Christmas parades at a cost of $208.86. In February, 100 volunteer veterans uh, in February, 1,000 Valentines were made by Sneeds Elementary School and for the hospital residents, including approximately 125 veterans. In addition, 1,513 Valentines were made by unit members and distributed to 10 veteran medical centers, nursing homes, hospitals, outpatient clinics, with a total cost for supplies and postage of $121.71. Beginning of this fiscal year, 241 discussed and approved making a cross made from PVC pipe as flag holders for placement in the veteran cemeteries and two local cemeteries. After contacting the post, 241, they joined and provided both physical and financial assistance. The unit has had up to six work days in this construction of 200 flag holders. The unit participates, anticipates approximately four more additional work days to construct approximately 50 more placeholders and continue placement in the cemeteries. The unit placed three cross, completing with uh, placing the American flag on each grave site, is scheduled for November the 5th through the 16th. At this time, approximately 200 volunteer hours have been incurred and an estimated cost of $1,000. Now 
now for our current 2020-2021 COVID-19 pandemic blew in with March wind, canceling all activities, not just here in Florida, but around the world. We're slowly beginning to break through. District 2 is beginning to reopen. Several posts took this time to renovate, clean, reorganize with the help of the auxiliary. Some of the units have completed officer installation and others have meetings in various places as uh, restaurants, open air seating areas, and don't forget the Zoom. Sneeze Memorial hosted the District School of Instructions on September the 12th, 2020. Sneeze did an outstanding job arranging the tables to ensure we complied with social distancing and everyone wore their mask. Membership is an ongoing, long-term operation. And we're still hoping that this year we will achieve 100%, hopefully for all of our six units. We have been affected with the destruction of COVID-19, either mentally or physically. We ask for God's will and grace to carry us through. Respectfully submitted, Neil. This is Bette Chavis, also known as Elizabeth Chavis, President of District 4, American Legion Auxiliary, Department of Florida. And I'm going to take you on a very short tour of our very large district. We are a very combined district in that we do have units in bigger cities such as Gainesville and Ocala. We have units in the resort cities, Homosassa, Crystal River. We have units in little rural towns, such as where I am standing in Bronson, Florida, Rural Agricultural. And we have units in Hawthorne, Florida. We have units in Inverness. We have units in Newberry, Florida, which is which outside, uh, right outside of Gainesville. So there's a little bit of everything in District 4. Some are large, some not so large. And I'm going to take us to Unit 16 in Gainesville first and give you a short overview of what they've been up to. Annually, the Auxiliary at Unit 16, every November, does what they call the Blessing Bucket event. This is an event where they bus in about 50 homeless veterans. They feed them a full Thanksgiving dinner hot turkey, mashed potatoes, every vegetable, all the sides, all the way to three and four kinds of pie. They provide a food closet for them to take with them. They provide wardrobe. They have donations from all over Alachua County for these people, male and female veterans. They have a barber on site there to do haircuts. They have a hairdresser for the ladies. They provide a five-gallon bucket that they fill with a ground-proof blanket, a pillow, hygiene items, the usual, we all know what those are, gloves, a hat, batteries, and assorted other things they come across. When these veterans gather for this event every year, it's a heartwarming, absolutely incredible day. We had the pleasure of having Department President Ann King-Smith joined us for it last year, and it was once again an incredible day. This year, sadly, it has been canceled due to COVID-19. They will not allow that many people to gather in the building. So next year, it ought to be a really festive extravaganza. We, 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 we are not going to tour every single unit. But I did want to emphasize the Blessing Bucket event because it is something special. Very, very special. And people just walk away from there in tears of happiness. We all are doing many of the same things during the COVID crisis. We're doing yard sales. We're doing bake sales. We're preparing for the holidays. We did the backpacks for the school kids. We are now doing Christmas donations for the school kids. And 
this is what we all do. We are also preparing gift bags for the VA in Gainesville, our crafty units, our knitting and crocheting hats and lap blankets. I have a lady in Homosassa who does quilt. She does lap blankets for bows. And it's a terrific district. They are all doing something. The post I'm in now is doing something called Buckets for Baghdad. It's a golf ball and golf equipment thing that they send to deployed troops and veterans who are home stateside. I can't get into it right now, but it's another amazing thing that you may never have heard of. I just want to thank every single person in District 4. We have an amazing district, and I'm a very fortunate district president to be able to say I enjoy going to every single unit. I thank the department people and President Ann King-Smith. Couldn't do it without you, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, my name is Annie Anderson. I am the 5th District President. This is our 2020 media report of the units of District 5. As we all know, this pandemic has hurt all of our auxiliary units. Several units within the 5th District could not even enter their home posts since these posts did not open their doors until September. All the units did hold their elections by ballots with drop-off in the post parking lot. Several units asked their officers would they stay on in their position and then notified their members if that was fine with them. Some posts opened their doors just for the unit's election which were held within the CDC guidelines. The district has several units with older members, and it was very hard for them to have their election because these older members refused to come to the post or vote by ballots. Since the posts are now open again, these units had their elections, and all the units within the 5th district have been installed. The units are given back into the swing of things for their fundraisers, meetings, and get-togethers. The units are collecting items for the holiday baskets for needy families. Unit 9 has roadkill bingo every Thursday evening, is collecting items for soldiers, a, uh, soldiers angels in collecting specific items for Hubbard House and the unit juniors planted poppy seeds around the post home. They are getting ready for their fall carnival and Thanksgiving gift baskets. Unit 54 has their monthly dinners and will cook extras that will be donated to the first responders. Unit is collecting items for joy of giving baskets in which they provide 25 holiday dinners to Nassau County families in transition. The unit will participate in the Nassau County Veterans Day Parade and is collecting items for Adopt a Soldier program. Unit 88 is waiting on word about playing bingo at Deerwood Assisted Living and their monthly visits to three VA clinics in Jacksonville. The unit had their annual fall festival for the community and the members of their post home. The unit has counted and sanitized with a UV wand $6,425 in coupons. The unit is getting ready for the holidays. Unit 129 holds bingo every Wednesday and Friday afternoon, collects box tops, coupons, medicine bottles, and paper for recycling. This unit raised and sent $5,000 to Unit 551 in Lake Charles for their members that lost everything during Hurricane Laura. Then the unit had a car wash, bake sale, and for members' donation, raised over $1,500 more to be sent to Unit 551 in Lake Charles because these members got hit again with Hurricane Delta. Has donated $1,000 for the Tots for Toys program and will be hosting the Military Children's Cable presentation in November. Unit 137 is now able to have fundraisers because this post did not open until September, collecting items for the holiday baskets and having dinners and breakfasts. Unit 194 
to the fact that their home closed was not opened until October 1st. The unit was able to participate in the St. Augustine annual cancer walk, is collecting and mailing coupons, had their first meeting, and is getting ready to collecting items for the holidays. Unit collected coupons from district members to be donated to the Friday Lassen nursing home. Unit 197 has not been able to meet because their home post is still closed. Like the other units, these members are collecting items for the holidays. Unit 202 had their first meeting in August and members are participating in the community trunk or tree, bake sale, garage sale, or Thanksgiving baskets and participated in the Friday night eat in or take out dinners. Unit 233, their home post opened back up in, on August 29th. The unit sponsored a Kentucky Derby party. Members attended their monthly meeting via Zoom. A member picks up bread and goodies from Publix twice a week and delivers these items to veterans, families, and friends throughout the community. Unit 244. This unit has older members and tries to have their monthly meetings, but the older members, it is very hard at the moment. They do not want to attend, and the officers believe it will get better within the next year. Unit 250 participated in farm share program and distributed 185 meals to their community. At their first meeting in August, collected school supplies, collected 35 string backpacks, binders, etc., and is planning on a Halloween trunk or treat party, participated in the breast cancer awareness by decorating bras in pink, had their 13th annual children Christmas and families in need by month and raised over $3,035. Unit 283. Members donated professional clothing to the Northeast Women's Veterans Association. During Sunday breakfast, they are serving the first responders at no charge as a thank you for their service. Participated in a happy birthday parade for a courageous four-year-old who was diagnosed with cancer. Collected school supplies and donated 80 backpacks. Some members walked in the making strides for breast cancer and had their children's Halloween party, donated refreshments to the volunteers who replaced the veterans' roof, a home roof, collecting non-perishable food items for the Arling Community Food Bank. Unit 316 is still serving steak and salmon dinners twice a month, hosted the first district meeting, and at that time, Bernie Luke, a 316 member, received the Bully Award from the District Commander for her outstanding work during 2019 and 2020. Collected school supplies, cutting and county coupons, donated several pumpkins to fly the Alaska Nursing Home, celebrated Oktoberfest, and will have an annual witches' brew dinner with a cake roll. Donated over $500 with the Post family member's donation to the mother of a member whose home was devastated during Hurricane Laura. Had a great fundraising dinner, silent auction, 50-50, and raised over $1,200 for the mother of said member whose home got more damaged during Hurricane Bay. Unit 372 is trying to get fundraisers together. The unit will have a new president. The current president had to resign due to work schedule and health reasons. Unit 373 is still collecting mini soaps, shampoos, and other hygiene items for the mobile homeless shower unit in Jacksonville. Unit meeting has small attendance due to the COVID-19, and the unit is trying very hard to get fundraisers going. Unit 401 collected and delivered 10 for 10 school supplies along with book bags, and collected and donated activity items to a local senior citizen center. Provided funding and purchased a lift recliner for one of their elderly members. Conducted an essay contest and various topics about the flag and will present the award to the winner on November 7th. We'll have two Christmas basket raffles, one adult-oriented and one child-friendly. 
will hold the annual free lunch with Santa in December. For God and Country, Annie Anderson, 5th District President, Department of Work. Hi, I'm Mary Minos, District 6 President of the American Indian Auxiliary. I would like to present my year end report for the year 2019 to 2020. Um, we had, of course, seven units that did not report. So I only received six units out of our district, which is very disappointing. However, the units that did report did a super job. Unit 10 reported donations of school supplies to Osceola Elementary Schools. They moved their poppy season and set up cans in several locations. They assisted their riders on several runs for a fallen Marine killed in an accident. Lost veterans and first responders. They assisted their post home renovations by hosting Monday Night Bingo. They gave out candy at the city of Kissimmee's Halloween event and did a trunk or treat on the post lawn. They did an early dinner for membership sign-ups. They did a Christmas angel tree for 60 women and children at the Batic Women's Shelter. They gave food to a children's home located in Kissimmee. They installed smoke eaters in the post canteen in January. After January, the coronavirus stopped all activity at post Henry. Unit 19, in conjunction with the post family, they supported food, clothing, and monetary donations volunteering to help as needed. Members help clean up the post home and attend functions to help support their efforts. Some members assist homeless to find location for them to move to different locations other than where they are presently residing. They had vets get rid of old furniture and then receive new furniture, clothing, and food as needed members assisting with community projects and volunteering man hours for different charities. They were sending one girl to Girl State. They volunteered to help posts with cleaning and sanitizing due to the virus. Members have also volunteered at OPT, OPD, and senior citizens' homes. Unit 80. Their budget project this year was an AEF fundraiser. They raised $110,000 for the AEF after much hard work, hosting parties and donating baskets. Their Reads to Course America was a success, and they raised $800 to send to the Reads program. With their help from the Community Rotary Club, who gave them a $2,000 donation, they were able to place 1,185 wreaths on veterans' graves in the local cemetery. They are sending boxes out to two soldiers. They have sent 20 boxes a year. They support the local food pantry by collecting non-perishable food items. With the help of the riders and the sons, they have donated 500 pounds of food. Members participated in the town Christmas parade. They did a yard sale to help expenses of the wedding of a couple held at the first. Unfortunately, after their St. Patrick's Day dinner, they had to close the post due to the virus. Unit 219, Goodman Park. They celebrated National Make a Difference Day in October by delivering 300 jars of peanut butter and a check for $300 to the local food pantry. $50 to hospice, $50 to the Haven for battered women, and $50 to the Salvation Army. A $200 donation was sent to Holy Trinity School. They covered 130 graves at the Leeds of Course America program. They raised $1,060 for Boys and Girls State program. The Post family held a vet fest in February to honor a deceased past commander. The VA and R program donated items to the Orlando VA. A vet in Claremont, $200 for lost his home in the fire. $250 to the National Commanders program and $500 for service dog book. Events are posted on their Facebook page. Unit 286. In April, they had a children's Easter parade and sent cookies and donuts to the local school of teachers. They went to the ROTC ball and awarded scholastic and military awards.
They distributed copies and were helped by the Legion on the, the sons and their Miss Papa. They held the Father's Day dinner for close members. They held the back to school party in August and gave out 100 backpacks filled with school supplies. Celebrated Fran Wrigley as a 50 year member and multiple office holder in the ALA. Sent out boxes overseas to soldiers with special ones for women. They sent supplies to Fisher House. They had a, a Thanksgiving dinner for anyone who would not have family present. They did a children's Christmas party, did food basket, and an angel tree. Each child was given a gift from Santa. They attended our ABC school, and then it was March, and all activities ceased. Unit 330. They sent the American flags, American pins, and booklets on the Constitution with a column about the flag to local schools. They collected $77.60 for the AEF. They did school surprise for Teachers Appreciation Day. They visited Camp Boggy Creek and donated $500. They donated 4.1 pounds of tabs to Ronald McDonald House. They did $27,286 in coupons. Members made lunch for active duty soldiers at the armory. They did a Christmas tree and presents for armory soldiers' children and served dessert, and they took down the tree after Christmas. They baked cupcakes for the local fire department, distributed copies, and raised $4,756. Posted events and news on Facebook. They went to Lake Norman and played bingo with the vets. Made food for the veterans retreat at Saddle Ranch and placed wreaths on graves for wreaths across America. Pillows and blankets were made and donated to veterans. Unit 347. They held, they held new members initiation for 93 new members. Held an Oktoberfest dinner. The auxiliary provided a barbecue lunch for all veterans on Veterans Day. The unit collected feminine and personal care products for homeless women veterans. Thanksgiving and Christmas food baskets were donated to 50 families through the local schools. The cost was about $9,000. They collected 135 toys for the Toys for Tots program and they did an appreciation dinner for all Toys for Tots workers. They provided 34 children from low-income families by doing an angel trip. They also sponsored a children's Christmas party at the Honor. 300, Unit 347 donated $500 to Food and Park Unit 219 News Across America and helped with their new ceremony. Another initiation for 275 new members was held in December. Sergeant Pam Kelly, a permanently disabled veteran, was given a house in the villages. $3,000 was given to the fund to help with items for the home. Government Day was celebrated in Lady Lake Town Hall on January 20th. Students from the 7th grade middle school held a mock town hall, and two of their items presented will be implemented in the future. A computer station software to support children from ages 6 to 12 was given to the Lady Lake Library. A fashion show was held in February and $2,000 was raised for Hunterford. In March, a Williams a Women's Veterans Luncheon was held and 85 female veterans attended. Commemorative plates were given to all veterans. 347 was going to send the girl 10 girls to Girls State and pay for lunch for all girls and staff at a cost of $3,600. Can tabs were collected and given to schools. Coupons valued at $203,000 were collected. Six students received $1,000 in scholarships. A Little League team is sponsored by Unit 347. Three local food banks received a check for $150 each month. Also, food is donated to these food banks. Several members volunteer at the local veterans clinic. Snacks are provided to the patients. That was what was reported last year. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you all the units that reported. May I please state now, all units, please, please put in your reports. It's very important to the organization. This is for every district, every unit in the state of Florida. 
please put in your report. It is very, it's vital for us to get our funds from Congress. Thank you. Hello, this is Faye Kirkland with District 7. We are located in Central Florida. We are a small district. We have seven units and are awaiting the charter of an eighth unit. We have approximately 1,028 members and we're very excited about this eighth unit joining us. We, our membership is doing very well this year. We have most of our units around the 50% mark and everybody is working hard to keep that membership growing. That's how the auxiliary is going to continue to grow and work for our veterans if we get out there and encourage our members to renew their membership, encourage new people to join us and work very hard to let everybody know just what we're all about. Some things that have been going on in our district this year um, really excite me because we have a lot of diversity in our district and each unit has some unique ways of meeting the needs of our veterans, our communities, and our posts. School supplies is a big thing for all of our units. Many of our children, as you know, have needs that often cannot be met in the home. And so each of our units, in its own unique way, helps provide school supplies, uniforms, backpacks, and other items that our schools need. This is done through fundraisers. This is done through asking bingo um, participants to bring supplies in. There's just many ways that this is done and it really helps our, our schools and our children out. Another way that we are helping our community is with the first responders. First responders are so important to us, especially now during the COVID. We need to let them know every day how important they are and how much we appreciate them. And the auxiliary does a great job of doing that. We've had cookies baked, dinners made, cards written, signs posted, all manner of things just to let our first responders know that we appreciate them and thank them very much for the job that they do. We support our Legion families. Each unit does many things within their post to show the post how much we appreciate them. The post is very gracious to help the auxiliary out in many ways and we all we show them our thankfulness in return by helping them we are all a family and by acting like a family we all work together very well and things get done and that's what we are all about we um, have christmas coming up as you know quickly <laughs> and so we are getting ready in all of our units to help families at christmas each unit, again, has their own unique way for doing this. Many help um, uh, needy families in their area. Many find veterans who need special help and meet as many needs as possible. And so a lot of work is going on right now to help with Christmas. One of the ways that I know is being done this year is to work with the Blue Star Mothers. They are providing stockings to send to our deployed soldiers and the, the some units are providing things to fill those stockings with granola bars soup packets anything that the soldiers need we are providing so that the gold star mothers can pack them into the stockings and send them overseas to our soldiers another way that we're working with the blue star mothers is to help them with other activities that they have going on to support their programs. We're also working with the Gold Star Mothers. Um, they help very much with McDill Air Force Base. Um, they recently had a fundraiser there where they auctioned off baskets. Um, things were provided for the baskets and other, other ways to help the Gold Star Mothers. It's such an honor to work with these ladies. Veterans Day is coming up soon. We have lots of different programs going on in this district. Um, Veterans Day programs scheduled um, with social distancing um, as ways to honor our veterans and let them know how, how precious they are to us and how special they are. Even with the COVID virus and the social distancing, we can still get out and show our veterans how much we appreciate them and how thankful we are for them. Um, each year, I know of at least two of our units have fashion shows as a way to raise money. Post 72, or Unit 72, I'm sorry, um, has a big fashion show that um, 
we raise money for um, President Ann's honor flight, and it will um, be happening again this year. And I know Winter Haven um, is also has done the same thing. Um, the VA hospital in Tampa, James A. Haley VA hospital, has reached out to several units, and we are working with them. Um, we are providing gift cards for the veterans who will be in the hospital over Christmas. Usually there's a big gift packing party and lots of people working the program, but because of the COVID, people are not allowed in the hospital. So the way they're going to handle it this year is to give gift cards to each person who is hospitalized. And we have bought um, gift cards to provide for this activity. Um, they also ha are having a baby shower next week for pregnant veteran mothers that come to the hospital for care and several of the units in fact our district had a baby shower for that and are providing um, the items to the hospital for that baby shower um, we will be, be providing gifts for veterans for christmas for needy families for christmas thanksgiving meals for needy families within our post um, some of the posts have thanksgiving meals right at the post and the units um, help provide the food so that we can feed people right in the post. Um, and Unit 72 has just found out about a mother of a deployed soldier who is a guidance counselor at one of our schools. Um, she fell at work and injured her foot pretty badly. Her husband is deployed. deployed. Um, she is alone here in Tampa. We are, we are helping her with um, everyday as essentials, emotional support, and we're also going to be helping her at Christmas and Thanksgiving. As you can see, our small district is small but busy and mighty. We are excited about everything that we can do to help our veterans. We are excited about working together as auxiliary members for the betterment of the auxiliary, and we are just very excited to always, always, always let our veterans know how much we appreciate them. Again, for God and Country, this is Faye Kirkland, District 7. Thank you. That is our battle call in District H as we rev them up for membership. It drives the Legion members crazy, but we do it anyway. And we have fun, too. During our District 8 meeting, September 19, 2020, we all dressed up as Rosie the Riveter. And we had a District 8 membership training class on September 26, 2020, and put on our leather and do rags. It's contagious, too. Unit 24 Bradenton had a Halloween dress up meeting last month. Unit 69, Avon Park, received the membership award with 108% by May 2020. I presented them the District 8 plaque and enjoyed a delicious lunch at their post, along with my district officers and the members of the unit. How awesome was it that the home unit of Department Membership Chairman Terry Gallagher received the award? Our district did very well too. We reached 100%. Ann King Smith visited our district at the end of February. We had a phenomenal visit. We laughed hard and we laughed often. I took her to 12 of our 13 units. While we were visiting Unit 69, Avon Park, a couple of Terry's Stuffed mascot monkeys made their way to Ed's car. They were officially monkey napped. We took them to every unit we visited with many stops along the way. We took their picture on a locomotive, dartboard, hiding with a bunch of Easter stuffed animals at the airport about to go on honor flight with a homeless veteran and his one-eyed dog, an animal crematory, and many, many other compromising situations. Pictures can be seen in the Mail Call magazine, August 2020. Of course, Terry wanted her treasure monkeys back. So her unit started collecting ransom. And all, they raised $800 and donated it all to Honor Flight. They received her monkeys back unscathed. I made a flying pig painting and the Unit 24 sold raffle tickets during our journey and collected nearly $600, which they also donated to Honor Flight. All in all, our district raised $3,000 for honor flight. What a way to take off. During the 2019-2020 year, we had four ABC classes. They were well attended and the teachers were awesome. All of our units gathered and donated school supplies, both last year and this year. 
Many units went to nursing homes in Bay Pines Veterans Hospital and brought lap, blanket, lap blankets and bags of goodies. We could also be seen at airports welcoming home the veterans as they landed from their honor flight trips. A few of our units signed up new male members. They were all welcomed with open arms. I know that a lot of us were apprehensive to allow males into our previously all-female organization, but they are proving to be a wonderful asset. We had several veterans sign up and were accepted for honor flight, but unfortunately the flights were canceled due to COVID-19. Unit 325 Pelican has a very special member, Cookie Agin. She came from Arizona and immediately jumped right in. She volunteered to be girl state chairman, which they had never had before. She raised enough money to send two girls to Girl State in a few short months. How do you ask? Well, she contacted a local cemetery that has 1,600 veteran graves and also contacted Reads Across America. And after much hard work, she single-handedly was able to make Mansion Memorial Cemetery in Ellington, Florida, the 101st officially recognized Reads Across America Cemetery. She, with the help of her unit and post, was able to place 450 wreaths on the graves of veterans. She organized a phenomenal ceremony and had the mayor of Palmetto to be the honored speaker. She is now working on this year's ceremony. She is going to all of our events and has a table set up to sell wreaths and offers to help anyone who wants to do the same with their local cemetery. You can see her all over the area spreading the word and asking for support whether it is a government meeting, the Qantas Club, and other local organizations. She is our District 8 member of the year 2019-2020. Well, life was going very well for all our units. The units had dinners, dances, bingo, feather your nest, and many more fundraisers. I visited them all at least once. Most of them, a lot more than that. That, COVID-19. The world was put to a sudden halt. Shut down the post, no meetings, no fundraising. Wear a mask, stay home, get tested, social distance. No convention, no workshop or school of instruction, no girl state. Worst of all, no hugs. Now we have to change our way of thinking and how we do our elections. Well, we didn't survive 100 years because we're weak. No way. We started having virtual meetings and elections. I kept in constant contact with all the units and most elections went off without a hitch. I guess this means that we are strong enough to endure at least another 100 years of serving our veterans, their families, and the community. Nothing can swerve us from performing our duty. Thank you. Teresa Wallace, District 8 President. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Karen Human. I am proud to be serving as your District 12 President and I couldn't be more proud to have been in that position for over these past two years and a half. Besides all of the fantastic work that our auxiliary members always do, and despite the threat of COVID, along with three posts having their charter suspended and temporarily shut down, as well as other major significant issues, our 20 incredible units in the Mighty 12 rallied to earn first place for the 2019 to 2020 year in membership at 100.104.9%. 100 I can also proudly say that over this past year, most of our units requested and received a proclamation from their city or township in honor of the 100th year of the American Legion Auxiliary. Communication is the key in District 12. Therefore, last summer, I began holding district teleconference calls on the second Sunday of every month at 7 p.m. via a system called freeconferencecall.com. They are for the unit presidents. However, all members are invited to listen in. Although I'm constantly sending email news, emails, newsletters, and at times snail mail, the call is to go further into details about the information and to answer any questions. We then review what each unit is doing for the following month. This is a terrific way to learn, 
share ideas, and invite, each, invite others to each event. Of course, on a monthly basis, a district newsletter is created, placed on the District 12 Facebook page, and both emailed as well as snail mailed to all unit presidents. The presidents, in turn, are asked to ensure a copy is accessible to each member, to all members, at their post home. During the 2019 to 2020 year, the units were given a challenge sheet to complete. It's similar to the one that Department President Ann King Smith gave to the district presidents. The challenge sheet was to be turned in at Constitutional Conference. Initially, we voted that the prize would be a dinner for the units who won to enjoy. Of course, that dinner was going to be on me. Unfortunately, COVID made it, made it impossible to share a dinner, and Constitutional Conference was canceled. Fortunately, though, a final district meeting for the 2019 to 2020 uh, year was held the last Saturday in June. Cheryl Rector, president of Unit 200 Satellite Beach, was quite surprised and more than thrilled when I called her name and asked her to come up to receive a check for $100 for her unit, the winners. Although I would love to mention the great things that every unit does, my presentation would take all day. I was also once told not to mention the unit number as others might feel left out. So I'm only going to mention the highlights of what has been going on in District 12 with no mention of the unit number and or location. There was originally one unit that started a program where homeless veterans could go to a laundromat on a weekly basis and wash their clothing. As a matter of fact, I'm proud to say the program was started by District 12's own department president, Ann King Smith. It grew so quickly that a second unit decided to assist, and then there were two. In the summer of 2019, a third unit, together with a local VFW, joined in, and now there are three units assisting homeless and low-income veterans. Way to go. To add to that, there is a unit in District 12 that sponsors a laundry facility that's open specifically for homeless veterans. A unique idea came from one unit by adding a Legion Rider liaison to their group. In that way, there could be better communication between the riders and the unit. Joy for All Mechanical Cats have been requested by some nursing homes in lieu of many other donations that they've been receiving. They're quite expensive and are not often received because of the cost. One unit donated five cats in February of this year to the VA hospital in Lake Nona. As we all know, Department President Ann's fundraiser of choice is Honor Flight. In addition to Honor Flight recruitment dinners that were held by at least three units in 2020, there were numerous fundraisers helped, held to support Honor Flight, with more to come. Some of the fundraisers include a gun raffle, a Wild West murder mystery dinner, a talent show, a bunco party, and a luau dinner. Another unique and fascinating idea that comes from one unit in District 12 began with what they are calling an annual auxiliary retreat. They not only spent the time away getting to know each other, but they ensured that they spent time each day learning more about the American Legion Auxiliary. Prior to a trip set up with Department Children and Youth Chairman D. Bell to Camp Boggy Creek, and this was a district trip in February, District 12 worked on collecting supplies to bring with us. Blankets, toys, and art supplies were either brought by those who came on the trip or stuffed into my SUV which was full to the brim to the prior to the trip for me to deliver. One small unit had been crocheting moisture barrier, barrier mats for the homeless as one of their major projects. However, a few of members of other units saw the mats and began making them as well. For the past few years, one of District 12's units has been holding a purses with a purpose drive. 
Another unit has picked up on the idea and is going to continue with it throughout the year. As soon as they have sufficient supplies, the unit will have a stuffing party, donate the purses, and start over again. A fun time is one unit's sip and paint. They have a local artist come in, set up easels, and teach each member to paint a scene in a few hours. All supplies are included and everyone goes home with their own creation. Members from other units have heard about it and are already asking for more information. I'm proud to say District 12 is a huge supporter of our troops overseas. There are multiple units that set out care packages. Those national security chairmen are amazing. District 12 has shown our respect for our fallen soldiers in many ways as well. One unit held an amazing Gold Star Mother's Luncheon last year. The mothers in attendance were showered with gifts and treated like queens. Another unit supported the 660, in which 660 flags are placed for the 22 veteran suicides per day, which totals to 660 per month. In support of Florida Operation Homefront, one unit picked up school supplies from four different Dollar Tree stores and delivered them to schools in need. In order to boost membership, some units have a standard telephone number for all members to call, will pay next year's dues for one to three random members who pay their early bird dues, and have monthly drawings for paid members in attendance. Other events that units performed were Soul Food Sunday, where they're serving food to the community, Kentucky Derby Day, a yard sale with all donated items, NASCAR race game, a tea party, card party, brides of yesteryear, farmer's market, delivering food to first responders. And this year, because of COVID, some of them received gift cards in lieu of food, blood drives, quarter auctions, putting flags on the graves for holidays, fundraising for breast cancer, flag burning events, coupon collecting, 9-11 ceremonies, MIA POW ceremonies, holiday parades, scholarships, and multiple donations, including donations to schools for supplies and money, for, to veteran suicide. We had a, donations for a veteran's baby shower, donations to veterans at Lake Nona, Camp Boggy Creek, Fisher House, COTA, C-O-T-A, and the victims of various hurricanes. During the COVID shutdown, many of our auxiliary members assisted with the cleaning and fixing of the posts. Although most units are back to having regular meetings, some are still meeting virtually. As a matter of fact, one unit is meeting via Zoom. I thank you all for, your, for listening to me, and I hope you have a great year. What a year it's been for my first year as District 13 president. And I'm Joanne Scales Barrowy. I am the 13th district president. I want to thank each and every unit for their support that they've shown me. The units have worked very hard this year. Unit 38 Fort Myers helped their post bring in the Vietnam Wall to JetBlue Park to help celebrate the 100th anniversary of the post. The unit supported the school system by dividing school supplies between four schools in Lee County. In November, they supported Veterans Day by having poppies available. Also, they helped clean gravestones at Woodlawn Cemetery. They were involved in the Veterans Day Parade. Unit 38 decorated their post for Christmas. And then in January, they cleaned some more gravestones. 
months. And in February, they helped their sons put on a large breast cancer awareness event. And of course, COVID hit. And they are still helping the Legion with the picking up and distributing of food to their veterans and the community. This also includes first responders. The Legion and the Post and the Auxiliary prepared to go boxes and deliver them to first responders in Lee County. They help the Legion keep the veterans pantry clean and organized. They also have were worked with Operation Homefront for school supplies and picked them up from three dollar tree stores. <coughs> they separated and filled four boxes going to elementary schools. And they tell me delivering the supplies were the best part of the whole process. They were getting ready to do an event for Alzheimer's, but it had to be put on hold. Unit 90 in Cape Coral had a lot of good events this year. They have a big Christmas party for local area children. They collect school supplies, cut coupons. They are working hard to work with their veterans, community and children in youth. Unit 103, Ponta Gorda, had events to help their community veterans and children in youth. They collect school supplies. They donate to Veterans Village, which is a housing complex for homeless vets. And they clip coupons every other Wednesday to send overseas for veterans and their family. Unit 110 Port Charlotte started their year with one of the juniors helping at the Memorial Day service. They distributed poppies at the local grocery store. In August, they had a planning session to plan their events for the year. The unit does fundraising programs throughout the year, like Monday Night Bingo, Show Me the Money, 50-50s and lottery tickets. In October, they had an event, Dollars for Mammograms. They continued to clip coupons for trips, troops overseas. They collected 270 pounds of King and Taps and delivered a check to Ronald McDonald House. They collected items for homeless female veterans for fall conference. Unit 110 has worked closely with Jacobson House in Port Charlotte. They helped with the four chaplains ceremony. They work with the Charlotte High ROTC. The unit reached 100% membership beginning in June. And COVID hit, and 
they participated in 9-11 memorial service. They're going to have Poppy Day on Veterans Day. And the ceremony will be held at the Vietnam Wall in Ponte Gorda. And as well, they will have their big uh, project for dollars for mammograms in October. Unit 123, Santa Bella. Island has a big event on Labor Day for their veterans, and it's been very successful. Unit 130 in LaBelle in September had a first responders luncheon. October, they had their first breakfast buffet. And the riders held the poker run, which helped them out. In October, they also had a yard sale and a bake sale. November, they sent 244 Veterans Day cards to veterans in their posts. On Veterans Day, they helped with services at Veterans Park. During November, they had a craft fair. December, they had their annual breakfast with Santa. The children loved it. As well, they donated desserts for Christmas dinner. In January, Post 130 held a 100-year celebration. Each family had a spokesman who talked about how their family started. A Veterans Day dinner was put on and all enjoyed. They had a Valentine's dinner as well. On February 8th, the unit hosted the ABC School of Instruction. It was conducted by past president, past department president, Tre Trevor Wiltrick. 38 members attended and for the times, they had a St. Patrick's Day dinner. And they continued into the new year. And they had a big event in October for the Veterans Memorial Day Park. Unit 135 Naples started the new year with a new president. June 28th, a group of the Post Suns and Auxiliary went to Arlington National Cemetery for a military funeral for one of their departed members. In July, they rode the float in the local 4th of July parade. In August, they had a ravioli dinner with the proceeds going to Henry's Heroes Bears. They purchased backpacks for girls and boys and donated items to 12 children at Shadow Lawn Cemetery. Their spaghetti dinner in September was successful with the proceeds going to Special Olympics. The commander's granddaughter was born with a lot of medical issues, so the unit donated money to help with expenses. Then the crafty ladies got together and donated lap robes and large totes filled with items to camp across roads 
in the James Haley Hospital. One of the unit's members sons completed basic training and she became a blue star mother she brought in a box for her son and the men in his unit so the post could donate items in november the president decided to resign and the first vice stepped to the plate and took on the leadership role. Valentine's Day, Unit 135 had a Valentine's Day dinner and the proceeds went to Special Olympics. And they continued to work hard with their post, their sons, and trying to have events. Unit 136, Pine Island, started right after convention and entered a float in the 4th of July parade. August, the unit focused on education at the Pine Island Elementary School. They participated again this year and purchased school supplies and donated them to the school. They also bought clothing for the children with the help of the sons and of the post. They also adopted 12 children. The month of October became a whirlwind of activities. They began the month by selling Braiding Teacher Appreciation Day and gave each teacher a commemorative pin to say thank you for what they all do. They held the children's Halloween party. They bought uh, candy bags and McDonald gift certificates, had games, pinatas, pumpkin painting. The auxiliary also hosted an adult Halloween party. November, they spent concentrating on remembering and honoring their veterans. They had a ceremony at Pine Island Elementary School. The unit participated in a Veterans Day ceremony and had a luncheon afterwards and had a very successful poppy distribution. The unit prepared 122 boxes of snacks and personal hygiene products to send to the troops that were deployed. December Unit uh, 136 and detachment members of the post were able to give 25 members gifts so they wouldn't feel left out during the holidays. They also selected three families that had had a rough year. <laughs> the unit also helped the post cook and serve. Christmas dinner. The unit rang in the new year for with their annual casino night. The proceeds went to benefit their veterans fund. And then in February, 136 had their 11th annual one hole over the pond golf outing. This year, they raised a lot of money for their veteran fund. They also gave the Legionnaire and a son and sons a run for their money during this. And then 
we know what happened and the national security chairman has collected serial candle candy puzzles books for first responders they've arranged large flower baskets for the local fire department and continue to work hard unit 192 downtown fort myers helped with veterans day the unit prepared gift bags for for veterans and male veterans they participated in the veteran day program the auxiliary helped a man help man a station where artifacts were on display these artifacts were on loan from the black society the pitches of black veterans in their gear unit 192 adopted a female veteran who was unable to do basic things for herself they made a cover for a bed and a matching cap they had their annual christmas party and they had approximately 200 children as well 192 helped one of the local churches make a black draping for the associate minister's chair they also visit one of their past presidents in a nursing home they made a small donation to the nursing scholarship through the 40 and a and the post has been closed since march they just reopened up but they were able to help post auxiliary members that post auxiliary made monetary donations card thank you cards were sent fridays they kept the food pantry open face masks were sewn for anyone who needed as a fundraiser they decorated cups and observing the up can upcoming breast cancer awareness month they also assisted auxiliary families unit 274 fort myers beach had a busy productive year it started out with a call to their youth children and youth chairman for 150 Easter stuffed animals for the children at Galisano Children's Hospital. They had a Kentucky Derby party for homeless veterans. They donated money to the Spirit of 45's banquet, and this honors World War veterans. Unit 274 gave Florida Gulf Coast University a large donation for a scholarship fund for family members of veterans. <clears throat> One student enrolled in nursing and another in engineering. They were able to donate money for sneakers for soldiers for the troops stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan. At the fall conference, they donate supplies for homeless female veterans. <clears throat> they also donate money for a scholarship for a child of a veteran in a nursing program. 
at Florida Southwestern. They hosted a Halloween party. They visited the Southwest Florida Military Museum and Library, making a donation for a new flooring. At conference, they made a donation to President Ann King Smith's honor flight. They participated in Veterans Day for Thanksgiving. They donated public gift cards for Thanksgiving dinner for eight Fort Myers Beach school families in need. <coughs> December, they helped decorate their post and set up a Toys for Tot donation box. The unit donated money for heroes, for supplies and postage, for deployed troops. They worked with the spirit of Christmas and donated money to help 182 children. They were able to donate money to Boggy Creek and 19 bears were made by a member who also made 35 bags for Beads of Courage. She also made 15 flannel hearts for the NICU at Galisano Children's Hospital. The unit held its annual fashion show and luncheon. They donated $1,500 to send four of their legionnaires to welcome home festival for Vietnam vets. They sponsored five girls to Girls State. They donated to Camp Coral, a camp for veterans' children. They donated money and soda tabs to Ronald McDonald House. And again, they donated money for supplies and postage for deployed troops. They continued to cut out and mail in their coupons. And in March, the membership chair reached 100%. And their post closed like everybody else. But they have done a few things. They donated uh, care packages to deployed soldiers. They donated 20 pairs of sneakers for veterans at Bay Pines. They continued to cut mail coupons. They made a donation to Bonita Springs. They continue to work hard. Unit 303 <coughs> Bonita Springs continue to raise money to support many causes. They do it through bingo dinners, Saturday moolah card games. They hosted a dingus day party which is a Polish celebration. They sent three girls to Girls State and they helped a man with the Memorial Day celebration, the pres which the president spoke at. They sent care packages, packages to newly recruited Marines. On Flag Day, the president spoke on behalf of the auxiliary. They had a yard sale. They had a big celebration on July 4th at Riverside Park. And on July 
21st, Unit 303, held a celebration of life for Carol Parecki. Many people attended, and the unit set up a scholarship in her name. In August, they donated lots of school supplies. And on the first day of school, the mayor of Bonita Springs and the unit president distributed Be Kind signs to every school in Bonita Springs. The unit president told third and fourth graders what Honor Flight was all about. The children made cards and sent them to an Honor Flight veteran. In September, they hosted a Gold Star mother, and she spoke about spoke to the Pope about her husband, Major Brent Taylor. In November, they celebrated Veterans Day at Riverside Park, and the unit president once again spoke on behalf of the auxiliary, and they distributed 250 copies. Also, in November, they elected their first male member. December, they sent 40 boxes of items to the men that had been deployed. <laughs> they created a new program for children with cancer. January, a group of crafty ladies hand-knitted lap blankets, hats, and shoulder shawls to go to Joanne's house at Hope Hospice. They dropped off stuffed animals to Valerie's house. They held the community yard sale <coughs> and donated new plates to their kitchen. March, they had limited St. Patrick's Day, but still were able to donate $1,000 to bartenders who weren't being paid at that time. And they basically just reopened, but they've been busy during that time. Um, they usually do a lot of things with the school, but they can't um, get into the schools. Um, so and they're waiting on that. President Jim Farrington discovered a friend who made masks and she posted them on Facebook and asked for donations and the money raised went to the AF fund. Um, in June, the post opened for a week. They submitted pictures to mail call. <clears throat> In July and August, they were open, closed, open, closed, but reopened August 6th. Um, so they'll continue working the way they always have. Unit 323 Lehigh Acres had a backpack event and handed out 56 backpacks filled with school supplies. They also purchased 20 pairs of sneakers for the children. Labor Day, they had a cookout 
with the proceeds going to children and you. On September 14th, they hosted the um, a school of instruction. In October, they had a children's Halloween party. Then in December, they adopted a school and put up an angel tree with 20 names on it. And the members got together and purchased the items for the children. January was a push for membership. In February, the Americanism chairman had students at the middle school write essays, giving their ideas on Americanism. And then along came March and we know what happened. And since they've been reopened, They've done a few things. First was collecting school supplies. They had a drive through backpack drive and they handed out 47 backpacks. The national security chairman is collecting coupons. She's also collecting items for the troops. They had a MIA POW ceremony at the post on September 18th. They're planning a children's Halloween party and they're going to turn their hall into a drive in movie. Unit 336 in North Fort Myers has done many quarter auctions for the Southwest Florida Horse Association. This is for abused horses. And they continue to have events for their veterans and community and children and youth. Post 351, Unit 351, TICE, at School of Instruction, handed out 25 copies of Flag Book Etiquette with patriotic rulers. They participated in flag ceremonies on Memorial Day and Veterans Day. They probably wear red on Friday, say the Pledge of Allegiance at meetings, and stand for the national anthem. The chaplain sent 50 birthday cards, 30 sympathy cards, and three get well cards. The children and youth chairman collected 63 pounds of pull tabs for Ronald McDonald House. They have a fall carnival with the proceeds going to donate for kids. They donated $150 for Gulf Coast Hospital and Lee County Corrections. The Education Committee donated school supplies to the local schools. They adopted a third grade class in color pictures for the veterans. They attended School of Instruction and ABC School. The Public Relations Committee keep their members informed through newsletter and their Facebook page. National Security Committee donated 90,000 coupons. Embedded 27,000 Christmas cards. The unit presented medals to the local ROTC. The VA and our chairman 
work hand in hand with hearts and homes. And this is a 501c3 organization. And every second Saturday, they have the veterans from Calusa Harbor Veteran Living Facility at their post. And they serve them lunch and have music. They helped welcome the traveling Vietnam Wall. They mailed 48 birthday cards for honor flight veteran on his 80th birthday and you know they're little but they're mighty and they were asked by the department of florida americanism chairman to make posters so they could make a slides show and they made four posters thanking essential workers and submitted it, and they were featured in the video. Two of the posters were given to the local fam, food pantries. One was given to Fort Myers Police, and one was given to the Tice Fire Department, thanking them. Uh, for their service, along with donuts and red, white, and blue bracelets. They nominated 10-year-old Owen Fredella for the Good Deed Award for making bracelets and donating money to Harry Chapin Food Bank. And there'll be a ceremony November 14th to present this award to this wonderful young gentleman. They donated $600 worth of school supplies to Manatee Elementary. They presented the school with an American flag. Um, they've had bake sales, yard sales, to help raise money for their veterans. They have volunteers that work at Donate for Kids, a foster care program. On Memorial Day, they place flags at fallen soldiers' graves. They attended a Memorial Day service. Uh, they had a member set up a poppy display in front of her home to distribute poppies. On Memorial Day, they lit candles at dusk to pay tribute for our fallen veterans. We made a monthly monetary donation to Hearts and Homes and Lit Health military support. They sent letters to Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Rick Scott to open up our posts. <laughs> they have two volunteers that work at two different food pantries. They sent cards thanking a local veteran that was dying of cancer for his service. They make holiday hangers that they display in the lounge. They cook dinner on Saturday night. They made buddy checks during the um, pandemic. They've been helping members with groceries and taking them to doctor's appointments. They've also done the same thing for their neighbors, including baking uh, baked goods for them. They decorated and filled 300 goodie uh, Pringles cans and sent them 
to our troops overseas. I'll tell you, District 13 has rocked it in the last year and a half. I have never been so proud of the units in District 13. Thank you all. Hi, I'm Stacy Cassano, the 14th District President. Our district has 11 units going from Key West all the way to North Miami. During our 2019-2020 year, our members were strong and banded together to make our mission succeed. Americanism, a set of patriotic values. Our members didn't disappoint in this area. From waving flags and parades to reciting the Pledge of Allegiance at meetings and local events, our members are proud Americans and proud auxiliary members. South Miami Unit 31 donated $285 to active duty members. They participated in the South Miami Elf Parade. They held a chili cook-off and invited the public to attend. Marathon Unit 154 wore red shirts on Fridays. They spent $1,200 sending letters to the, to the troops in troop boxes. Unit 67 North Miami held a flag retirement ceremony with the Boy Scouts. Coral Gables Unit 98 participated in the Memorial Day events, the Legion's 100th birthday, the Auxiliary's 100th birthday, and Veterans Day. Member Helga Lax taught children with disabilities at a school in Homestead how to fold the American flag and its history. She taught this to 15 classrooms with 20 students in each classroom. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 donated $100 to the National Cemetery Flag Project that the Department of Florida Legion was holding. They spent two hours recruiting for the Americanism essay contest and had one entry. They teach their junior members and their SAL members in attendance about how to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Key Biscayne Unit 374 participated in the 4th of July Parade and they decorated two golf carts and handed out flags. Miami Unit 346 placed flags on veterans' graves at Memorial Day. Auxiliary Emergency Funds. Marathon Unit 154 always helps a member in need. They had three members that requested help. They raised $1,200 for a celebration of life for Chris Chrissy. They had one member that was diagnosed with cancer and they raised $1,183 to help her. Two members applied for department assistance, none for national. The unit was faced with two tragedies and they rallied the forces to raise money to assist. One member that did not qualify for AEF did receive personal donations from members. Calvocative Memories. Coral Gables Unit 98 does this extremely well. They collect materials from events and photos for their history books. They love looking at those old books. They have books dating back to 1926. If you're ever in the area, you should definitely stop by and take a look. Our chaplains were busy throughout the year with opening and closing prayers, blessing our meals, participating in Memorial Day services, for Chaplain's Day services, Veterans Day, POW MIA Remembrance, Flag Day, 4th of July, in Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor Day. They sent sympathy cards, get well cards, thinking of you cards, and unfortunately had to drape the charter when we lost members. Children and Youth. North Miami Unit 67 held a Christmas party with food and gifts for over 70 children. The children were also visited by Santa Claus. They held a flea market weekly on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. to raise funds for the event.
Palmetto Bay Unit 133 purchased presents and held a Christmas party for the kids, and they donated $250 to a local school's PTA to buy items for the homeless students at that school. They nominated one child for the Good Deed Award. Miami Unit 346 participates with the Big Bear Prescribed Primary Exceptional Center, which is a center for, the ch for children with special needs. They provided gifts for all of the children at Christmas time. They spent a total of $1,254. Unit 154 Marathon has a military child table at a local school cafeteria and a military counselor in their school system. They collected and donated cans for Ronald McDonald House. One member that works at a local school promotes Red Shirt Friday with the staff and the students. Coral Gables Unit 98 donated $50 to Nicholas Children's Hospital and collected aluminum can tubs for the Ronald McDonald's house. They sent in almost three pounds worth. Community service. South Miami Unit 31 had members volunteer to plant a victory garden at the post, which is open to the neighbors. They spent $100 in in-kind donations. They participated in the National Day of Service. They donated $200 to a member who lost their partner, $300 to Gov Gulliver Prep Music Club for volunteering to play at their Thanksgiving dinner. They used that money to get to competitions in New Orleans. Marathon, Unit 154, helped with Hurricane Irma relief, attended the unveiling of the 9-11 Memorial at their local fire station, participated in a ribbon cutting ceremony for Bahamas Relief Donation, Red, White, and Blue Days, Stride Walk for Cancer, Coral Head Music Festival with the Riders, A Taste of the Islands, A Bait Ride Toys for Tots. A number of volunteers came to every event. Members volunteered for Making a Difference Day and Veterans Day. While performing community service, the members wore auxiliary shirts Many asked who we are, what we do, and why we do it. So they took the opportunity to explain and even gain some new members. North Miami Unit 67 gave 60 bags of clothing, shoes, and socks to the Miami Rescue Mission. The members volunteered cleaning the post, cooking dinner, making raffle baskets, and putting the license plates that are displayed in the post in order. Miami Unit 346 volunteers at the VAMC, Honor Flights of South Florida, Big Bear PPEC, and others. Coral Gables Unit 98. They had a mem member's daughter pass away unexpectedly. They donated $50 to the daughter's favorite charity, which was the Tim Tebow Foundation. They participated in Toys for Tots, raised $60 and donated unwrapped toys. They donated small kitchen appliances, a printer, and kids' clothing to a local family in need. They teamed up with Love the Everglades for a Tamiami Trail cleanup effort, and the volunteers picked up a total of 1,200 pounds of trash. Most of the garbage were water bottles. Our units updated their constitution and bylaws. We're still working on a few, but we're almost there. Education, Unit 31 donated to Operation Homefront for school supplies. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 donated school supplies at the beginning of the year, and they donated $400 to local teachers through DonorsChoice.org. They presented two scholarships for a total of $1,000. North Miami, Unit 67, had 30 backpacks for three local schools for students in need, and they donated books to their local library. Key Biscayne Unit 374 worked with a local sixth grade class and a high school class to make and distribute Valentine's cards for the veterans at the mm -hmm. VAMC. Marathon Unit 154 made a slideshow of veterans and was included in the Veterans Day Assembly at their local school. Cards, letters, and artwork prepared by students were used for the veterans' baskets and to fill troop boxes. 
Girl State. Unit 31 had two delegates in 2019 and one delegate ready to go in 2020. Unfortunately, we all know Girl State was canceled this year. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 had three delegates in 2019 and two ready to go in 2020. The mayor of the village of Palmetto Bay presented the 2019 Girl State delegates with certificates at a council meeting. Unit 154 Marathon had four delegates in 2019 and two ready to go in 2020. They held cheesesteak dinners and a Valentine in Valentine's Day dinners and lotto boards to raise money for their funds. Unit 98 Coral Gables had one delegate in 2019 and one delegate ready to go in 2020. Homestead Unit 43 had one delegate ready to go in 2020. Juniors Unit 133 has eight paid juniors. Our juniors participate in Americanism and Poppies, Community Service, Children and Youth, and VANR. We have a few SAL members that participate with us too. One of them worked on the patch program and earned two patches. We do not have any juniors that attended workshop or meetings. One junior and two SAL members did attend an honor flight homecoming, and one junior attended National Night Out. Leadership. We held <clears throat> School of Instruction and had one ABC course. Legislative. Unit Miami, South Miami Unit 31 received a proclamation for the 100th birthday. Unit 346. Miami attended a Miami-Dade Commission meeting to present an idea of billboards throughout the county to thank veterans for their service. Marathon Unit 154 received a proclamation for the Auxiliary's 100th birthday. Coral Gables Unit 98 had U.S. Representative Donna Shalala visit the Post on President's Day. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 received a proclamation for the 100th uh, birthday for the auxiliary. The mayor presented the Girl State Delegates certificates. One of the members is very active with zero to end prostate cancer. She is lobbying for better screening and health care of prostate cancer in the VA system. We also received a proclamation from the town of Cutler Bay to honor a longtime member, Arthur Buckley, a World War II veteran who passed away this year. National Security, South Miami Unit 31 donated to Operation Homefront. North Miami Unit 67 sent 23 troop boxes and clipped $165,000 of coupon, coupons to support our troops. They awarded a Fireman of the Year Award and fed all attendees. Coral Gables Unit 98 participated in a POW MIA ceremony and donated $250 to Operation Homefront. Marathon Unit 154 sent troop boxes, 20 troop boxes, and donated three pints of blood. Homestead Unit 43 held Easter Sunday brunch with 15 to 20 service members attending. Armed Forces Day had a luncheon and served about 40 service members and families Memorial Day and Boy Scouts placed on Memorial Day. Boy Scouts placed flags on every known veteran's grave with dignitaries from Homestead Air Reserve Base in attendance. They had approximately 60 service members and families from Homestead Air Reserve Base in attendance. Flag Day, they had approximately 35 members attend the Military Affairs Advisory Board for lunch. Independence Day, they had a luncheon and with invitation to Air Force Honor Guard. They had approximately 40 members and families attend, 40 military members and families attend. Labor Day, they had a luncheon 
for first responders and the service members with approximately 25 service members and families in attendance. They held a promotion party for a member's husband who was promoted to Chief Warrant Officer 5. It was attended by approximately 75 military members and spouses. Veterans Day, they participated in the local Veterans Day parade in Homestead. After the parade, there was, there was a booth to hand out information and a lunch that had approximately 25 to 30 service members. Thanksgiving Day, they served dinner to service members that were on duty at Homestead Air Reserve Base. They had approximately 45 service members in their family attend. In December, they held a children's Christmas party, provided gifts for 35 children, approximately 90 service members and their families attended. Wreaths across America, they participated in to lay wreaths at approximately 20 service members and families were in attendance. Christmas day, dinner was served at Homestead Air, Air Reserve Base with approximately 25 members and families in attendance. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 sent 1,000, I'm sorry, $158,511 in coupons to the Troupons program. They sent seven troop boxes. They spent four hours volunteering for Blue Star Mothers and four hours for Gold Star Mothers. They spent 10 hours volunteering for Homeland Security and 12 hours for JROTC. They held a welcome home party for post member Oscar, who was on deployment with the Army. Past President's Parlay. Unit 98 has been trying to obtain a past president's names. They are only missing about the last 10 years. Unfortunately, we have not been able to help them succeed in getting that information. So if anybody knows any unit presidents that were at Unit 98 in Coral Gables over the last 10 years, I would kindly ask you to reach out to their unit to help them out. Poppies. Unit 31, South Miami, mails a letter with poppies to the auxiliary members asking them to support the poppy program. They put a poppy plate in the post lounge wall with the names of everyone who contributed or made a donation. They distributed approximately 200 poppies, raising $685. North Miami Unit 67 has ordered poppies and we're currently awaiting delivery. They have their collection can ready to go for donations. Key Biscayne Unit 374 has over 2,000 poppies to flush, fluff and distribute to the community. Every year they give 400 poppies to St. Agnes Academy in Key Biscayne and they collect a dollar donation from the students. In return, the students get receive a day with no uniform. Marathon Unit 154 held poppy distribution at Publix, Winn-Dixie and Home Depot. Approximately 1,500 poppies were handed out and they raised $1,259. Coral Gables Unit 98, they have 500 new poppies there and they collected $193 in donations. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 distributed approximately 1,500 poppies and raised a total of $2,040. We, They mail a poppy to all of their Legion family and tell a poppy story at a local church. Public Relations, Unit 98 has a Facebook page and also bi-monthly newsletters go out to the Legion family. Marathon, Unit 154 has a Facebook page. Unit 133 has a Facebook page with their post family. And they also mail bi-monthly newsletters. Veterans Affairs. Unit 31 donated 50 buddy bags for homeless female veterans, including toiletries, socks, t-shirts, and t-shirts. Thanksgiving dinner at the Post had approximately 120 veterans in their families. Service to veterans in the VA and VA visits. North Miami Unit 67 called Vets Pickup and donated clothes once a month. 
Coral Gables Unit 98 had an informal gathering with Donna Shalala and fielded questions about VA and services provided by the hospital. Helga Lax coordinated with the VA rep about speaking at the post about depression and suicide among veterans. Unfortunately, it was canceled due to COVID. Hopefully it can be rescheduled soon. Key Biscayne, Unit 374. Every May and December, they provide a bingo game at the VAMC for 35 to 45 veterans and have $250 to spread amongst the winners. They also have t-shirts and hats for prizes. At Christmas, they handed out Christmas cards with $5 in it for each player. Each month, May through December, they visit the VA Spinal Injury Cord Unit, which has approximately 30 beds. They bring handmade goodies and special patriotic blankets made by their members in the community to go to the new patients at the time of their visit. They held a picnic at Bill Baggs State Park for veterans. The picnic had about 100 veterans and their therapists and 10 community volunteers. The fire rescue department was there and donated and distributed refreshments. In January, they had a PTSD lunch for seven veterans and their aides. Miami, Unit 346, went on, uh, oh, had one member who went on the honor flight of South Florida flight and nine members attend a homecoming event. In June, an, that same member went on an honor flight flight again and eight members attended a homecoming event. In September, one member went on the honor flight and 11 members attended a homecoming event. On October, in October, one member went on the honor flight and nine members attended the homecoming event. September 14th, the member that goes on the honor flights events is their president. And she happens to be the volunteer coordinator for honor flight of South Florida. September 14th, they held a harvest hoedown at the VAMC. They brought food, drinks, dessert, a camera for photo booth, straw cowboy hats for every veteran that attended. They collect toiletries for the female veterans. They participated in a Veterans Day parade in Doral. And every Sunday, one member volunteers two hours at the VA Chaplain Services. Palmetto Bay Unit 133 serves dinner to their post members and collected items for the fe homeless female veterans. They donated $250 to Honor Flight, $25 to VAMC, and $25 to Fisher House. They assisted a veteran with $500 to help travel to California when his brother-in-law passed away unexpectedly. Marathon Unit 154, committee member Jackie Moore set up a Facebook page to support veterans affected by Agent Orange in the Florida Keys and has 25 followers so far. Jackie implemented a veterans emergency call sheet to enable the American Legion post 154 bartenders to follow protocol and pass out veterans seeking immediate emergency help. Jackie has helped a veteran receive 100% disability and a veteran's wife establish el eligibility for medical insurance. Baskets were filled to be taken to the veterans at a nursing home in Plantation Key at Christmas time. Nettie Goggins would often play taps at memorial services at the post. One member became a caretaker for another member's veteran's husband, so the other member could continue to work full time. Annette reported 1,568 volunteer hours over an eight month period. On Veterans Day, a member decorated the vehicles and they joined the, the parade. Donations of the items for female veterans care were sent to conference in November. The unit raised $107 for honor flight with a guest the key in the pickle in the pickle jar raffle. They also raised $1,407 for 
for Honor Flight in their 100 Years, 100 Prizes raffle. So far, our 2020-2021 year has started out very slow. The Keys opened up to their businesses to residents in July and has slowly been opening back up to the public. Miami-Dade County didn't open their post homes until the beginning of September, so we're all getting back on our feet right now. Hopefully we'll be there soon. Some units have been holding virtual meetings and some are collecting donations, still cutting coupons, and collecting those can tabs. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sue Craft. I am the 16th District President of the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida. As we have all experienced an unsettling year, the end of 2019-2020, and the beginning of 2021, we have found ways to work through the challenges. District 16 ended up eighth in the state for membership. I would like to recognize four units that obtained 100% or more. Dunedin 275, 113.22%. Treasure Island 158 with 102.7%. Madeira Beach 273 with 101.6%. Seminole Unit 252 with 101%. I would like to thank all the units of District 16 for all their hard work in membership. All the units have canceled so many functions that would have helped our children and youth, our veterans, and our community. The units have come back strong. President Ann's slogan, Florida, strong and we are strong, District 16. At this time, I would like to highlight some of the activities of the units in District 16 have done. Unit 7, Clearwater, school supplies for the Eisenhower Elementary with a check for $250. They donated $100 to Tunnels to Towers, which is for veterans with severe disabilities to have homes for them at no cost. They will be hosting a baby shower in the spring for Kimberly House. Unit 79, Newport Ritchie, Florida. This unit supports Steps to Recovery, which is housing for veterans to gain stability in their lives. Delivering 16 meals every week for 28 weeks. Unit 79 has a new junior, Ashley. Well, let me tell you, she is outstanding. When the call came to help a mask, making masks, she did not think twice. Delivering masks to John Hopkins, all children's, James Haley, and the Fisher House. They are so proud of her. Unit 119 Largo adopted a class in Mildred Hem School. They will supply hand sanitizers, wipes, towels, and face masks, and many more items. Donated $150 for the teacher to buy supplies which they need very badly. Unit 125, Gulfport, collected $800 for school supplies for Gulfport Elementary School and delivered 75 pounds of pool tabs to Ronald McDonald House and delivered 27 lap robes to Bay Pines VA. Unit 158, Treasure Island, their back to school drive with donations of $470 along with shirts delivered to Park Elementary School. They also delivered 124 pounds of food to St. Pete Clinic for their 2020 hunger drive. Unit 158 worked national security, sending $12,500 in 
coupons to support our trips. Unit 173 Holiday works school supplies for Coffside Elementary along with $188 in donations. They were involved in a joint effort with the Legion and the Riders for Basket for Community Project to raise money for KVAR, the vest for Pasco County Sheriff Officer's dogs. Unit 238, Safety Harbor. Well, COVID was not going to stop their annual 4th of July parade. They did a car parade down the streets of Safety Harbor. With their fundraising efforts, they donated $1,100 to the teachers of Safety Harbor, $200 clothes for kids, and $200 for canines for warriors. Unit 273, Madeira Beach, continued their work on the You Are Loved program. They assembled 444 cards with worry stones delivered to Tampa centers in Florida, Ohio, and Arizona. You Are Loved is compassion for those in need. They have been supporting Bay Pines VA, supplying canned goods and gift cards for their pantry. Unit 252 worked on school supplies to donate to Orange Grove and Oakhurst Elementary in the amount of $700. They are working on donating food baskets to seven families and 10 veterans for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Unit 275, Done Eating, held a Christmas card event for the troops, raising $585 in donations and 2,000 cards were sent along with 12 boxes of supplies. They hosted a golf cart poker run for Dun Eden Care Food Pantry, donating $1,200 and $389 of food. Unit 305 St. Pete, they started their own Facebook page along with very involved with the Legion. Through the Legion's voter voice, they will receive their ALA 100 year anniversary proclamation from the mayor. They have continued to collect coupons for the troops and now they are making plans for their yard sale to the bivouac. Unit 335 Hudson, they have made donations to education and the holy ground. They are now collecting for Thanksgiving baskets for the veterans. I would like to thank all the units of District 16 for all they do to support our veterans, community, and children and youth. Keep the 16th District Deuce motorcycle revving it up. Thank you. Our department chaplain will now give us several reports. My name is Lois Stackelro, and I am honored and humbled to be your spiritual leader and ready to work to prepare our chaplains to be able to show our strength to their veterans. As we begin a new year, it is my responsibility to show all chaplains throughout the state of Florida that they need to be ready to show the strength we have and how compassionate we are to be honored to help our neighborhoods and our veterans. As you know, chaplains are known as spiritual ambassadors for our organization and should always be prepared by carrying a small book of prayers in case you get asked to do a prayer at the last minute. Are you ready to show our strength along the state for our veterans? As spiritual ambassadors, we need to be aware of the diversity of all faiths and cultures. Be courteous to everyone and please try not to offend anyone. Provide emotional support and spiritual support to the members and their families by just giving them a smile, a hug, or just a simple touch of the hand. By doing these items, we show dignity and respect to everyone. All prayers must be non-denominational, and that means not restricted to or associated with any specific religious denomination. Be prepared at a moment's notice to say a prayer or to assist in a ceremony. This can happen while attending a meeting, a community function, 
at a special dinner or at a memorial service, or sometimes even just being needed by someone to say a kind word to. Do not hesitate to assist if you see someone in distress. If they don't want you to comfort them, they will let you know. We, as chaplains, try to send out birthday cards, get well cards, sympathy cards, thinking of you and her congratulations cards during the year. It means a lot to a member who can't get out and be with us. For our deceased members, we drink the charters. Invite your family members to attend the service that is held at the unit meeting to show how you honor their loved one. They would appreciate that. Hold memorial services when asked by a family member or if the unit is asked, be prepared to conduct the service. Don't forget to send your deceased member forms to both your district and department chaplains. If they do not receive the form, then the member cannot be included in the memorial services at the end of the year. Forms can be found on the department website under Forms and Resources by going to www.alafl.org, then click on the link Forms and Resources and look for Unit Forms, then look for Deceased Member Form. Please make sure the unit, I'm sorry, please make sure that all unit chaplains have my address to send these forms to. However, I will accept the names via email, which is chaplain at alafl.org. That way you save money and I get them a lot faster to honor them each month. Please do not wait to the end of the year to send all the names in. We like to receive them on a monthly basis in order to honor that member in a timely manner. The cutoff for names to be included in this year's memorial service at convention will happen on June 3rd, 2021. So please do not hold the names until the end of the year. Send them as you receive them, even if they pass two months prior and you just received the information. As long as they are a member, we will still honor that. This cutoff is due to copying of the names in time to be placed in the programs for the memorial service held at convention in July. Any questions, please see me after the meeting. Well, you're gonna have to write to me. <laughs> Sorry. Please let us know if you participate in patriotic ceremonies, such as the four chaplains, flag disposal ceremonies, wreaths across America, and any others that you may get invited to attend. We'd love to hear about them. Please report them on the year-end reports so your unit gets counted and it helps the department at the same time. Please do not send checks to me. All checks need to go directly to department headquarters. They know what to do with those checks. Visit members who are ill when you can. And don't forget you can go to other locations besides hospitals, as the member may be in a nursing home, a rehab center, or even at their individual homes, they may be convalescing. Include your junior members in your visitations, in your ceremonies. Junior members love to learn, and that's the way they learn how to do what chaplains do. We need to spread the wealth out to everyone. Prayer books being submitted for competition must reach the department chaplain 30 days prior to convention, which is June the 3rd, 2021. Prayer books are a collection of prayers that means something to all members of the unit and our district. All members should be asked to contribute to the prayer book for either unit, junior district, and or department. And then it will be a huge success. Another way to add prayers is as a district president I'm sorry, as a department president visits districts, please ask the chaplain from that unit or district or event to send that prayer to the district chaplain to include in her prayer book. With that being said, I would like to ask all the district chaplains to send me prayers that may be read during department president Ann's visitations, whether it be at a luncheon, a dinner, or just a small get together. Or if you have a favorite prayer that you would like to have in Ann's book, please send it to me. 
On the books, white binders are preferred, but are not required. All prayers need to be centered, both vertically and horizontally, on the pages. Include the author's name. Make sure it's centered. Only one prayer or devotional thought per page. Even if it is a one-liner, it must be by itself on the page with the author and center. Please use spell check. Even have a second set of eyes or a third set of eyes look at your prayers for spelling errors. And please remember, if you do use a cross, then you must use the Star of David. Please see all of the rules in the unit guide. Remember, strict adherence to the rules must be followed. Resources. Chaplain's Manual. This can be downloaded from National Headquarters website. There's a beautiful prayer book from a, chap, a national chaplain. I have copies of that. I use it. Chaplain's Prayer Book can be purchased through emblem sales or use a white binder to create your own. Look on the internet for non-denominational prayers. Create your own prayers. I do a lot of creations, as you know. Use the American Legion Auxiliary Magazine for inspirational thoughts or ideas. Again, your program action plan gives you the outline of everything that I discussed here today. Awards. The winner of the prayer book will receive a main alley plaque. All entries will receive a certificate. As long as the rules are followed that are in the unit guide, we should see our chaplains strengthening our veterans. Let's see what we can do this year. I know it's hard with this pandemic, but I'm sure a lot of chaplains are out there doing what they're supposed to be doing, and I, for one, am grateful to them all. Please keep up the good work. Your deadline dates, unit year-end reports, are due to your district chairman, April 1st, 2021. District year-end reports are due to the department chaplain, April 15th, 2021. There is no mid-year for chaplains. I want to strictly enforce that. There is no mid-year report for chaplains. It is strictly year-end reports. I thank you and hope to see you all soon after this pandemic is over. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. God bless you all. I just want to let you know that our award this year, there was only one prayer book submitted. It was from a district chaplain. And that goes to Linda Hall of Lehigh Acres 323. Congratulations, Linda. Your award will be mailed to you. It's just running late. So just hang in there and congratulations. Our department children and youth chairman will now give us her report. Hi everybody, this is Dee Bell, your Department Children and Youth Chairman, and I'm here today to talk about the 2019-2020 Year in Review and the 2020-2019 Plan of Action for Children and Youth. This year, the Department of Florida celebrated with President Nicole Platt and was Florida strong while embracing President Ann's theme. As we celebrated 100 years of serving our veterans, military families, children and youth, and our communities, we drew on our strength to move us forward into the next 100 years. The Program Action Plan focused on extraordinary youth in our communities, military children, veterans children, chronically ill children, and children that have gone above and beyond in the spirit of service not self. Units had an exciting year of events and fundraisers to open their hearts to our children and youth program. Roaring 20s themes dinners, bake sales, bowling tournaments, bike runs, raffles, 50-50s, and many other activities to raise funds to assist and support our children and youth. Over $30,000 was raised to assist 
are over a thousand kids. Military kids were recognized during Kids of Deployed Our Heroes 2 events on two bases. Red Shirt Fridays were encouraged at schools to bring awareness to active duty families. The Military Child's Table was presented at a Blue Star Mother's Luncheon, several dinners, and at a school on a military base. Units partnered with the USO to give kids at MacDill Air Force Base, Tyndall Air Force Base, and Mayport Navy Base backpacks and school supplies. Trunk and treat, haunted houses, and candy giveaways for Halloween were very popular and well attended. One unit partnered with the military counselor in the local elementary school to identify military families. Festive holiday holiday parties were a big hit and presents were galore. Working with Operation Homefront, military families received many donations after Tyndall Air Force Base was devastated by Hurricane Michael. One unit donated $500 to the American Legion Leg Le Legacy Scholarship. Units worked together with Volunteers for America, Toys for Tots, and the National Veterans Homeless Support Initiative. Sample and full-size toiletries, food and clothing, baby items, toys, laundry items, and cleaning products were all donated to veteran families. Children at several stand downs received clothing and toys. Thanksgiving, Easter, and Christmas baskets were distributed to families in need. Units donated $29,500 to aid 500 military children across Florida. Children in Florida communities received vital support from our units. Traditional home schools and daycares were given paper products clothing and coats, backpacks, and school supplies. One unit with 2,000 members partnered with the Salvation Army to assist 950 children begin the new school year. I know the actual number is higher, but went unreported with $15,000 in school supplies being collected and given to local elementary, middle, and high schools. Units hosted or participated in community Halloween costume contests and trunk and treats and gave out safe Halloween comic books. One unit partnered with Donate for Kids, helping foster children in need and in transition. $300 was given to Benches for Babes to buy and maintain picnic tables at local school bus stops for kids' safety. What a great idea. Thanksgiving and Christmas parties were held with Mr. and Mrs. Santa and elves giving out presents. Many units had angel trees, making the holidays happy for many children. One junior unit was able to buy and wrap gifts for nine kids in their community. Way to go, juniors. A school volleyball team and band who advanced to the state competition received donations to help with their travel expenses. High school teams, Title I schools, Little League teams, transitional and charter school students all received help with their uniforms. Thinking outside the box, one unit helped a fifth grader with expenses to go to Washington, D.C. for a safety patrol conference. Over $50,000 was donated to various organizations to help over 2,000 kids. In 1926, American Legion Post 14 started All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. Auxiliary members in Florida have monetarily supported 
and donated in-kind items to Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, as well as other children's hospitals in Florida. Members have been knitting and crocheting baby hats, booties, layettes, and burial wraps for many years. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, masks were in short supply and could not be ordered. Hospital staff and patients with low immune systems were in desperate need of masks. All Children's Hospital provided the material and 35 members of the American Legion family sewed over 3,500 masks. Department of Florida makes a difference. Chronically ill children are always close to our hearts. Units gave monetary donations, volunteered, or gave in-kind donations or pop tops to the American Legion Child Welfare Foundation, Camp Boggy Creek, Camp Corral, Children's Miracle Network, Mailman Center, Ronald McDonald House, Juvenile Diabetes, Special Olympics, Beads of Courage, Coda, Galasano, All Children's, Landstall, St. Jude's, Shriners, and Indian River Hospitals. Thank you for putting a smile on a child's face. The Big Heart Award was offered to any unit that donated $1 per member to Camp Foggy Creek for chronically ill children or to Camp Corral for military kids. Thank you to these units for making a child's dream come true to go to camp. National Chairman Lisa Williamson offered the Good Deed and the Youth Hero Awards. Youth who went above and beyond making a difference in their communities were nominated by these units and received their awards. 19 Good Deed Awards were presented in Florida this year. Great job, ladies. There were no nominations in Florida for the Youth Hero Award, which goes to a youth that performs a heroic act of phys physical valor. I am pleased to announce that the Lois McFall Children and Youth Award goes to Lehigh Acres, Unit 323, Loretta Arnett, Unit Chairman. Thank you, Loretta, and congratulations. Thank you for opening your hearts wide to support and assist military children, veterans' children, medically in need children, and children throughout our communities. The Department of Florida truly rocks. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to present the 2020-2021 Program Action Plan for Children and Youth. I am excited to be here today to present to you how your unit can assist, support, and recognize the extraordinary children throughout Florida. Thank you to Rebecca Kelly and Hildy Schmid for continuing to serve as committee members this year. We will continue to have our hearts open and even wider for the 2020 Children and Youth Program. Even with the pandemic and social distancing, we can ensure that our children and youth are cared for. Open, April is the month of the military child. Show your support on April 15th and purple up. Kids of Deployed Our Heroes Too is a recognition program for military kids whose parents are deployed. The KDH2 button and sticker template is on is in the program action plan. Please check it out and other ways you can make our military kids feel special. 
The military child's table setting ceremony recognizes the sacrifices made by our military children. It's an awesome opportunity for your juniors and young sons of the Legion to work together to honor the sacrifices made by their military childhood friends and classmates. The ceremony is very heartfelt and meaningful for everyone. Don't forget, April is Children and Youth Month and Month of the Military Child. Open your heart to children of our veterans. Many of our homeless and in need veterans have young children. The program action plan details many ways to assist these children. Clinger, a story of hope and honor is a book and companion horse for children dealing with the loss of a parent or a loved one told from the perspective of a real life Kaseon horse. Open your heart to the children in your community. Due to the pandemic, there are many more families in need than ever before. I would like to see units focus on children in your communities. Contact your local schools or synagogues to donate to food banks. Contact the community resource officer in your schools to identify families in need. Donate PPP, PPE supplies, lunches, snacks to schools and recreation centers for the health and well being of our kids. There has been an increase in drug and alcohol abuse during these uncertain times. Next week is Red Ribbon Week. The theme is Be Brave and Be Drug Free. Please feel free to promote all year. The Youth Hero and Good Deed Awards acknowledge youth that demonstrate good citizenship by going above and beyond through a brave physical act or a good deed. Sydney and Faith were honored for their exceptional acts of bravery and kindness. To honor a child in your community, use the nomination forms on our website. Open your heart to our chronically ill children. There are two children's hospitals and eight family centers that auxiliary units can assist and support in a variety of ways. Johns Hopkins All Children's St. Petersburg, the Mailman Center in Miami, and Ronald McDonald House Charities throughout the state. Details and wish lists are in your program action plan. Please continue to support Beads of Courage American Legion Child Welfare Foundation and CODA. My special focus, focus pro projects this year will again be Camp Corral and Camp Boggy Creek. Camp Corral is a free opportunity for military and veterans children to attend camp and connect with other kids who understand the unique challenges that come with military life. This summer camp is held at the YMCA Camp Weewa in Apopka. Camp Boggy Creek, located in Eustis, is dedicated to providing a free, safe, and medically sound camp environment for acute and chronically ill children. Each child who attends Camp Boggy Creek receives a handmade boggy bear when they arrive. Check out the pattern on our website. Units donating at least $1 per member close of books 2020 to, end, to either Camp Boggy Creek or Camp Corral will receive the Big Heart Award again this year. There is a unit 
and district mid-year and year-end report questionnaire. Please help me by doing these questionnaires and submitting them on time. The Lois McFall Children and Youth Award rules and guidelines have been streamlined. I am confident that your units will make a remarkable difference in the lives of our children across our state. Please write your accomplishments down and submit a narrative for the Lois McFall Children and Youth Award. We will again be working together as an American Legion family for the children in Florida. The children and youth picnic and the golf tournament are being planned. Dates have not been determined yet. I will let you know when they have come out. We will need volunteers and raffle baskets. Ladies, gentlemen, we rock when we do unit, district, and family baskets. So let's open our hearts wide and make some awesome baskets for these events. Please contact me for pickup. Thank you for everything you do, why you do it, and for being who you are. And please open your heart wide to our children and youth. And now we'll hear from our community service chair. Good morning or afternoon, depending on when you are viewing my first video year in report. I would like to start off by saying you have all done phenomenal work while being in the state of lockdown due to COVID-19. You are not letting this virus stop you from getting out into your communities. Please keep up the good work. Unfortunately, not all districts have reported, but here are some of the highlights of reports that were submitted. District 1, they participated in stand-downs, parades, POW, MIA events, domestic violence events, festival of trees, Halloween events, and community yard sales. They also part participated in 9-11 and Veterans Day events for National Days of Service. The district reported a total of 110 members volunteered for these programs with a total of 3,358 volunteer hours. In District 2, they reported the units participated in clothing and shoe drives, food banks, parades, attended a ceremony for the 75th anniversary of Iwo Jima, took senior shopping and two appointments. They volunteered at libraries and participated in town beautification projects and Arbor Day events. The total number of volunteers was 91, with 7,848 volunteer hours. District 3 reported that only one unit sent in a report. That unit is Live Oak Unit 107, and they helped their post during a yard sale. A total of five volunteers were reported, with a total of 60 volunteer hours. District 5 reported that they participated in parades, cancer walks, VA homeless shelters, libraries, community plays, house sitting, dog walking, taking seniors to appointments, and shopping. They collected clothes and toiletries for a mobile shower unit and pull tabs for Ronald McDonald House. Unfortunately, only a narrative was reported to me, so I do not have any hours to report for that district. District 6 reported they did food drives, collected and donated clothing to the homeless shelters, and assisted neighbors and seniors when needed. They also helped with the cemetery cleanup and participated in a 5K walk run and participated in blood drops. One unit also has an annual peanut butter drive. The total number of volunteers was 565 with 9,884 total volunteer hours. District 7 participated in a fall festival and Founders Day. They held food drives and donated food to the food banks. They had a luncheon for spinal cord patients and donated 35 pounds of can tabs to the Shriners. The total number of volunteers was 18, with a total of 1,600 volunteer hours. 
District 8 reported that the units participated in parades, food collection to give to food banks, and helped with a program called Loveland for challenged adults by hosting bingo for them. They also visited hospitals and nursing homes. The total number of volunteers were 110, with 7,283 volunteer hours. District 9 reported that units participated in community food drives, hurricane relief, breast cancer donations, and attended honor flight departures and homecomings before the program was halted because of COVID. They also reported adopting families for the holidays. The total number of volunteers was 41 with 165 volunteer hours. District 11 supported food banks, volunteered for Special Olympics, collected teddy bears for nursing homes, and transported seniors to appointments and shopping. They also collected empty pill bottles for paws, crocheted prayer shawls, and taught crafts to the seniors. They participated in community landscaping and volunteered at thrift stores, Humane Society, and at Bingo for Seniors. They also helped their communities by making face masks and shields and donated them to the first responders. Their total number was 424 volunteers and 12,557 volunteer hours. District 12 sponsored an angel tree for seniors, drove seniors to appointments and shopping, participated in parades, blood drives, and donated to Halo Animal Rescue. They volunteered at hospitals, churches, vitus, food pantries, and soup kitchens. They also made baskets for the Kiwanis fundraiser and adopted a park. The total number of volunteers was 195, with 19,990 total volunteer hours. District 13 units raised money to help maintain a veteran's park, donated to breast cancer awareness, and donated Halloween candy to a nursing home so residents could pass the candy out to children. They delivered 600 Christmas meals to shut-ins or anyone else needing a meal. They volunteered at the Swamp Cabbage Festival and taught exercise classes at the Senior Center. The district's total number of volunteers was 397, with 31,407 total volunteer hours. District 14 auxiliaries reported that they attended the unveiling of a 9-11 memorial at a local fire station. They participated in strides for cancer walks, toys for cots, and parades. They also had a 100-year celebration and received a proclamation from their local government office. Some donated, donated to the Bahamas for the hurricane relief. The total number of volunteers was 15, with 4,249 volunteer hours. District 15 reported they supported Helping Hands of Tampa, which helped support families of wounded veterans. They also reported participation in parades. The total number of volunteers was 250, with a total of 375 volunteer hours. District 16 had a busy year. One unit reported that they bought a flagpole for their city. They participated in parades, carrying their 100-year banner, they participated in cancer walks, blood drives, and food banks. <clears throat> they volunteered at a better women's shelter, and bought them clothing and personal items. <coughs> Excuse me. Some units brought food for struggling families. The total number of volunteers was 184, with 2,260 total volunteer hours. I would like to mention that most reporting units or districts did participate in the suggested National Days of Service. Excuse me. <clears throat> except for the National Volunteer Week, that's usually the third week of April. And as a finale, I would like to give you the total numbers for the Great State of Florida Community Service Program. Total number of volunteers, 1,727. Total number of volunteer hours was 69,499. The total money spent was 68,377. In-kind donations was $48,243. Thank you, ladies.
for those great members, some of the reporting I had to omit as it pertained to other programs. As a suggestion for next year, maybe you could have the, the, a copy of the plan of action next to you while you're filling out the reports so you can determine which program it should be reported under. Now it is my privilege to announce the winning unit of the Jan Croft Hometown Award. And the winner is John Gella Memorial Unit 219 Fruitland Park Community Service Chairman is Diane Rousseau. Congratulations to the, that auxiliary for the great community service reporting. All in all, this was a good year promoting community service. In closing, please remember to mask up and stay safe, and thank you for all that you do. Our Constitution and Bylaws Chairman will now tell us all we need to know about updating our new Constitution and Bylaws. Good day, I'm Kathy McMullen, Constitution and Bylaws Chairman. This is my 2019-20 year-end report. This has indeed been a challenging year with all the changes and revisions to our Constitution and Bylaws by the American Legion and our American Legion Auxiliary. Samples had to be modified with each new change for the units to use for their convenience. Some use the sample verbatim and others type the whole thing over. Through the year 2019-2020, emails to district presidents and district chairmen were sent to advise them of the changes and how best to implement them. Emails from National Constitution and Bylaws Chairman Trish Ward were forwarded to the district presidents as well. As the postage costs began to mount with most units having to have their documents returned for corrections, I suggested to the district presidents and district chairmen to have the units email their Constitution and Bylaws to me for review and comment on revisions to be made, or if okay, as is. They were then instructed to mail the actual copies to me for approval. At least six units have taken advantage of this convenience. I plan on continuing this cost-saving procedure into the 2021 year. Year-end reports were received from nine districts and one unit reported from another district who had not submitted a report. 62 units have successfully updated their constitution, bylaws, and standing rules to encompass the many changes. <clears throat> 12 units submitted theirs, but they were returned for corrections, and I am still waiting for the revised copies. However, with the COVID-19 shutting down, American legions across the country, units have not been able to meet to get approvals on the changes. I would like to thank the following for their assistance and guidance. Thank you, National Constitution and Bylaws Tr Chairman Trish Ward for your quick response to questions. Constitution and Bylaws Committee member Pat Devine and Parliamentarian Mary Kelly Perkins. That concludes my report. My 2021 fall conference report. Not only did COVID-19 keep us from seeing old friends making new friends and catching up with all the goings on with our American Legion Auxiliary family members for the 2019-20 convention, but now also the 2021 fall conference. I know many of you are as disappointed as I, but still grateful for the concern of our safety and well-being. Thank you, Department President Ann King-Smith, providing this new opportunity to share our reports via videos with all of our members. <clears throat> units have begun meeting again and must consider the safety of all of our members when making plans. Despite that, 23 out of 215 units, or 11%, have submitted their governing documents, which were approved. Four others submitted, but they had to, had to be returned for corrections. District 2 is currently at 33% for approved governing documents submitted for the 2020. 2021 fiscal year. Overall, for the 2019-2021 period, District 15 is to be commended for 85% of the units having complied with updating their governing documents successfully. That is 11 out of 13 units. Well done, District 15. District 1 is close behind with 79% of their units in compliance. 
We currently have 95 units out of 215 which have successfully updated their constitution and bylaws during the 2019 to 2020 years. That's only 44%. However, I'm optimistic many more units will be sending in theirs throughout the remainder of this fiscal year as we try to regain some normalcy. Emails are sent periodically to district presidents, district chairman, and committee member Pat Devine to keep them up to date on the status of the units. Most district presidents have instructed the units to email their updated documents to me for review and comment before actually mailing them. It's been working out extremely well. Have a wonderful holiday season, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. And now we'll hear from our education chairman. Hello, American Legion Auxiliary members. It's nice to be with you again, even if it's only on video. Um, this has been an extraordinary year. COVID-19 has turned us upside down in our efforts to assist our military families and our communities. Posts were all closed in March of 2020. No meetings, no bingo, no dinners, no planning, no socializing, but Florida stepped up. Needs were met by our American Legion Auxiliary Strong. I'd like to just go over a few things on education. My name is Linda Dixon. I'm the education chairman um, for the second year in a row. Um, what this means to me personally is I get to learn a little bit more about education. I would never say I know it all. I have to look constantly. Um, the other great thing is I get to wear Ann King Smith's shirt two years in a row, and I'm happy about that. Um, Give 10 to Education was a great success this year. Um, the Department of Florida was very good. Recipients ranged from elementary schools, high schools, homeschool, daycare, and Head Start. Funds were raised through school bashes, supply drives, breakfast, drop-off boxes, and canteens. Some of the legions participated and helped with monetary and in-kind donations and contributions. Some units have liaisons who visit the schools monthly to discover student needs. Bingo raised money for Give 10. Handicapped programs were inclusive. Other education needs were met. Some units contributed to, contributed to the personal supply needs of children by donating socks, gloves, scarves, and sweatpants in time for the first Florida cold snap. Backpacks were big book bag drives. Copy paper was donated by many units. Liaisons provided return visits to follow up on students meeting their goals and how to meet additional needs. One school requested hygiene kits. Another 20 in District 11 spent $200 on book subscriptions. Dollar Tree was a good gather for many units. Sign language, sign language books were purchased as well. <clears throat> Veterans in community schools had good participation. In District 13, 100 invitations were sent to veterans, inviting them to schools. Unit 136 hosted 70 veterans at Pine Island Elementary. Another unit taught the children about the Honor Flight Program, and thank you cards were made for veterans who participated in Honor Flight. Donations totaling $200 were made to the Constitution Project which teaches children about the Constitution. Another unit hosted and paid for lunch for ROTC students. Flag Day was celebrated in the schools by veterans, teaching children about the flag and how to fold the flag, how and when to raise and lower the flag was taught. ROTC was recognized in the schools by veterans. Assemblies were held in honor of Veterans Day in Flanders Field was read to the students. Supporting veterans associations on campus was accomplished with monetary donations and support to ROTC programs, the teaching of the meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance. 
participation with the Vietnam Education Foundation in teaching flag etiquette. Unit 348 had children draw pictures of what the military meant to them and then hung the pictures in the can canteen, um, something that I thought was very special. American Education Week was supported throughout the state of Florida by goods, supplies, money, and time. A bake sale was held by many units to raise funds for supplies. Bingo was a good fundraiser. ALA Junior Members Loyalty Scholarship. I personally presented information to all auxiliary members who attended my class at Fall Conference last year. I had hard copy information available to all who wanted for all to pass the information along to their districts. Scholarships, unit scholarships, 44 plus for a total of $64,000 a little more than 64 actually. Department scholarships, 1,600. Units did very well. Box tops and soup label programs are being utilized for schools. People are acclimating to all the online box top program. It's really easy to use. Um, I again urge everybody to kind of step up a little bit, step out of the box, think out of the box. Let's see how we can make this year even better than last year. We were we were hindered last year, but we we did so well. Um, I welcome you all to send me ideas. I'll pass them along. Um, participate in any way you can with education. Give 10 to education is one of my favorites. It's actually the easiest. Putting those veterans in the school is, could be, could be difficult, but we have Zoom, um, we have Teams, we have other means of interacting today. Zoom is very easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Thank you again, education people, units, posts, everybody who contributed. Your participation is much appreciated. I look forward to the day when we can all be together again. Thank you. I'm sure we're all anxious to hear from our Girl State Chairman. Greetings, I'm Charlotte Bass, and pleased to be your Department Girl State Chairman again for the 2020-21 year. Last year, we were very disappointed that we couldn't have girls stay, but everyone was willing to do whatever it took to try other ways for orientation, even changing the dates for the session. But it finally came down to the making the decision to cancel girls stay for the health and well-being for all involved. I had been receiving emails already from girls interested in the 2020-21 girls stay session and had been forwarding them to their contact information to the girls district girls state chairman in the area. I know this will be Florida strong, and once again, we will do all that is possible to see Girls State go forward. To provide, the purpose of Girls State is to provide a unique and coveted educational opportunity for young women to receive citizenship training through a week-long hands-on program involving a mock city, country, state, and government. The qualifications for Girls State is that applicants must have a strong interest in the study of government, leadership, trust, honesty, and good academic standings are important and desired. Applicants must have be in their junior year of high school and returning to their high school year for their senior for their senior year. They must be a resident of the state of Florida and be willing to take an oath of office on, on the Bible or book of their choice or faith and salute the American flag. A, ALA Girls State Unit Registration completed for the 2020 forms and session of the ALA Girls State Program are due to the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida no later than January 31st. The non-refundable registration fee is $400 per delegate. Should your delegate be unable to attend, an alternate will be sent in place. Please note, unit quota amounts and fees must not be included with the regular registration fees. For reporting, District Chairman Mid-Year Report. Good news, your 2019-2020 year-end report is now your mid-year report, which I've already received. The only reporting that you might send to me is if units have done anything as far as fundraiser promoting Girls State. 
those reports are due to me by December 15, 2020, so that I can add to my new mid year. This will be anything that was not reported in the 2020 year end report. Unit chairman year end report must be completed and submitted to district chairman by April 1, 2020. District chairman, complete your district year end report and mail to department chairman by April 15, 2021. Some of the more important, the important dates, first week in November 2020, registration paperwork if you mail to units. They are also available on the department website. January 31st, 2021, completed registration forms and registration fee, $400 per delegate, must be received at the department headquarters and checks paid out to the ALA Department of Florida. On January 31st, 2021, Deadline to qualify for over quoted delegates must be received in department by the deadline. March 15, 2021, delegates and alternates online registration must be completed by, that, by the deadline. Now we have the Girl State Award, which is the Amelia M. Reese Award. A narrative is required by a unit whose Girl State citizen participates in the unit's overall programming upon returning from Girl State. All entries must be typed, used, using double space and see the ALA Department of Florida Unit Guide for Complete Rules. Narrative on the above activities must be double spaced. The cover sheet must include the unit number, unit name, and girl state chairman. All entries must be sent to the department 30 days, department chairman 30 days prior to convention. The scholarship, ALA Unit Girl State Scholarship. All Department of Florida Unit Girl State Scholarship opportunity is for the Cindy Burroughs Girl State Scholarship. It was established in 2009 in memory of Cindy Burroughs to allow a unit without the financial means necessary to apply to send the girls to the ALA Florida's Girl State Session. This application is available online at the, on the department website. There is a limited number of scholarships available. And then we also have our Girls 2020 21 Girl State Additional Resources. Uh, please see the American Legion Department of Florida website, alafl.org, under the Girl State to access additional information about the Girl State Department of Florida. Uh, the program action plans and chairman guides are available online at alafl.org. Not all forms have been updated, but will be soon. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me. I will keep your girl, district girl state chairman updated on any changes or new information as I receive it. This is your year-end report for, that I will be sending in to the Department of National as our mid-year. Each year, the Department of Florida sends 300 girls across the state to girl state along with the approximately 40 volunteers and 10 female state troopers. Our troopers volunteer each time this year to assist in the program. Our girls have a unique opportunity where they actually get to spend the last three days in our state capital in Tallahassee. They are able to be in the actual House of Representatives, sit and vote in congressional seats, the same as with the Senate. They also do a mock trial in the Supreme Court. This gives the girls a realistic experience to see what actually like to serve in the positions that they have been chosen to be in. Units have used a variety of ways to select the delegates for the girl state. They contact school guidance counselors, JRTC, and possible candidates from their unit. Some, some use questionnaires and the American essay before they do their interview process. Girls are then interviewed and selected. The units got creative in trying to raise money to send girls to Girl State. District 1 raises unit funds from unit bowling, held a golf tournament and dinners. District 2 had a buy monthly hamburger and cake, and cake sales. District 6, one unit received a community club grant. One gets uh, help from the writers chapter, and the chapter pays for one girl. The district sick also has an annual district picnic with proceeds going to transportation. In the seventh district, 72 held his chicken dinner fundraiser and served 42 dinners, and proceeds of $400 were raised to send one girl to Girl State. Five members assisted with 15 hours of volunteer time. District eight, one unit held a wine raffle basket. District 12 used proceeds from the Queen of Hearts lottery hat raffle. Luzo, Quarter Action, and Turkey Bowl to send their girls to Bowl State. District 13 received donations from the Sons of the American Legion and the American Legion Riders to help. District 15 had nine out of the 12 girls return to speak for sponsoring units. Also, some of the girls assisted with copies and Memorial Day services. 
Other fundraisers in the state were raffle baskets, craft sales, 50-50, yard sales, bingo, and a variety of other fundraisers. It cost our units $400 per girl, 120000 for the 300 we sent. Other expenses include meals that are provided to the girls at the proper cost of $164,000, plus housing, transportation to and from Tallahassee, transportation to and from the capital for three days. We have set up a registry at Walmart for items needed in the dormitories where units can purchase items. Also, we have a cost list of each meal for the day that units can donate to sponsor one of these meals. As 2020 approached, we provided a recruit to be ALA strong. Units began contacting schools to get their girl state delegates. Applications were given out, girls were interviewed, and fundraisers continued. Orientation dates were set, and all were ready to proceed to the next step, preparing for our 2019-2020 girl state session. Then in March, everything came to a screeching halt with uncertainty of what was going to happen next due to the pandemic and closing the post. Our districts and units once again proved that they were ALA Florida strong and were willing to hold the phone conference orientations and whatever it would take to still work the program, not knowing what the future would bring. Then the heartbreaking decision had to be made to cancel Girl State for the safety of both our staff and our Girl State delegates. I am pleased to say that 100% of the District Girl State Chairman, 16, turned in year-end reports. For the 2019 Girl State session, we had 283 to attend with a with a total of $115,200 to spend to send them. This did not include the extra money that the units gave to the girls for incidentals once the girls were there. For the 2020 Girls State session, 283 girls have completed all of their pay paperwork with a total cost of units of $113,200. Most units have opted to roll over that money for the 2021 session. The additional done Donations for breakfast, dinners, and other items needed for the Girl State session totaled $8,791. There were 107 girls from the 2019, 2019 session that were trying to speak about the Girl State opportunities. Some girls helped with dinners, fundraising, and distributing copies. The American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida had 18 girls join the auxiliary after attending Girl State. For the 2019-2020 year, from the units reporting to their districts, we have 282 volunteers with a total of 6,863 hours. We have approximately 30 girls' state volunteers to spend a total of 11 days prior to the girls' state coming while the girls are there with a total of 2,716 hours. We may have had a few hurdles to overcome, but as we proceed with the next girls' state program, our motto says it best, forward forever, backward never, within ourselves our future lives. Our department historian will now give her report. Hi, I'm Eleanor Amato and I am the historian for the department. Why do we have a history program? To honor those members who have made a difference in our organization at all levels. Members can look back and learn what efforts were successful and why. They can look at the missteps, which can assist in determining a future strategy. Pride in our organization can motivate the current membership to bring in new members, achieve more goals, and create a sense of strength and conviction. Maintain and preserve our records. What can we do? Include current events that impact the American Legion Auxiliary. And we had quite a few this year. Highlight historical, important, and interesting events in your unit. Use new technology to create and maintain digital images and records. And post your unit history on the Legion's Auxiliary Centennial Celebration webpage. What is expected? Collect information about famous auxiliary members, include full names, years of membership, details of what they did, and who they are and why they are famous. Remember, 
include where you found this information. Your history is in more places than in the artifacts, in your meeting minutes, governing documents, newspaper articles, photos, etc. Set up a system as to how they will be kept. Feature a historical item or write an article about the important time in the unit's history in your department newsletter. And of course, we all know our newsletter is the mail call. Initiate a history project. Learn the history of your unit, department, and national organization. For documents and photos, digitize them. Make sure to make more than one copy and the additional copies stored in different places and then try to find them when you want them. An organization benefits itself and the public by preserving its records and making them available for use by everyone inside and outside the organization. I'm going to go and follow the plan of action so that if you have one with you, or if you don't, just put me on hold, go get it, come back, and follow me. Everybody freaks out about a narrative, and a narrative is nothing other than having a story to tell. Unit historians shall write a unit history to be entered into the department contest. Start compiling your information early and bulletins for additions or future information. We're going to go over that a little later on in reference to the awards. What is a narrative? A narrative is some kind of retelling in words of something that happened. It's a story. The narrative is not the story itself, but rather telling the story. Always use third person. Do not use I or we, third or you, third person. Why should I write a narrative? Narrative shape history, the series of events, the story of what happened. How do I write a narrative? When a unit or a member of a unit does something to support one of the auxiliary programs, the best practice is to write down what was done as soon after as possible. On the next page of this document, you will see a list of 21 questions. Once an event held, fill the answers to the 21 questions, then print the last page, the good place to start template. What's your story? As those of us responsible for collecting, preserving, and sharing the American Legion Auxiliary's history at the unit, department, or national level, we often pride ourselves in being storytellers. The ability to communicate our organization's story is a key component of garnering support. Whether you want to attract more members, create new partnerships, or secure larger donations, you have to build a case for support. This case starts with your units and department story, where it came from, where it is now, and where it could go in the future. So start thinking now about how your organization fits into your community. Why does it matter? To whom does it matter? If you haven't stopped to answer these questions, give them some thought. Remember that the heart of every case for support is the story. What is your organization's story? Why does your place matter? Talk to your board, your members, your guests, and perhaps most importantly, talk with those who have never been through your door. The first step is knowing why this place matters. The second step is telling others. Part of the history program is record and post to 
quote, members remember, end quote. What better way to tell the history of a, a person is by recording it. And Miss Shirley Fraser is going to get recorded this year in reference to what she did. The history of the American Legion begins, began in November 1919 and continues with you. The organization's history, like any other history, is more than just names and dates. It is about its membership and how it developed the American Legion Auxiliaries programs and projects to fulfill our mission of serving the veterans, service members, and their families who sacrifice much for our country. Next is how to celebrate Women's History Month. March is the month dedicated to the celebration of women's history. It corresponds with the International Women's Day on March 8th. What could be better for our women's organization and men's organization to do than to celebrate their own history? Our auxiliary members have accomplished a great deal all around the world. Now it's time to celebrate and what makes them so special. Veterans History Project. This is a great project for a junior member. Work with juniors to promote the Veterans History Project through social media, emails, and during meetings. Stress the importance of collecting the history and the ease of participating in the project through all communications. Juniors get a patch when they perform a Veterans History Project. Mid-year report needs to be submitted by December 1st and send it directly to me. Give me your unit's number and your unit history name. Now, the report is basically three significant events that happen in, to, in your unit. Please give me that information. At the end of, let's see. Okay, if you did not do a narrative, narrative at the end, the end is June 1st, if you did not do a narrative, I want you to do this end of the year report and give me three of your events because it will go into my narrative that will go to, uh, to national. And that's what I wanted to talk about. You do not have to do a narrative if you are not going to enter a contest. The contest is narrative and you need to send a cover page and tell me that you are entering that narrative for competition. If your unit is not participating in the awards, send me this information so I have it because everybody does something special at least once a year. There is an annual report which is basically uh, very simple. How, uh, how many uh, units, uh, basically it's for your district, how many units went and submitted a narrative, et cetera. It's in your plan of action. We have guidelines for your history narrative when you enter the contest. The Senior History Award, you must use a fly page. What's a fly page? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I once thought it was a fly on the page. I didn't know what a fly page was. A fly page tells your unit name and number, your location, city and state, name of the historian and the president, the date, number of junior members, history must have a story, and then, that's your fly page. Number two, your history must have a story as events occurred, starting with or after the department convention. Photos are allowed limited to five. It must be secured in a folder or a binder. And I must have it by May 1st. Juniors need to follow the same guideline. And the junior history, the best one will go to national for a junior history award. Okay, basically, we went over the full plan of action. However, there is some more information if you go online, you, underneath 
the historian and go and look and pick out what you want because it has been separated, like information for the senior award, uh, about a celebration of women, uh, Women's Month, and members remembered. Okay, right now I'm going to give you the report that I would normally give to you at full conference. The Department of Florida consists of 214 units, and we received 20 senior unit histories for competition. All membership groupings had submissions. Now, it would be great if we could get at least 50% of the units reporting. So, I'd like to see 100 this year. Report, if you don't have a narrative, give me the three items that you could tell me about. We need to continue to promote the importance of keeping a thorough and complete record of activities and accomplishments in our units and districts for the year so that the department can reference their activities in the department's report, which goes to national. This was especially important for our 100-year anniversary. But boy, what a year for history. The pandemic hit, not only the United States, but also the entire world. Anniversary celebrations were canceled, along with meetings, constitutional conferences, and conventions. It has been determined that the American Legion Auxiliary will continue with celebrations this coming year, 2020 to 2021 year. So you could submit something in reference to your 100 year anniversary. National advised that several programs will give awards for combined years of 2019 through 2020 to 2021. Breakout sessions for history and all other programs were held at the department convention. And here we are at our first virtual fall conference. The historian was available for any questions during the entire year. There were several unit histories sent into Southern Division for competition. However, this must be addressed for the following year because it needs to be sent to the department chairman. Also, the awards will be given for a two-year history. So you take your last year's history and this year's history, and you combine them. And you combine them in a binder, and you send them to the department history, me, historian. My address is in the, uh, what do you call it, uni guide, and the address, I believe, is on the website. Please. It's going to be a long page. Please do not send it for me to print it out because if I had to print out 20 senior units, I'd have to get new a paper and new ink. Plans for upcoming year will be continued to work on histories together with the units through Facebook and now Zoom. The time has come for history awards. The most awaited time of my seminar. <laughs> First of all, I would like to recognize two young ladies that did their best. I hope you will try next year to be able to receive an award in your grouping. An honorable mention certificate will be sent to the following in recognition for their work. The Honorable Mention Certificate for Group 1 is going to Barbara Stubbs, Unit 220, Fort Lauderdale. Group 2, Nancy Tosca, Unit 88 in Jacksonville. Now, for the best history in Group 3 goes to Karen Moore, Unit 72, Mulberry, District 7. Congratulations, Karen. Group 4 goes to Cindy Anderson, Unit 250, Middleburg, District 5. Thank you, Cindy. Group 5 
Patricia Grayshaw, Unit 323, Lehigh Acres, District 13. Thank you, Patricia. Great job. Group 6, Emily Lees, Unit 275, Dunedin, District 16. Oh my God, I could hear them screaming in 275. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Great job. Congratulations. Now comes for the best all-around history in the department. This gal, she did a terrific job, and I'm really, really so proud of her. It goes to Patricia Grayshaw, Unit 323, Lehigh Acres, District 13. Thank you, Patricia. Now, in order to get you guys, gals, to send me a history, we decided to go and do a raffle for everybody who went and sent me a history. So I have all the members that send me a history, which were 21 in this envelope. And if you don't remember, if you could see this, this is what you will be receiving. I am so thrilled that Kathy Helmley made this. And you will receive the necklace and the earrings. So I am going to draw the name now. Or should I have somebody else draw the name? Is there anybody in the audience that could come over here and pull out a name? Nobody? Here I go. I'm not looking. Well, I don't want to pull out two. I only need one. And the winner of the history raffle goes to Doris Clark, Unit 173 in Holiday. Thank you. If anyone should have any questions about history or what to do, when to do it, when to send it, you could call me up. My home phone number is 386-427-1168. I have a funny phone though. You have to leave your name in order for me to answer it because they AT&T's phone now has a um, spam thing and they go and make you say your name and then I pick up the phone. Well, because of that, I get no telephone calls. But anyhow, I have a cell phone too. You could call up on 386-689-4017 or you could email me. Thank you so very, very much for your attention and see you soon. Our department junior chairman will tell us about all the exciting things our juniors have been doing. Hi there, I'm Tara Oliver and I'm your 2019, 2020 and 2021 junior activities chairman for the Department of Florida. I am honored and thrilled that President Ann King-Smith asked me to be your committee chairman. And with the help of some awesome committee members, Robin Shellhammer, Carolyn Brown, and new to our committee, Tara Harris and Nancy Patterson, we couldn't be happier that this committee has been rejuvenated and is very active in the Department of Florida. We have to thank all of the American Legion Auxiliary Junior Advisors and mentors out there because remember, the juniors are our future. And eventually, they'll be running this organization. The Junior Activities Program inspires active, produ productive members who will want to continue their membership in the American Legion Auxiliary well into adulthood. The mission of the Junior Activities Committee is to promote volunteerism through community-based programs and services that involve veterans and teach the principles of loyalty to God and country, justice, freedom, and democracy to our young members. 
We will never make it into the next 100 years if we don't put the juniors on our team. Last year, we had a great group of young ladies that were willing to step up and run for honorary department junior officers. The girls were installed at the 2019 convention held in Orlando. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the 2019-2020 Honorary Department Junior President, Delaney Anya Oliver, to introduce her officers that served and to tell you a little bit about what the juniors were involved with last year. Hello everybody, my name is Delaney and I was the 2019-2020 Honorary Department Junior President and I just wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about the year that we had. About this time last year, we had workshop and that was kind of like the first big thing that we did. We got to strut around dressed up as bikers and it was very enjoyable. We had these little t-shirt vests with all these fun patches and our names on them. It was very enjoyable and very fun. We made bags for the honor flight passengers to snack on and Everybody was so gracious and donated so much, but sadly not everything could get used for the honor flight bags. And what couldn't get used, we therefore donated back to the community and a large portion of the single packaged candies that were donated were actually given to the Ronald McDonald House. Fall conference was absolutely incredible. We had a lot of fun. We of course had the walkthrough, which was incredibly entertaining and very fun. And a lot of us girls actually Actually got to really connect with the more senior members of the auxiliary it was really great just to talk with them and figure out because a lot of us actually are moving up I included um, and it was really great to talk about that and especially like leadership roles within the American Legion Auxiliary and the American Legion Auxiliary Juniors. In January of 2020, we had our national meeting in Orlando, Florida. It was really fun and it was great to meet all the girls from other states within the Southern Division. We of course did our famous American Legion Auxiliary Junior Cheers, like Coast to Coast and Star Trek. And I know a lot of the senior members actually learned Coast to Coast, so that way they could sing it with us. We had so much fun designing walker bags, which are basically just a bag that a veteran who uses a walker or wheelchair would put on their walker or wheelchair and then they would have a bag. We designed those as well as little poppy magnets and hair clips. They were really, really fun to do. Although the COVID-19 pandemic did keep us apart, we were able to stay in contact through the Facebook page as well as Snapchat and Instagram direct messaging and all that other fun stuff. Um, during the pandemic, we did do an online leadership training, which was really educational. Um, and I know I learned a lot and I'm assuming a lot of the other girls did as well. Um, another thing that we did do during the COVID-19 pandemic is make masks for auxiliary members as well as veterans. And I just also wanted to say um, a huge thank you to everybody who has supported us juniors throughout the year, especially with everything going on right now. I want to give a big thank you to my mom for helping me out, especially with signing me up for the American Legion Auxiliary Junior since I was born. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody and I will now be introduced introducing the 2019-2020 officers. Now going from left to right, we have Delaney Oliver, who is the Honorary Department Junior President. Next to her, we have Sydney Brochi, who is the Honorary Department Junior Vice President. Next, we have Katie Taylor, who is our Honorary Department Junior Secretary. Jasmine Harris, who is the Honorary Department Junior Treasurer. Addie Hawk, who is the Honorary Department Junior Chaplain, Julian Asplin, who is the Honorary Department Junior Sergeant at Arms, and then Savannah Stalins, who is the Honorary Department Junior Historian. I just want to give a huge thank you to the 2019 and 2020 officers. As Delaney mentioned, the juniors participated at workshop in August. We had five juniors and one young SAL member that helped put together Honor Flight snack bags. Nine ALA members and one young SAL member attended fall conference in November, and that's when the girls got to hold their elections for this coming year. When this pandemic hit and COVID happened, we tried to see what we could do to have some sense of normalcy. So with the help of technology, we have a video of the Facebook video chat that we could install our 2020-2021 Honorary Junior Department Officers. 
Installation of officers. Everybody ready? The Department of Florida. Members, which we have Robin Shell member. Hi, Robin. Our current and past, Carolyn Brown. Hi, Carolyn. Uh, Tara was on. She's over there. She's in the corner. And myself, Dara Oliver. All right, here we go. We will now proceed with the installing of honorary junior officers. Mm -hmm. Honorary department junior president. That's Jasmine. Oops. Our vice president is not here. Our treasurer will be next. That's Haley. Sergeant at arms, which is Julianne, correct? Right. Okay. Here we go, Julianne. Honorary Department Sergeant at Arms, it is your duty to keep the order at all meetings and to see that the flags are advanced, retired, and properly stored. Your attendance at meetings is very important and is a valuable aid to the president. Congratulations. Can we see you real quick? Honorary Department Junior Historian, you are charged with the responsibility you will attend the meetings and keep a neat and orderly history that will guide the footsteps. Follow. Congratulations. Honorary Department Junior Chaplain. That's Evelyn, right? The spiritual leader of the group. Your words and actions will represent our founding principles of service to God and country. You will be giving me opening and closing prayers at all the meetings and provide prayer at special occasions and set a good example for other members. Congratulations. Haley. Your office is one of great trust. You, you will keep the record of the money with the agreement of your advisor. You are entrusted in the sacred duty of upholding the four great principles expressed in the pre preamble to the Constitution of justice, freedom, democracy, and loyalty. Congratulations. If you will all please raise your right hand. Say I and state your name. I do solemnly pledge to I do solemnly pledge to perform faithfully all the duties of the office that I am about to assume. And I further pledge that I am not a member of, nor do I subscribe to the principles of any group opposed to our form of government. Our Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon these newly installed officers. Guide them in their work as they lead us with the ready hearts and willing hands to the program of the American Legion Auxiliary Juniors. Hopefully in your path of service, give them the wisdom to work closely with our junior advisor and senior officers. Make proper decisions and help them use their talents wisely. We pray for their blessings as all unit members do. Amen. On behalf of the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida Juniors, I want to thank all of our new honorary junior officers for your willingness to serve. May you enjoy your turn and always be a loyal member to the American Legion Auxiliary. This installation is complete. Congratulations, girls. We had 10 juniors attend the national juniors meeting that was held in Orlando on January 11th. We tied for the second highest number of participants from one department that attended the national juniors meeting. That was a lot of fun. I know the girls had a great time. I also want to talk about all of the other things that the juniors have been working on all across the state of Florida. Some juniors helped with Honor Flight. They did purple up and some will be receiving a certificate soon for wearing purple. Um, a military child's table. They wrapped Christmas gifts. They wrote cards out. They 
participate in flag retirement ceremonies. During COVID, they helped with mask making and donating necessary items. Some got online and did the junior leadership course. Um, one actually participated in the junior shooting sports, a Vietnam veteran paracord challenge, and won the Congressional Award Bronze Medal. So congratulations to Ashley. Good job. program. I love the patch program and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, we are very fortunate that the patch program, you do not have to live in the state of Florida even though you may be a member. So if you can encourage something that a junior participates in, have them do the patch program. In Unit 283, we had a junior named Alicia Wisman. Um, she earned three patches in the red level, level one. In the gold level, level two, we had uh, Mackenzie Samuelson from Unit 347. She earned one patch. We had a young SAL member also received from the gold level two, Josiah Moore from Squadron 283. He earned three patches. And then from our blue level three, uh, we had Delaney Oliver in unit 344. She received two patches. <clears throat> she also received the third one because of the 100th anniversary. And I actually have to show you something. This is the Goodwill patch. It's brand new. Can everybody see that? That's the Goodwill patch. And this is actually the first Goodwill patch that was ever given. So Delaney was awarded that, and um, that's pretty exciting that the Department of Florida, once again, has another little accolade to add to our stuff. But that's not all who participated in the patch program. We had one junior that was definitely an overachiever, and I wanna, I wanna have a special little moment for her. Uh, Evelyn Derwin Davidson earned 11 patches for the Red Level One. And as soon as we can meet in person, I will be happy to present all of these patches to all of these juniors and young SIL members. So congratulations to all and keep up the good work. Please keep the patch program alive. Thanks. I also wanted to give a big shout out to all the districts that are sending in their reports and making sure that the junior activities is alive and active. Keep up the good work. Reports are very important. So don't forget to send those reports in. Um, I did receive a lot of them. Um, I also want to talk about the awards. Some of the national awards will be given at a later date. They're combining the past two years because of COVID. So if you submitted some awards, do not fret. They're going to be um, put into a combined um, award. Oh, hopefully you'll hear something about those. I did receive a Junior Member of the Year award. That is also on the national level, so we won't hear anything until they do the judging for that. I do want to mention that District 2 is up in junior membership. We had a little award, a little fun award that was going to be given. Um, Unit 13 from Tallahassee gained a, a junior, so congratulations. District 15, they are also up in membership for the juniors. Um, Unit 152, Tampa gained one. Unit 26 from Plant City also gained one. Uh, unit 186, Brooksville, gained one, and Unit 147, Odessa, gained two. And then the biggest winner is um, District 11. They are up from last year. Um, they had 18 in 2019, and this year, so far at this time, they had 34. So congratulations, District 11. Keep building those juniors, everyone. So I'm going to give a big shout out to Unit um, 20, Bell Glade, gained one. Unit 65 from Delray Beach gained one. Um, 288, Boynton Beach gained six. 
271 Tesquita, I think that's how you pronounce it, they gained three. Uh, 164 Boynton Beach gained three, but the biggest gain was from Unit 268 Riviera Beach gained 10 juniors. So congratulations. I'm sure that our team is so happy to hear that. And remember everyone, please, even if you can just gain one junior, that also helps for our membership. So keep it going, build our juniors, and have a great time. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me or any you're, you're in need of ideas, please make sure you reach out to me as the junior um, activities chairman. I have lots of ideas and we can also work together on building a great uh, department for our juniors. This concludes my report. I hope you've enjoyed it and have a great day in God and Country. This is Dara Oliver for Junior Activities. Thanks again. Everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. First, let me apologize. I am not in my proper attire. I recently had rotator cuff surgery and there was no way I was getting into a suit jacket today, so I do apologize. So welcome to the new norm, everyone. I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot about that during this new adventure called Virtual Fall Conference. I would like to thank President Ann and Secretary Patty for thinking outside the box to bring us all together and stay together and stay connected. I sure miss you guys. I miss our full conference and I miss our department and national conventions and just getting together and rehashing stuff and talking and having a fun time. As far as this video goes, I'm an amateur, so please bear with me. Now let's go back in time to what would have been our department year-end convention. Our units and districts did a fabulous job in leadership and mentoring. Of course, the year started with the great training and education programs by the Department of Florida officers and chairman. At our department workshop, district presidents started signing up their districts for ABC leadership schools with great enthusiasm. There was even more enthusiasm during the leadership presentation, which was done as a team effort, because we do work together. Part of the th program was a skit called the Frankfurter Sisterhood, designed to help members understand the challenges of being a new member. We've all been there. Then, in a show of unity and camaraderie, the members in attendance participated in the finale, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, to bring home the point that programs need to be fun and motivate members to get involved. Throughout the auxiliary year, several districts used these PowerPoint presentations and the skit during their schools of instruction and other educational opportunities throughout the year. I'm really proud of that. At last year's Department Fall Conference, the Department Leadership and UDNR Chairman held a conflict management breakout session, which was very well attended by 46 members. During the breakout session, the importance of team building, mentoring, grooming, and leadership development were strongly encouraged. We discussed issue and conflict resolution along with conflict do's and don'ts. The session ended with a question and answer period which resulted in members helping other members with ways to resolve some of the same ish challenges that they face in their units. Conflict management is a hot topic with National this year. There's a whole program on it, on, that, on the national website, and there's a lot of information on the national website on how to address conflict within your unit before it becomes a major issue. As most of you are aware, Auxiliary Basic Concepts Leadership Training Classes are ongoing training sessions held throughout the year. These classes are held at the district level and are taught by highly trained ABC leadership instructors. The ABC instructor training 
takes anywhere from a year to two years to ensure that the instructor is fully knowledgeable and has the necessary leadership skills to ensure that members are properly educated. It is also necessary that they can answer the questions that come up during the training sessions and if they don't know that answer they have the tools to find out where to get the answer, not just pull something out of the air. Currently there are eight certified instructors with four getting ready to become certified. There were 23 classes held last year with an average of 35 to 40 members in attendance at each. We had been at 100% of districts holding ABC leadership schools until this pandemic hit. We then had to cancel four classes. Only one of those districts has rescheduled their training sessions. Let's get on this leaders. We can't expect our members to know what needs to be done or how to do it if we don't teach them. The feedback from the classes that were held was mostly positive, but also some districts gave some feedback which was mixed on the reviews of the knowledge of the instructors. They reported that it was also problematic to motivate members to want to attend ABC schools. The department leadership team has been planning on incorporating this feedback into restructuring the program and re-educating the instructors as well as brainstorming with them on how to get members motivated to want to participate and who, to want to attend these training sessions. Unfortunately, for reasons out of our control, this will not happen as quickly as we would have liked for it to happen. For the mid-year report, I received 10 out of 16 district reports. For the year-end report, I received 11 out of 16 reports. One more. Okay, so we got a little bit better, but not 100%. It really is critical that we receive these reports so we can improve our programs where needed as well as reporting to National what the wonderful Department of Florida has accomplished throughout the year. The year-end reports received were dynamic. Many district and unit chairmen reported actively mentoring their members and helping them to become new and better leaders. The 15th district president and leadership chairman have taken training a step further and have been holding many training sessions that include topics such as protocol, duties of officers and chairmen, and how and when to file their 990s. That's a head scratcher. Excellent feedback was received. Old Glory Unit 183 reported a strong effort in their leadership program and reported ongoing review of pro proper protocol, code of conduct, proper use of the forms available on the department and national websites, the 5th District incorporates training methods at each of the monthly district meetings. Unit 133 reported that they have distributed the extremely useful how-to sheets and reviewed them with their membership to ensure that they all know how to utilize them. And those can be found there at the national website. The 12th District Leadership Chairman reported ongoing distribution of materials to the units to ensure that they were kept up to date on information and were reminded how to utilize the tools available to them. The district was in the process of creating a training session for potential officers and chairmen when the dreaded pandemic hit. Inspired by their president, LaBelle Unit 130 has re-sparked its leadership program enthusiasm by having members attend the different district and department level meetings to help them become stronger leaders. Unit 303's leadership chairman held a special training on report writing. That's pretty important. Report writing has been highlighted as a strong need for additional training. Ten members of Charles E. Murray Unit 186 took the Senior Auxiliary Basics course, and they all passed with flying colors. Thank you, ladies. Unfortunately and sadly, only three units reported offering the National Junior Leadership course. Folks, our juniors are our future leaders. They're our future. We need to teach them. We need to mentor them. It's no wonder that the truly best reports I've received were prepared and written by long-standing members of the American Legion Auxiliary and our past department presidents. Please, please, please 
tap into these invaluable resources. Find out who in your unit and district has had all these years of ALA experience and knowledge and tap into their brains. Too many times, too many times we ignore what we have right in front of us. These women have a wealth of knowledge that they're willing to share. Utilize it. And on the flip side, past presidents of all, late, of all levels, please reach out. Reach out to help. Don't wait to be asked. Please be open-minded to new ideas and to change and work together as a team and mentor to make your unit, your district, and department the best possible. Remember, it's not about us. It's about our veterans, our active duty military, their families, and our youth. Let's work together to get the job done. So what have we been doing so far this year? Well, the members of the mighty Department of Florida are still planning and working to hold, to, to fulfill their obligations as ALA members. To date, District 7, with a brand spanking new district president, has held the first ABC leadership training session of this auxiliary year. Great job, Faye. You're rocking it, girl. District 16 and 12 have their schools planned for January, and I know they will be fantastic. For the rest of the districts, if you haven't done so already, please start planning your ABC training session and get the date to me so I can ensure we can get you an instructor. I've received calls from several units asking about holding their own mini ABC training schools, and I think that's a wonderful idea. Tap into the resources you have within your unit and make a full fun day of it. Camaraderie, education, mentorship, and most of all, fun. However, as a mini school, you don't get credit for the full ABC leadership training, and we cannot supply an ABC leadership instructor. Now let's get back to one of this year's main focuses, dealing with conflict. You'll see in November's mail call, that's my focus, and I've identified a lot of resources we can use to deal with this issue, such as national website, National's website, in improving unit relationships. There's an entire supplement about that. Again, this is one of the pieces. This is the conflict management supplement, which can be found at the national website under resources. And here's that website. Print out this conflict management supplement and distribute it to your unit members to read and work on together. It's a great team building exercise. And here's my challenge to you. Do this team building exercise. Take pictures and send them and a brief synopsis to me and I will include it in my year-end report and future leadership training videos. There might even be a little something for the, for the leadership chairman and unit president. Same challenge goes out to district. So district presidents, district leadership chairman, challenges there for you as well. Another great team building mentoring exercise is to do the Senior Basics Concept course together. This can be found on the national website, bear with me, for leadership. And there's that website. It's important to get the job done but it's also important to have fun doing it. Working together is fun. Now, for what you've all been waiting for, awards for the 2019-2020 auxiliary year. Hmm. Unfortunately, I didn't receive any applications for unit nurturing a culture of goodwill, which is kind of surprising. So let's get that goodwill flowing and have lots of entries for this year. Because I know with this crazy pandemic and everything else that's going on, I know how hard we're all working together to support each other. So I really would love to see lots of applications for that award come next, come the end of um, this auxiliary year. And for the outstanding district leadership chairman, drum roll please. Yeah, I know I'm a goofball, sorry. It's been from staying in all this time. 
The award goes to District 12 Leadership Chairman Pat Donahue, who of course is a past department president and who shared her wealth of knowledge and expertise with the district throughout the year. Congratulations and thank you, Pat, for your mentorship, your leadership, your ideas, and for thinking outside the box. Folks, please check out the department website and leadership program documents for more information and assistance with leadership, mentoring, and working together. And most of all, please stay safe and healthy and continue praying for our country. God bless you. God bless your family, God bless our veterans, and God bless our country. See you soon. My name is Lisa Hoyland, and I'm honored and privileged to serve as your Department of Florida Legislation Chairman. Your legislative committee is Molly Maine and Sandy Allen, and our theme is Advocacy Strong, Florida Strong. The American Legion Auxiliary advocates with and on behalf of veterans, the military, and their families. Advocacy is defined as a constituent relaying his or her ideas and opinions to governmental officials. Advocacy succeeds when many individuals with the same goals and sentiments contact government officials and staff members to express their views. Department of Florida has been advocacy strong while being Florida strong this past year. The American Legion family has proven to be a mighty force in providing for today's needs and working towards a better future for our military, veterans, families, and community. Advocacy is not the responsibility of a few. It is the responsibility of all who care about our veterans. So what have we done? Department of Florida legislative team started out with creating our FLALA legislative page and we now have over 250 followers. Please encourage your members to like our page so that this is a great source to stay connected to what is happening with our legislative program. I traveled to many units in different districts along with a trip to visit our members in District 1. It was great to see so many engaged in the legislative program. I had the honor and privilege to attend the National Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C where American Legion families stormed the hill to promote our legislative agenda. Upon my return, COVID hit and that stopped us all in our tracks. What did our members do? Since this was our ALA 100th birthday, over 20 units completed the ALA 100th birthday proclamations. Members made over 100 calls, wrote letters, made personal visits, and encouraged members to stay connected with their officials on Facebook or by signing up for action alerts through the American Legion Legislative Center. COVID hit and thankfully the legislative program is one that can be done at home. So that work didn't stop. We saw our legislative action in place. So our Department of Florida Legion family came together to write letters, make calls to support our post homes. Our legislative direction comes from the American Legion and we follow bills under the direction of the American Legion Legislative Center. Units the past year followed bills in supporting our agenda, along with taking action on the following. Gold Star Widows Tax, Burn Pit Exposure, the Legion Act, the Coast Guard Reauthorization Act, the Veterans Compensation Act, Lip Cost of Living Act of 2019, the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veteran Act, just to name a few. This has also been an important year, so we head into election. We reminded our members that we are nonpartisan and the importance of voting. Many member volunteers you will see at the upcoming election working at our polls. This is also an important time since after the election, we need to identify build relationships and communicate with the elected representatives. Make appointments or send emails and letters. Make sure to include a copy of the American Legion agenda. Each of us is represented by two U.S. Senators and one U.S. Representative. At the state level, each of us is represented 
by one or more state senators and one or more state representatives. And at the local level, each of us is represented by local elected officials for counties, cities, or towns. It's also important time to stay connected. You can make a difference by following legislation at www.congress.gov, sign up for action alerts through the American Legion Legislative Center, follow your officials on their Facebook page and sign up for their newsletters. We also have the National Legislative Facebook page, ALA Legislative, and our Department of Florida, ALA FL Legislative Facebook group page. Remember to report your hours. These hours are important when we head to storm the hills the end of February, again in Washington, DC. As our national commander makes a testimony on Capitol Hill, these hours are reflected in his report. You do make a difference. Please also encourage our members to sign up for the VoterVoice.net Action Center to receive action alerts from the Legislative Action Center of the American Legion. Right now, there is a call to action on closing the digital divide for veterans. On this site, www.votervoice.net slash American Legion slash home, you can sign up for alerts, find legislation, and find your officials. Has your unit completed the ALA 100th birthday proclamation? If not, you still have time to do so since we are continuing in our 100th year celebration. This is a great piece of history for your unit to have for many years to come. So I challenge all units that have not completed this task to please do so this year. I'm happy to announce our award winners for 2019-2020. As your legislative chair, the entire committee came together to review the reports received. It was great to see the great legislative work being done in our great state of Florida. We decided on an action and advocacy award. This is a chairman's award that would be presented in a member grouping so that it didn't matter if the unit was small or large, you were eligible to have the opportunity to receive this award. This award has action and advocacy for our units that demonstrated and promoted the legislative program throughout the entire year. Congratulations goes to member group one, unit 65, Delray Beach. Member group two, unit 194, St. Augustine. Member group three, unit 200, Satellite Beach. Member group four, unit 316, Atlantic Beach. Member Group 5, Unit 283, Jacksonville, and Member Grouping 6, Unit 252, Seminole. There's one other chairmanship award that will be presented, and this is the Flying Eagle Award. This award is given to the member that goes above and beyond by promoting the legislative program in her unit. She encouraged members to have letters written to the local county and state and federal representatives voicing member concerns regarding current legislation effective active military and veterans. She encouraged members to sign up for the Legion Action Alerts through the American Legion and the unit downloaded the ALA Legislative Guide. They stayed in connection with Senators Rubio and Scott on their Facebook pages and subscribed to their newsletters to keep updated and to regularly voice the concerns of the membership. Their unit has also been in contact with their sheriff and has invited him to come out and speak on suggested topics that include holiday, safety while shopping at home, how to prevent being a victim of current scams and his crusade to protect animals. These are just a few of the topics suggested. They held an honor flight auction and dinner on November 16, 2019, and raised over 2,800 for this program. It's my pleasure to pronounce this award winner to congratulate Christine Goldsworth of Unit 200, Satellite Beach. 
Congratulations, Christine. Our Department of Florida Chairman Legislation Awards for 2000-2021 can be found on our program action plan, but they include the Flying Eagle Award, Action and Advocacy, and certificates at the end of the 100th birthday year to all units who have completed the 100th birthday proclamation. At the national level, the Legislation Award is Most Outstanding Unit Legislative. Congratulations to all units that have gone above and beyond promoting the legislative program. Look forward to seeing your mid-year reporting and end of the year reporting, seeing you on Facebook on our page, keep us updated on what's going on in your area and stay safe. Now we'll hear from our national security chairman. Hi, I am Rhonda Braley Maurer and I'm your department national security chairman. And today I'm going to be reporting last year's 2019-2020 report. And I just want to say thank you to all the units that submitted a end of the year report. The hours that you put in and the projects that you do are very wonderful for our military and their families and also our first responders. So I'm not going to really highlight each unit that might have done something because that is on our our website at www.alafl.org. And if you go to that site on the left hand corner is the book of reports. So you can read all about um, all the chairmen's national security. And uh, that's where you're going to find uh, the units that actually kind of stood out a little bit and maybe did a little bit more. But it's a great way to get ideas on going forward and what you can do. So um, in our national security program, there's a lot of different other programs that you can do. And I'm just going to go over some of them. Um, obviously, for our deployed service members, we do our troop care packages and our coupons. Um, I will get to the coupons when I do the awards. But um, I do want to let you know that we um, surpassed what we did last year. Um, by $71,000 more than what we did the prior year. So um, we did um, $12,641.90. No, $12,641,096. million six hundred forty-one thousand and ninety-six dollars um, for manufactured value and coupons. So that's a great that's a great program. You're saving your military families a huge amount of money um, that they can use to spend on other things that they need. Um, we did we definitely have brought more awareness to our Gold Star mothers, and in doing so, we had tea parties and luncheons, special events for them. Also, our Blue Star Mothers, we have uh, several of those um, chapters, but we also have our Blue Star Mothers that are also in our, our post homes and our auxiliary. So always bring attention to them, um, whether their child is still serving or has been honorably discharged. Um, they will always be our Blue Star Moms. So keep that in mind. Going forward, um, the other programs that we have is the USO. And I know, uh, along with the USO's Operation Homefront, I know a lot of our units did, um, did service with those, whether it be for school supplies or um, holiday gifts. Um, we definitely do want to keep supporting those because they have firsthand, um, they have firsthand knowledge and access to our military families that we, uh, you know, we may not. So keep keep on doing that. Um, Operation, I mean, uh, American Red Cross. So um, nobody reported on that, and that's um, that's one that is a little bit different. So if you're doing a disaster um, course with the American Red Cross or CPR. That's going to go under your community service, which I know that some people reported that, but I submitted it to um, Jill, our community service um, chairman. 
it's only if it's service to the armed forces. So keeping that in mind, I am sure we're going to see a little bit more activity in that area, which I'll try to put out more this year. Um, military, military spouses, military children, always um, find ways to find out who those people are. And um, our military children, if you did your uh, military child table during the POW MIA ceremony, that brings more awareness of also what our children have um, also lost. Um, not having their parent there with them during those times. The Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, the, that's primarily for the Reserves and the National Guard. We got quite a few people now getting more involved with those programs. And um, anything you can do, you know our National Guard is out there in force whenever they're called upon, um, as our Reserves are. So um, <clears throat> keep on doing your great work. Um, C, the, our CERT, that is part of our Homeland Security. It, it, it definitely falls under FEMA. Um, and we did have, I believe, six members that actually got certified this year. So awesome job because, you know, Florida is one of those states that's going to get hit with a lot of disasters. It just seems to be we're in that path. So um, keep doing that. I mean, we need to have more and more people have more awareness of how to help in their community. Um, the ROTC, um, unfortunately, we kind of ran short this last year, um, not being able to present our awards and certificates during their end of the year graduations. So I know that there were many units that had the JROTC or ROTC involved with their units, whether they were there to help with ceremonies, serve dinners, um, whatever the case may be, I know that they're out there um, helping with um, Reefs Across America. So, um, you know, maybe this year's going to be a little bit better and we can get a little bit more active with them. Homeland Security. Um, wow, we had so many reports on what you're doing to help our Homeland Security, which is our Coast Guards, our police, sheriffs, fire, and EMTs anybody that's on the, the front line and uh, they were definitely called in to assist this year. So um, thank you for always supporting those um, Homeland Security, AKA first responders. Uh, you did an awesome job this year. So, um, and I, I know that there's gonna be a lot more um, with this next year uh, coming forward. Um, the other two ceremonies, that fall under national security are, as I mentioned, the um, POW MIA and 9-11. Um, keep those in mind when you write your reports going forward. I know that many, if not all, auxiliaries get involved with those ceremonies. Um, there's also the retreats for um, the retreats for military and veterans. Um, we have two that I know of. I know that one unit did do a fundraiser to help, um, I don't have the name right in front of me right now, but um, those retreats are absolutely wonderful that um, our military and families can get involved with. It's for military, veterans, first responders, wherever the need is. Sometimes they just need that little getaway to get grounded again. Um, and I'm going to top it off with blood drives. Keep those blood drives going. Got to save lives. You know, and every every pint of blood um, that you give has the potential of saving three lives. So um, I'm going to wrap it up with that. And I just want to thank you for doing all that you've done this last year. Um, I know that we came into some difficult times, but if it can be done, our auxiliary will find a way. So God bless you all and keep doing what you're doing. Hello, it's me again, Rhonda Braley Mauer, your National Security Chairman for again this year, the 2021 year. So this video, I want to go over the uh, program action plan. I just want to say, if you didn't read it last year, you're probably not going to read it this year. So um, nothing's really changed about it. 
um, except for the year and when reports are due. So um, please look it over. All of us chairmen really make an effort to try to give you as much information as we can. And in mine, I've given you suggestions on how to go about things, what to do, uh, websites, emails, things of that nature. So take the time if you can, if you will, check it out. Um, so I, I want to kind of go over skipping a little bit of the whole program action plan because um, it's there for you to read. But I do want to kind of go over the awards that we um, that we give out each year. And I know that you all do so many things you don't give yourself enough credit for. Um, and remember that when you're volunteering for whatever project you're doing, for whatever cause, that your mission starts from the time you leave your home until you return. So give yourself enough hours um, in whatever you're doing because your hours count when we're advocating for our veterans and military um, when it comes to going to Congress. So um, we need to make an impact report for our veterans and our military. Those two things are going to ask about hours, uh, money spent, and family served. So be sure to give yourself even more credit um, as far as your volunteer hours. That's certainly going to help us. So, um, let me just let me just take it out of my binder because <laughs> I can't can't remember anything these days. So the chairman awards for this year, they haven't changed much from last year. The coupons. So all you have to do, you don't have to really track things. You have to track the amount that you do and your hours, and then just report it on your end of the year report. That, and I do everything by grouping. I have a handy little spreadsheet and I keep track of everything that way. That way I know who the highest is for each each grouping. So that really helps a lot. The second one is um, the ROTC, JROTC. Now let's hope that we can get our um, cadets back into our post homes to do events for us and to award them with certificates and awards at the end of the year, um, which our reporting year is the end of March. So if you do anything before that, it can be reported. If you do anything as of April 1st and on, that'll go on next year's report. So um, just try to get them, you know, whatever you can do. I know it's going to be a struggle because we're in, we're in difficult times right now, so um, but reach out to your schools, see if um, if your cadets can come in and help with dinners, um, luncheons, uh, ceremonies, um, anything that they do for ceremonies can be counted, and uh, just use your imagination. We have to think outside the box this year. The next one is the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, and that is for our National Guard and Reserves. Um, okay, the National Guard has been called out, I think, the entire two years. So um, whatever you do for them, um, even if you take them um, cookies or, you know, send them cards, get your juniors involved in sending, doing letters of thanks for them because they're called out either by the governor or by the president to go and assist for disaster recoveries, um, lately, um, they've been involved with the COVID, um, helping all along, all around our state. Um, disasters of the hurricanes, the fires, the floodings, or tornadoes, whatever, whatever comes our way. So they're out there doing that. And so we definitely need to support them. Um, you know, their families also are, um, you know, missing them when they're gone. So if you can, if you can get into a, a National Guard in your area, I don't know where they all are, but um, you can go to, if you read the program action plan, there is a website. It's actually a Facebook page, um, and I don't know what it is because you have to read it yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my book up and read everything. 
So anyway, it's on there, and you can touch base with um, the person that's involved with the, the National Guard Family uh, Readiness Group. So um, it, it's worth checking out. Um, the next one is the, Amer uh, the Gold Star Mother Award for um, the work the best. Let's see the best unit demonstrating how the unit worked with the Gold Star Mothers. Now you can work with a chapter, or if you have gold, if you have Gold Star Mothers in your unit or your post. So the difference between when you hear us say American Gold Star Mothers and Gold Star Mothers, the American Gold Star Mothers is actually the chapter that is chartered by Congress. So if a Gold Star Mother is not with a chapter, then she is still, regardless, a Gold Star Mother. That's the only difference. So, um, and we definitely want to be honoring them. Um, you know, for the for the sacrifices their family has um, sustained and also for the work that they continue to do. They do like we do. We serve our veterans and our military. So um, reach out to them. Keep track of what you're doing. Um, hours count. They're part of our military family. And the last award that I wanted to give this year, because um, we're so restricted in what we can do, and it's actually filtered down to a lot of organizations that I put on um, the USO Donation Support Award. So what that means is our U a lot of our USOs, um, especially in the airports, are not open. If they are, it's a very soft opening and very restricted. Um, volunteers aren't really able to volunteer as much, if any. Um, so they are providing, the staff is providing services when and wherever they can. So, um, so this year, what I did is I made an award and it's going to, and I'm going to be able to track it because you need to submit it on our donation remittance form. And right down here under other <laughs> is the USO. So if you submit um, a monetary check by your unit to on the remittance form, it is transparent. So I can see it under donations. Um, and it's going to be, the award is going to be listed by groupings because that's only fair. Um, so please make a donation. You can do a fundraiser, collect at your unit. Um, my suggestion is, and I put it in my program action plan, is don't give a straight dollar amount like $20 because I need to break it out by um, the highest in each grouping. So my suggestion is give an odd dollar amount, add cents if you need to. Um, but if there's more than one um, in each grouping, that's the same. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to give certificates rather than a plaque. So keep that in mind. Um, that's the only award. That's the only um, item on the remittance form that's under for national security. So please give to the USO on your remittance form. So other than that, I think that um, is everything. Um, but please go on our website. You can go and look under programs. You can look under um, your whatever national security or whatever group that you're you're doing. And um, and then all the report forms are there. Also, I want to make mention that the depart the department award. There's the all there's the best all around award. But there's also one which is going to tie into our first responders and everything y'all are doing, especially for our law enforcement, because they're going to need it this year, especially with an election. So um, it's not in our unit guide. It didn't get printed. It didn't make print. But it is called, I have it right here, it's Back the Badge Award, all appropriate. Um, and it is the award is granted to the unit that had the greatest impact in supporting local law enforcement um, and it has some variables there 
listen, every unit in every city or town has a police department. You all can do this. Um, and our law enforcement has been under such attack that, um, that we really need to step up and do a little bit more for them also. Um, so again, whatever you can do, invite them to your, your post home, um, give them a free dinner or a free luncheon, take them cookies and cards and letters. I mean, they need the support if not, if not for any other time, especially now. So, um, Keep that in mind. I will send this out to your district presidents and she can send it on down to all the unit presidents. But um, that is a, a department award. So please apply for that. And um, I think that's everything. And the next segment is going to be about awards. But before I go, I just, again, want to stress the importance of reporting your volunteer hours. Now, if you, if there's a member in your unit that goes off and does something on their own that pertains to military, that those hours can be counted. So it doesn't always have to be a unit gathering. Um, individual people can go off and do their own thing and, and assist our military assist families. Um, I don't know so much about babysitting children right now, but if a uh, military a spouse, if you can find one that needs a little help with, say, uh, lawn work or anything like that, those are your hours, again, from the time you leave your house until you get back home. So I hope that helps you a little bit. I love this program. Um, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. I'll, I'll do my best to help you. I'll come to your unit. I will, you know, if you want me to come speak, I will. And um, so we're going to going to move on and do the awards for the 2019, 2000. <laughs> I'm getting so confused, like everybody else. 2019, 2020 awards that we would have given out at convention had we had it. So God bless you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll see you soon. Okay, we've come to my favorite part of the program, and that is our award program. So this is for the 2019-2020, and I want to thank all the units that worked so hard and submitted their reports. You all did an amazing job. Um, the first award I'm going to present today is the Coupon Clipping Award. And as I said before, we far outdid what we even did last year, which I was shocked, but not surprised. So the first group, uh, group one, is going to unit 296, Destin. The second group is unit 69, well, 67 in North Miami. Group three is unit 285, Edgewater. And group four goes to unit four, Atlantic Beach. Group five goes to unit 110 in Port Charlotte. And group six goes to unit 273 in Madeira Beach. Congratulations to you all. You did a fabulous job. And our totals for manufactured value um, sent to our deployed came to $12,641,096. So congratulations. Um, the money that you have saved our military families has been um, amazing. So um, I'm very proud of you all. Congratulations and keep up the good work. The next item I'm going to do an award for was called the Military Spouse mentoring support and that was uh, for our e-mentoring program which I still encourage members to get involved with because you can do it right at home in the convenience of your home and it's e-mentor e-mentor program then the program action plan again 
But your mentoring spouses that are still in the military or have gotten out of the military and they need, they're looking for support and either education, how to, um, or for uh, jobs, relocation, they just might need someone to talk to. But um, although it was a uh, broke up in groupings, we only had two, um, two groups that actually uh, participated and, and won. So um, in group one, it went to unit 296 in Destin. And in group six, it went to unit 273 in Madeira Beach. I know both of these ladies that participated in the program and one was um, that helped somebody that was looking for a career in education and one that was looking for a career in the postal service. So congratulations to you um, for just being remarkable that you are. Um, I'm going to come back later and do the department awards, but I'm going to pass off the other awards to my wonderful committee chairmen, um, Lois Glosh and Coraline Ziegler. Um, they have been so supportive um, in helping me with doing the awards and helping me throughout the year with questions, <laughs> complaints, and Betty. But, you know, you got to have it. So, um, but they, I, I couldn't have been more blessed to have them with me this last year. And they're going to continue on with me this year, poor souls. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to turn this over and let uh, Lois and Coraline do the awards I asked them to, um, to do for you. So, congratulations. I'll see you in a few minutes. On the committee for national security and today I will be presenting two awards. One of them will be for the ROTC, Junior ROTC program and the other one will be for the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program. I had a lot of entries to read over and it was a tough decision to make but for the Junior ROTC, ROTC program, Sebastian Unit 189, congratulations, and for the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, Homestead Unit 43. Thank you to everyone who entered and have a great year. Hi, I'm Coraline Ziegler, President of Unit 296 here in beautiful downtown Destin. I'd like to thank Rhonda for allowing me to be part of the National Security Committee and for asking me to judge the Gold Star Mother Support Award I'd like to thank her for that, but I can't because it was so very difficult. What these units have done to support and honor our Gold Star Mothers and their sacrifice is heartwarming and inspiring. It was difficult to make a choice, but I did. Congratulations, Unit 5, USS Tampa. Okay, we've come to the last award, and that is the department award. There were two. Um, however, no one submitted anything for the back the badge award, unfortunately. That one is for uh, law, supporting our lo local law enforcement. I'm hoping to see some this year. So anyway, I am so excited to announce the Margaret Cohn Award for the best all around program. And um, thank you all for um, submitting for this award. But this one stood out a little bit more than the rest. And I just want to say I am so, so proud of every, what everybody has done in, in working these programs, but um, the final winner came to, um, are you ready? Drum roll. <laughs> anyway, it goes to Unit 316 Atlantic Beach. 
and congratulations. I know you guys did an awesome job, especially serving our military Thanksgiving on the US, USS Roosevelt. I wish I could have been there, but um, I was there in spirit as I am with every what everybody else does. I just think um, we are such an amazing group. I love this organization. And congratulations to all the winners and to everyone else that has submitted and worked these programs because you are our leaders. You are doing our mission. And I couldn't be more thankful for everything you do. And again, I'm tearing up because... I get so emotional, but thank you and congratulations to everyone. I love you. Stay safe. And now our favorite part of the program, our past president's parlay department chairman and the girls. Hi everyone, Shirley Frazier here and I'm the past president's parlay chairman here. And these are my two adopted auxiliary daughters. Hi, my name is Annabelle. I am in the seventh grade and I am so happy to be here. I've been in a junior for uh, all the time that I have been in the auxiliary and it's been very exciting. And later on, I will tell you more about it because right now I'm gonna let my adopted auxiliary mother talked to you about the past president's parley program. Hello, I'm Clarabelle, and I also am the auxiliary adopted daughter. And I am a senior, graduated this year, and I have been very lucky because I have been accepted as a four-year scholarship in FSU. I will tell you more about it because I also want to let my auxiliary adoption mother tell you about the past president's program. Well, I'm back because the girls are going to let me tell you about the, the past president's program plan of action. Actually, the plan of action has not changed much this year because we're just kind of continuing from last year. But please, check it on the, on the um, check the past president's report on, on the computer because I want you to make sure of the dates that you're supposed to send your reports. Now, December the 1st, your unit PD, PDP chairman is to send her report to the district past president Paul's chairman. Now, the district past president's parlor chairman, that's a mouthful, is supposed to be a, her report to this person and I'm the department, PPP chairman, by December the 15th. Now, please, 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 please don't send it to me on my phone. I know that's the, that's the way things are going in this world, but my phone is about that big, and when you try to read a report on that size, it's hard. And then when I enlarge it, all I get is about four words, and I can't do that either. So please, hard copy, in the mail, I would really appreciate it. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, the, what we have been doing the past presidents call it. We've been raising money for scholarships for years and years, and we're still doing that, and that's very important. Uh, we're installation, of, uh, installation of new members, initiation of the members that we already have, giving them, a, 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 giving them the information about your unit is really important. What, making sure that they have the times of your meetings, what the, the Legion is doing, for instance, do they serve lunches? Do they serve dinners? Let them know what's going on so that they can participate in it. Now, talking about lunches, the past president's probably has been, always had lunches for the past department, for the past residents. This year, 
it kind of fell on the wayside because of the fact that the fires came in, so they really couldn't have the lunches because we couldn't get that close to one another. It's kind of hard to get 20 people six feet apart and still be able to talk, but that's what you would have to do. We are also honoring the female veteran. Well, you can't do that because we can't get all of the everybody in the same room. But we do have a unit that did, was able to make it. I'm going to tell you about that just a little bit later. We also participate in the encouragement of new members, both fit male and female. Yeah, you're right. I said male because, as you know, National voted in that we now accept male members and they can come in under their female veteran. So please honor them, appreciate them, and don't think that you have to be, I don't know what you want to call it, but they're working for the auxiliary just like you are. Some of the units were very active with the chaplain of four chaplains. This is very, this is important there is we're supporting the legion and what they're doing on that and it's an important thing that we keep within it so that it continues with our units and our and our legion post uh, we also have a salute salute so i'm sorry i said that wrong didn't i a salute to service women and this is they have the luncheons again in some of the posts and auxiliary units sponsor but here again, that's a problem because they couldn't get it all together because of the virus. But we had one like one unit that made it under the under the, the fact that the virus was there. I will give you the information on that just a little bit later. Now we have the salute to the salute to um, auxiliary member. Now that is a salute to a member that has never gone above unit president. That, please look at the plan of action for the information on how to send that in and the dates that you're supposed to send it into. Now, that is sent to, even though it's under my program, that is sent to the department president. So make sure you send it to her. Don't send it to me because I will have to forward it and time is out of essence. Now, for this year only, and it has to be this year only because at the last national convention, national voted that we'll no longer have a past president's parlor. So well, this year only, we have a new member of Salute of the Year member. It doesn't make any difference what she was. I'm speaking of whether she was a unit president or whether she was a district president our department president, it doesn't make any difference. If she was, any, any type of chairmanship is great. And if they did something really fantastic about this epidemic, I need for you to write that up for me. Please write it up, send it hard copy to me, Shirley Frazier, and my address is in the unit guide. Don't look under past persons parlay because when they, when they printed the new unit guide, the printer decided I didn't need to be there, so they left me off. But that's okay, because I'm in past presence probably, and my address is there. Now, this member of the year on this part, that's everybody. So, I don't care what you did. I don't care if you, if you had a luncheon and service a bunch of people, please write it up so I can send it to national. That's why I have to have a hard copy, because I have to send it on. If you want to, if you want to send some pictures, that's great too. It's best to send pictures of groups so that we include everybody and don't get anybody left out. Now, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some of the units that have done some. I think outstanding things, so I'm going to mention them. And if I've left you out, please forgive me, because remember, I'm reading some of these reports off the phone, and it's hard to keep up with it. So. Lady Lake, Unit 347, called a Women's Veterans Luncheon. See, they got theirs in before the virus hit. They honored and thanked our female veterans for their service. They had 80 female veterans at no charge and 48 guests, 
Each veteran received a gift. It was, a, I have attended these and that's, it's fantastic. Unit 303, Bonita Springs, they have uh, only three past presidents left, and they had a, a luncheon for, a, for their past presidents, and they also honored one of their past presidents that passed away, and in honor of her, they had a, they're running a scholarship, and they have right now, for that scholarship, have raised $1,935. That is super. And this report was given to me months ago, so it's probably a lot higher right now. Port Orange Unit 110. They have a veteran that resides in, the, in a nursing home, and they went to her at, her, at the, a nursing home, and celebrated her 100th birthday. I guess we all wish maybe we could get to 100th birthday. That is if you're healthy. If you're not, eh, I don't know about that. Port Orange, Port Orange Unit 110 gave out two scholarships to granddaughters of members at the amount of money was $3,000. That's what we do as past, as past presidents. That's what we do. We, we, we help all of our chairmanships. We help give the money to the, the people that need it, especially our young people so they can go on and learn and, and be a great asset to not only our organization, but to the country. Madeira Beach, Unit 273, honored the active women in, in a relationship, I mean, they, they had a relationship with the Tampa Bay Group Support. And in one month, they sent 437 boxes to what's called a little bit of home to the deployed men and women. The unit chairman received a wonderful gift, a flag that was flown over a classified mission. What an honor. Unit 238, Safety Harbor. In July of every year, they have a huge parade. I know about this parade because department presidents, unit presidents, and district presidents have all participated in this, and they are the one that organize it. Well, you know what? I've run out of stuff to say. That's unusual for me, isn't it? But I just want to let you know that even if next, even the fact that National has disposed of past presidents partly, gotten rid of past presidents partly, whatever more words you want to use, that doesn't mean that the departments have to get rid of them. But that will come to a vote if and when we ever get to have a department convention. I'm a little, I know that my programs in, my, in past presidents probably has been split up and sent to other chairmanships. But since I only have that by word of mouth, I'm not gonna tell you what they are because I'm probably wrong. So now, if I may, bring the girls back to say goodbye. Thank you girls for giving me the opportunity of giving my report. Uh, before you got to speak, so I just want to tell you something. Do you think you'll learn something on my report? All right, Annabelle, what about you? Yes, I did learn something. I learned that we give a lot of money away for chairmanships, and we give a lot of money away for scholarships. That's amazing. I am going to work really hard because I want a scholarship. My sister wants to be an attorney, but I want to be a doctor. And if I'm a doctor and something happens, then I have my sister to get me out of trouble. That's kind of thinking ahead, isn't it? Anyway, I did learn that. And I also learned that this virus has really caused our units to have a lot of problems because they haven't been able to earn money like we normally earn. So they can't give away what they normally gave away before. But I think this virus is going to go away, and I think this coming year is going to be much better, and we're going to be able to earn money, such as our bingo and all of that, to have money to give to our children and youth, our veterans, 
our hospitals, and that's what I learned. Well, I think she's pretty smart, if you ask me. So I just hope she doesn't get too smart from me before she gets to be out of the house. Because it would be too, too hard for me to keep up with her, for sure. So, Clarabelle, what about you? Well, I also learned that education is very important, and that's why I am very proud to say that I worked very hard to get the A's. It's not easy, and I'm looking forward to going to college. Of course, my adopted mother is giving me a lot of rules, like don't go out at night by yourself, keep your door locked. I can't think of them all because she gave me a lot. But they're important because that's what you have to do when you're a grown-up. So I'm still 17. I turn 18 in two months, and I get to be a senior member. I'm not going to be able to help much because school is very important to me. And my sister is right. I want to be an attorney. I'm hoping after I do the four years at FSU that I will be able to be accepted with a scholarship for a college that has a law, law class. That's where I really want to do. But my experience as a junior has been terrific. And what did I learn about what my mother said about the units? There is nothing like us. We work really hard to aid our veterans and their families. So I am extremely proud, like I said, to become a senior member of Unit 270. Oh, by the way, 270 burnt down about a year ago, but they just opened up and they had their first meeting this Tuesday. So we're in there again. So the epidemic really didn't bother us much because we didn't have any place to meet anyway. We were lucky that some of the units, like 361, offered us their post home to meet in. But now we can get back to doing sticks and stones and all the other things to raise money. So this is Clarabelle Flamlick, and I am signing off. And thank you, Audrey, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Bye. And now our busiest chairman, our public relations chairman. Public relations, I am Eleanor Amato, your public relations department of Florida chairman. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you my committee, Patricia Delgado and Patricia Whitehall. Both of these ladies were exceptional and really, really helped. Sometimes they helped a little bit too much, but that's okay. Okay, first of all, what I'm gonna do is go over the public uh, plan of action. So if you don't have it handy, run and get it. Shut me off for a while, run and get it and come back and we'll go over it. If you have any questions, you could ask me anytime during this presentation. Maybe I'll answer you if I hear you. Okay, public relations program. The auxiliary's positive public image and excellent reputation in the community is no accident. Public relations works to establish and maintain goodwill within the organization and with the general public. It promotes the auxiliary's many worthwhile programs, events, activities, and accomplishments through every available medium. Public relations pre performs a dual function. Doing things well, making sure that the public is aware of the efforts and the results ensures continued community support and awareness of the auxiliary programs and encourages women who qualify to join along with their male that could join, that qualified Okay, basically, your public relations is before the event, during the event, and after the event. After the event, who are you giving your friends to? Okay, what can you do? Build brand loyalty. 
right here. Everywhere you go, you should you should wear your branding. Believe me, many times I'm in a store and someone comes up to me and says, what's that mean? What does that mean? Who are you? What do you do? And one time I had a gentleman who had a military hat on. I handed him a application for membership. Use of a variety of public relations material and resources available that are online. Give an auxiliary magazine ideas. Give an auxiliary magazine gift subscription to your local library and doctor's office. Distribute American Legion auxiliary brochures and posters in the community, libraries, job fairs, medical facilities, and post homes. Wear your official branding. Be prepared to answer when asked who the auxiliary is and what we do in your community and why we matter. Develop a list of local media contacts for your unit to use. Build a relationship with your local media and political figures to educate them on how, uh, uh, excuse me, on who we are what we do and why we matter. And that really, really helps. Contact your local paper, and when you contact your local paper, get their name, their phone number, their private number, their private extension, and always, always thank them for the article that they put in the newspaper because that really, really helps. Write a letter to the editor or a news release for patriotic holidays and events. Do you know that in the Nationals website for uh, public relations, they have all these tools for you. All you have to do is fill in the blank. Unit number, city, event, the date, the time, they're all in there. Same with, same with proclamations. I asked for a proclamation, they says we don't do that. I didn't realize there was a sample proclamation there, and all I had to do was fill it out, give it to the secretary. She went and she, not our secretary, the secretary where he wanted to go. Otherwise, we would be going crazy, wouldn't we? Okay, the member, promote auxiliary events on your personal social media accounts. And we know how to do that because I get them. You know our departments, social media Facebook page is. If you're not on this, you better copy this down. FL for Florida, ALA for American Legion Auxiliary, space public relations. You could do it in caps, you could do it in lowercase, it doesn't matter, it pops up. Put your event on there, you wait for approval, I look at it and I go and I approve it. But, it cannot be something for some other organization. It needs to be for the American Legion Auxiliary. Not for the writers, not, they have their own page, not for the post. It has to be for a unit. Make sure you put the, unit, uh, the post address or where the event is gonna be along with the address. What is public relations activity? Newspaper articles, meeting notices, and community calendar events. Social media postings of the mission-related events. Distribute, distribution of the ALA brochures, websites, television networks, and they have community calendars. Have you ever, if you have a Channel 13, have you ever seen a community calendar going on there? Perfect place for us. The radio, public service announcements, there are local, uh, local radio stations that will be glad to have you on their radio. YouTube, we know what that is. Magazines, Department of Florida, American Legion, Auxiliary Magazines. Don't forget mail call. Veterans, organizations, magazines such as Bivouac. They'll take anything you have. Bivouac33 at gmail.com. 
www.bbsmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusicalmusic
For more information, go to Members Only and click the Member Resources, then Branding Guide, page 8, will discuss the colors. And that is ALAforVeterans.org. Okay, they do have a form there for emblem use. It's very, very easy to fill out. Okay, another thing that I want to discuss with you today is working with minors. You think that just because the minor came in with her grandmother that it's okay to take her picture. Then her mother sees it in the newspaper and has a fit, okay? Don't include photos with with minors without first getting parental consent. Very important. Get signed parental consent, and when possible, get permission from the parents or guardian each time you use the images. Don't take photographs that focus on one child or are, are close up of their faces. Do use photographs that include many minors in the photograph. Okay, we're going to discuss awards now. The Department of Florida Public Relations Chairman presents one unit chairman in each membership grouping, which are six, for outstanding public relations programs. Your deadline to submit is May 1st, 2021, and you send that to me. Eleanor Amato at 892 Catfish Avenue, New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 32169. The full uh, ruling is in there. This is basically like a press book. Okay. It gives you all the instructions on the Facebook. Do not send press book to national or southern division chairman. Very important. National awards. There's quite a few national awards for units. Okay, a member award. ALA brand ambassador. It's given to a member. Unit award. I'm not gonna read this all to you because it's long. There's another unit award for a pu uh, public relations team for the centennial celebration and another unit award for active public relations team centennial per division. So there's quite a few of them. Please look them up and let's get Florida on stage for that. Okay, now I'm going to give you my report for public relations. We have a wonderful year. And this year, and it is because of the communication on the unit level. Who doesn't like to see their name in lights? I know I do. As a result, the Department of Florida had over 1,900 pictures posted on Facebook. And we have a total of 603 members on our page. I asked for 600 by Christmas this year, and we made it already. You think we should shoot for 700 by Christmas? Pass the word around. Our Facebook page is FLALA Public Relations. Department received a total of 41 entries for the public relations scrapbook narrative. There are 21 proclamations made in our state, along with birthday wishes from Governor Ron DeSantis. We are still celebrating the auxiliary 100 year anniversary. This is our second chance. If your unit didn't do a celebration last year, plan one this year. And remember, big or small, invite the mayor, councilman, dignitary, and picture it and send it to the newspaper. It doesn't have to be a party. Did you help clean the posts? Didn't you do it to help the Legion? How about a bus stop bench or a plaque in the Veterans Park? There are so many things we could do. Be creative. Florida Public Relations gave our members a challenge during this pandemic crisis. 
Send the names of the members who are making masks for the frontline heroes to Florida Public Relations, and your name will be put in the drawing for a beautiful handmade jewelry set made by Kathy Helmer. Drawing will be done at full conference. We have a total of 26 in the drawing. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your talent. This past year, public relations created biographies for each chairman and officer and published the bio in our newsletter called Mail Call. Our members were able to put the face with the chairmanship. In ending, the Facebook public relations page was and still is a success. It has proven to be a great education page, as well as keeping in touch with our entire department. Keep up the good work, and remember, I am here for you. Okay, now it's time for our Public Relations Awards. Group 1, Tampa, Unit 5, Patricia Delgado. Thank you, Pat. Peppermint Patty, she's known as. Group two, Jacksonville, Unit 88, Nancy Tosca. Thank you, Nancy. Unit three, I mean, group three, I'm sorry. Pine Castle, 286, Robin Schillhammer. Group four, Treasure Island, Unit 158, Liz Close.
and I'm Lois Galash from Unit 347 in Lady Lake, and I am the Assistant Sergeant at Arms. Good morning, everybody. We're here to tell you a little bit about Sergeant at Arms. Lois? Today we're going to do something a little different than all the boring talk. And we're going to ask a few questions. So I want to see how much Gene really knows about being Sergeant at Arms. I don't know anything. So, Gene. Yes, Lois. You have a lot of pins on your shirt. Tell me about the placement of your pins. I just put them where there's an empty spot. I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, my American flag pin belongs over my heart. And King Smith, our department president, belongs on the opposite side, a little bit lower. And then there's my nameplate, which belongs on your right side, so if you're shaking hands, people can follow your arm up and hopefully see who you are and what office you hold. Something. Interesting. I like it. Good. Okay. And Lois, what is the purpose of the sergeant at arms? There's a purpose? Yeah, it seems to be. Oh yeah. My main purpose is to keep the meeting flowing smoothly, keep order, but be pleasant and polite while I'm doing so. Okay, you think we both can do that? I'm going to try my best. All right, I'll try with you. Okay. Together we can do great things. Yes, we can. Now we'll go on to proper dress. Our dress, as you know, is all white. We're like Mr. Clean, only we have hair. Oh, I really wanted to be like Mr. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can if you'd like. Okay. But at the unit level, it's a little different. Yes. Some units have uniforms that they wear, that they specify that you wear. Most of us just wear the polos. And what color pants would it be? I think that also is at a unit level. That depends on them. At the department, it's white. Yeah, that we know. Yeah. I think Ann's colors are red, white, and blue, so most units use the blue pants or the black. Um, some wear the white shirts, still, with the auxiliary emblems on the collar. The American flag on your left shoulder, with the stripes going to the back and the two-inch auxiliary emblem on the right shoulder, on the arm, and it belongs nowhere else if you're going to use the white shirt with all the emblems. Then again, too, you can wear hand shirts, the red, white, and blue, and that needs no emblems or anything else. What about um, other pins? Can you wear other pins? I don't have any others. Okay. Can wear them, but you have to make sure that American flag is your highest. Absolutely. Pin. You can wear your auxiliary pin also, and you can wear your officer's pin. And everything must be below that American flag. And what side should your officer's pin be on? It can be on your left side, but it must be below. It can be anywhere in this area here but it must be below that American flag and your auxiliary pin, which is a different pin, it's a small round pin. Well, now, speaking of the American flag, yes, when we post colors, which is one of the main jobs of the Sergeant at Arms, how should it look when you're done? Eagles facing forward, a little bit higher than your banner, and it should look pretty. And when you're walking down to present colors, what's the protocol on the flags? American flag straight up and down, banner a little til tilted forward, and the American flag gets posted first, and then the banner. Take a couple steps backwards, and you both salute the American flag at the same time. And when we're retrieving colors? Just reverse the protocol, grab the flags, take a step backwards, 
I'll salute the flags first before you grab them. Take a step back, turn towards each other, go out the opposite way if that happens to be the protocol, and crisscross or face each other. When you get towards each other, take a turn and face the audience. Head forward, American flag straight up, the banner tilted down just a little bit. I want straight back to the room, but you have crisscrossed at this time. We go back to the room. Go back to the room. Exit. Right. Now let's talk about putting the flags away. Yeah, let's. Because a lot of you I know, I was guilty of, of this at one time myself, like to wrap the flag around the flagpole and just roll it up and then stow it. That's not really how it should be done. No, it's not. So how about you enlighten us? How about you enlighten me because you used to wrap it? I did. And oh, then I, I learned that. you actually have to fold it. Right. And you fold it, it takes two. You fold it up until you get to the flagpole and then you take the gold tassels and you wrap it and tie it off with the gold tassels to keep it in place. Tie it at the top or you tie it at the bottom? That I don't know. Tie it at the bottom. The tassels start from the top and you work your way down. Makes sense. Now on the banner flag it's a little different because you have to insert your banners flat. Probably about your next to your last fold. You don't want them coming out all crinkly and wrinkly. So it's the banner flag different. is the same, the same way? You fold the banner flag as well? Yes. But just remember your banners have to go inside that flag. They can't flop all over. They have to be laid in there very neatly. When you have so many of them, go through them, remove them, and put them in a safe place, lay flat. You don't need all of them in there. Give them decapitated members. Yes. No way safely. Yes. So as a sergeant at arms of a unit, why do I have to be there so much earlier than everyone else? You have to make sure that the bell is out, the Bible is out, everything looks set up properly, enough tables, enough chairs, see what the president needs for you to do. You are her eyes and ears. You do everything that she's not capable of doing because she's so involved with everything. Make if sure you if there's guests coming, coming. If you know who's coming. She may not even know until the last minute because someone may just pop in. But you make sure you have a list. You make sure you know what office they have held or are holding. And you give her a list. And that we're there, everything is pretty much going in order. And if they're guest speakers? You ask them if they'd like to speak for a minute. And you let the president know. And when you're escorting them to the podium, let's go over that because it's a little different for everybody. It is. Always escort with your right arm. Put your arm out. Let them take your arm or just lay it on top of yours. You ask them, are you a veteran? Don't assume that they're a veteran or they're not. Because some females are veterans, like the both of us. Also known as dual members. Correct. And they also can be a veteran without being a dual member. Some don't like to join the legion and some do. My partner here is an Army veteran and I'm an Air Force veteran. Excuse me, I'm a Navy veteran. A oh, Navy, I'm sorry. You know, you you know how those Air Force people are. Yeah, I know. Their the heads up in the clouds too much. We're the best. We just throw them out and drop them on the ground. But anyways. We're both dual members. And not everybody knows that. But you ask them, and you'll know who's a veteran and who isn't, so you ask them inside what you'd like to enter. And, and, and when you bring them up? You, you take them the same way. You bring them up. You go over to the flag side. This way here, you both get hand salute. And some. People do not like the hand salute. They will do the auxiliary salute, which is the hand over the heart. So you always see me hand salute. So I'm a veteran and I learn the right. So I'm Lois. Yes, ma'am. Don't always follow And us. I cherish that right. That's right. You've earned it. 
Don't always follow our salute. You do the auxiliary salute. It's just a hand over the heart. Okay, if you have an auxiliary member, you bring them up to the banner side. Using the same hand salute. It just means this. We'll escort you around to the stairs or whichever. We'll wait for you. If you come back out, we do the same thing. Stop at the flag, turn to the American flag, salute, take you back to your seat. Well, another thing, if you are getting up out of the room during the meeting, first thing you should do is get up, get the American flag, a hand salute, exit the room. When you come back in the room, into the room, hand salute, go back to your seat. Quietly. Yes. What else do you think we should touch on? Um, How about at the end of the meeting? What are the responsibilities of the sergeant at arms at the end of the meeting? I'll let you into that. Make sure you put everything away. You stow the colors properly, as we just discussed. How to put them away. You clean up everything, put away all of the materials that were being used. The sergeant at arms is usually the last person to leave the meeting. Leave the room the way you found it. Clean. All right, Gene, we've covered before meetings, we've covered after meetings. How about during the meeting? What should the sergeant at arms be doing? Well, during the meetings, they should be assistant or, or sergeant at arms at the back of the room and one towards the front for the President's uh, every call and back in. Should be watching for disturbances in the meeting, people excessive talking, and politely go up and get that person's attention, do not touch them, but get their attention and ask them to please stop. Latecomers to the meetings, especially during opening ceremonies, should not be allowed in the room until it's over. During the meeting, if there's a speaker, kindly keep them against the wall until that speaker has finished. Then escort them to a seat. If someone comes in during a meeting and someone's speaking, do not let them sit down, please. That's good information. Yes. What if my phone goes off while I'm at the meeting? Ooh, $5 to the charity of the president's choice. Nice. Yes. And we get to be the ones to collect it? Yes, we do. That might be my favorite part of this job. I like it. Kind of like it. Yeah. People get mad at you, but I'm so sorry. You told at the beginning of the meeting, turn off all cell phones and devices. It's a good lesson on learning and listening. Yes. Yeah. Now we're going to go on to hallowed ground. You've learned about hallowed ground. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Hallowed ground is the space between the banner flag and the American flag. Once the opening ceremonies take place, it becomes hallowed ground. You are not allowed to cross between hallowed ground. You are not allowed to stick a piece of paper through and hand it to someone. It's called hallowed ground for a reason. You should not disturb it. That is correct. And it's only in the state of Florida that this occurs. It was back in 1973-74, I believe, that this became a tradition in Florida. It's sacred. Once that meeting starts, it doesn't happen. And also, if someone makes a mistake, this covers everything that we talked about. Please do not go, ooh, ah, oh, you should have done that. Wait till after the meeting's over, take them aside, and then correct them. That's that whole be polite piece. Yeah. That's that double P. <laughs> you know, we all make mistakes sometimes. I still even make them after all these years. That's a lot of years. So please, be polite to everybody, smile, greet everybody. Because you want to come back. Yeah. 
So if you have any questions, give Lois or myself a call, and we'll try to get you in the right direction. If we don't know the answer right then, we'll find it. Lois will find it for you. She's new. You know what happens there. She's not that new. She's good at this, but okay. Well, folks, that's it from our end. Have a great year. Get those renewals in. And we look forward to seeing you. Can't wait for the convention. A lot of changes have been going on from this chairman, so now we'll hear about all the changes taking place with VANR, our Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation Chairman. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. I hope you enjoy this presentation of the American Legion Auxiliary, Department of Florida, Veteran Affairs and Rehabilitation Program. I'm going to share my screen with you so we can start the presentation. We'll start it from the beginning. My name is Jane Hardacre. And it was an honor to serve as your Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation Chairman for the 2019-2020 year. And I will remain as your Chairman for the continuing year of 2020-2021. Your VA and our committee members are Carol Perone Udell and Janie Rock. The VA and our theme this year is Land of the Free Because of the Brave. The Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation Program promotes our mission to enhance the lives of U.S. veterans, military, and their families. 2019-2020, what a year. This past year brought many challenges to our national organization, our department, our units, and our members. None greater were the challenges our veterans faced. Since early March, we could not reach our veterans, their families, or their caregivers. However, Florida units showed how strong they were by working our mission of service, not self, as long as they could. Last November, our members brought in over $175,000 of in-kind donations to Fall Conference for our homeless female veterans. Units across the state participated in stand down, stand downs for homeless veterans. One unit held their annual blessing of the buckets where they filled five gallon buckets with items for the homeless. Other units contacted local governments to help with suitable housing projects for our veterans. Hearts and Homes and the HER Foundation are two organizations that our members supported. The first finds immediate housing and the second is transitional housing for our homeless veterans. Our members volunteered and visited Florida's VA hospitals. Members hosted bingos, socials, and picnics for our veterans. They served coffee and donuts, donated books and movies, and even passed out American flags. One unit sponsored all the veterans in the spinal injury ward. They brought in anything that would remind the veteran of home. CDs, phone cards, and specialty items were handed out to every veteran on that ward. Veterans across the state received Christmas and birthday cards and gifts to let them know they are not forgotten. Florida honored our veterans by donating to Honor Flight and participated in welcome home ceremonies. They held fundraisers for Project Vet Relief. Who knew that our veterans would need the help more than ever due to COVID-19? Units collaborated with the Legion family to transport these veterans to post homes for breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Awards and certificates were presented to the veterans with a round of applause and a big thank you. Our members did not forget the families of our veterans they babysat, ran errands, delivered Thanksgiving baskets and Christmas presents to families who were alone during the holidays. Units donated gift certificates for spa days, pedicures, and hair salons for the spouses of veterans. Florida strong members 
spent 91,478 hours serving 21,422 veterans and their families. They spent a total of $156,423 in the process and that does not include the $175,000 of in-kind donations from Fall Conference. I would like to thank you all for your hard work and dedication to our veterans and their families. Now it's time for awards. ALA Strong will be awarded to all the units who donated to the Homeless Female Veterans Project at Fall Conference. Due to COVID, I cannot present them, but the district presidents will receive them at the 2021 department convention. Perfect attendance for 2019 goes to volunteers Monica Gray and Irma Worley. Perfect attendance for 2020 go to volunteers Charlotte Bass, Deidre Butler, Gail Dupuy, Monica Gray, Rita McLaughlin, Robin Shellhammer, Elaine Warner. Volunteer recruitment and service awards for the largest increase in active, regularly scheduled volunteers and volunteer hours go to Rita McLaughlin and Elaine Warner. Thank you so much for all your work, all the volunteers, all the deputies, all the reps, and even our members. And now for department awards. The Teresa Galeo Award for the unit with the most creative veterans event goes to DeWitt B. Tilden Memorial Unit 316. The Dorothy Smith Award for the unit that reports the best all around VANR program or project goes to Christopher R. Switzerland Unit 344. Thank you to all the units who've submitted for awards. I hope there are more entries this year. Please reach out to me for help and advice. 2020-2021, what now? Well, COVID-19 has really stopped us in our tracks, but things are starting to open up. Do not lose hope. What can we do to help? Let's talk about some of the things you can do today. There are seven categories we are gonna learn about today. The first one is homeless veterans. The most recent count by the Florida Department of Veteran Affairs in 2017 stated that there were about 2,789 homeless veterans in Florida. That is the ones they know about. How do we find them? Coordinating with your Legion's chairman and offering assistance is one way. Other ways include hosting or working at a stand down. Contact your homeless veteran emergency shelters or transitional housing projects in your area. Donate, prepare and serve meals, collect and distribute clothing, donate sheets, dishes, furniture and other household items. Crochet hats, scarves or mittens for distribution. Offer to pay rent, security deposits or even electricity bills. The next category is volunteer. Right now, the VA hospitals and facilities are not open to visitors. That's not open to visitors. However, they are open to donations. You just have to contact the volunteer services, set up an appointment and deliver your items. They will open up again and we want to be ready when they do. Become a regular. VAVS volunteer and invite others. VAVS stands for Veteran Affair Volunteer Service. Provide supplies to those who volunteer with coffee, donuts, and hand sanitizer. Track all your VAVS hours into the VAVS tracking system at the facility. Another category is serve veterans in your area. Ladies, please remember to check with your local health department and your legion so you can follow your county's Center for Disease Control CDC's guidelines. 
department president, special project this year is Honor Flight of Florida. This is for World War II, Korean War, or Vietnam veterans to fly to Washington, D.C. to see their monuments. Did you know there are nine hubs in Florida? Naples, Winter Springs, St. Petersburg, Fort Lauderdale, Tallahassee, Stewart, Northport, Rockledge, and Lady Lake. Donate to your local hub. Volunteer to be an escort. Volunteer to send them off at an airport and or welcome them home. Volunteer at your local office. Use your office skills to help that local hub. Make monetary donations. Other ways to serve veterans in your area are drive veterans to doctor appointments or run errands. Visit with veterans and remember them on special occasions. Sew quilts for quilts of valor. Treat veterans for two tickets. I'm sorry, let's start that sentence over ladies. Treat veterans to tickets to movies or sporting events. Buy school supplies. Throw that baby shower. Send care packages to military kids who are headed off to college. The next category is assist veterans with accessing all their VA benefits, not just health care. Help eligible veterans attain benefits through referrals. Encourage them to use the VA health care system and its services, including hospitals, community-based outpatient clinics, vet centers, etc. Invite the local county or state service officer to be the guest speaker at a unit event. Our fifth category is support. Support the rehabilitation and healing of veterans through arts, crafts, and hobbies. The Creative Arts Festival is one way you can help. Donate to your local or national Creative Arts Fest Festival. Identify arts, crafts, and hobby projects targeted to veterans. They could be writing, oral history recordings, quilting, and gardening also. Contribute donated supplies to help, help supplement visual veteran artists' needs for their projects. Donate music instruments. Donate money through department. These funds will help local veterans attend state and national wheelchair games Paralympics, etc. The next category is remembering and supporting the caregivers of veterans. Sit with veterans to give their caregiver a well-deserved time off. Invite caregivers to a luncheon held in their honor. Find out the needs and concerns these caregivers may have. And familiarize yourself with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation for Caregivers. Okay, the seventh category is help the American Legion. You're not only going to help the Legion, you're going to help the State Department of Veteran Affairs, Chamber of Commerce. You're going to help those organizations promote job fairs for veterans and their families. When this is over, there are going to be even more veterans out of work. Host an information table at a local job fair. Support the Legion by helping host a local job fair at your post home. Job fairs today might even be conducted virtually. Let's be a mentor. Let's be a career e-mentor for women's veterans. Use electronic communications like Facebook, Skype, etc. to mentor these amazing women. The e-mentoring network virtually pairs female veterans with career mentors and subject matter experts for guidance and support. Let's not forget to volunteer for Habitat for Humanity, specifically if a house build is supported by the American Legion. I ask you to never forget our veterans. They are the reason we enjoy the freedoms that we cherish. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. Now it's time for awards. The first department award is the Dorothy Smith Award. This is awarded annually to the unit that reports the best all around VA in our program or project. 
The second department award is the Teresa Galileo Award. This is awarded annually to the unit with the most creative veterans event. Please refer to your unit guide for the rules. Copies are on the department website under VANR, and I need to receive your entries no later than 30 days prior to department convention. National has several awards that can be found in the VANR program action plan that is on the department website. Florida, we've got this. We're gonna make it through this tough time and come out the other side even stronger. Oh, members of the American Legion Auxiliary, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And now I want to talk a little bit about reporting. I just want to touch on mid-year. I've had a lot of units and members concerned that they couldn't do enough for our veterans. What can I report? What if I have nothing to report? If you have nothing to report, then put no activity, but still send in your report, but think about it. Did you still try to gather donations? Depending on the county in our state, some of the counties opened up for a little bit and then they shut down for a little bit. So if you were able to collect donations, if you were able to help your neighbor who is a veteran, you still can put that on your report. Don't forget that uh, mid-year reports are going to go to your VANR district chairman by December 1st. Please refer to my program action plan. Um, look on department website, the mid-year report is on there. And then in turn, the district chairman for veteran affairs and rehabilitation has to have it to me by uh, December 15th. I don't want you to work uh, excuse me, I don't want you, I do want you to work, but I don't want you to worry about reporting. Reach out to me, use my email, use my phone number that's in the unit guide. Ask me, talk to me, talk to other unit members in your district. Uh, that is a wonderful tool that you can use. And please just don't not send in a report. We need to hear what you have tried to do during all of this. It could be something simple as sewing masks for the VA hospitals and somehow they got through or you gave them to veterans that you knew were going to the VA hospital because the veterans were not um, kept from the VA hospitals. It was just us, volunteers, the public. So please reach out to us, keep up the hard work and dedication and I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I want you and your family to stay healthy and safe. I love all of you. Have a great day. I would like to thank President Ann King Smith for the appointment as UDNR chairman. Robin Burke and I have been working with the problems with the units around our state. We had one unit turn in their charter because the members felt they could not continue. The district president and I helped to transfer these members to our other units in their area or to unit 400, which is our department unit. By working with the members throughout the state, we found our biggest problems were with personalities. Members not wanting to share knowledge or letting others try doing a program with a different twist. Because of the pandemic, we had to accept a lot of change it did affect our units and they felt that they could not do their programs. These members in our units just needed to think outside the box and think of other ways of accomplishing their goals. I would like to thank our department staff for writing instructions on conducting our unit elections. Yes, it was a little challenging, but I think all in all, everyone did a great job. Some unit suggestions on how to do things without a meeting. Some units use Zoom had, and had virtual meetings. Robin and I assisted 14 units. I am sure there are, there are other units that are having problems, but they have not contacted us yet for assistance. Please give us a call. I also conducted a trial. I hear that unit is doing well. The members are now working together for the betterment of our organization. When you have a serious problem, sometimes we need to take proper action. 
The pandemic has caused a lot of frustration for the units. To assist us in doing our job as active members of the American Legion Auxiliary, we need to take advantage of all the trainings that are given, whether it be ABC school or having your chairman explain their chairmanship. When we are asking a member to take a unit elected officer position, we need to make sure they really understand what they are being asked to do. If someone just takes the position and does not perform their duties, then the unit will soon be back in problems. All of us need to rededicate ourselves to the American Legion Auxiliary, their unit who, of where they are a member of. We were not born with the knowledge of how to conduct all unit pro programs. Training is the best way to learn about our great organization. You may just need to ask a question or discuss an idea. We are here to help. Please do not wait until the members of your unit will not work together or perform their duties. I hope this pandemic will be over soon so we can get back to our normal routine or something close to that. It has been a privilege working with the units, assisting them through their rough spots. Thank you for allowing us to come into your unit and assist working with your problems. Serving Veterans Daily, Irma Worley. Hi, everyone. For the ones that don't know me, I am Wanda Brandt, your first Vice Department President. I want to welcome you all in and thank you for taking the time to stop by. What can I say? about the pandemic and year 2020. What a year it has been. When I addressed the coronavirus last year, in a, in a million years, I never thought I would be addressing you at this time in October 2020, still as First Vice President. My term this year could be divided into two periods, BC and AC before the coronavirus 19 and after coronavirus 19. This extension was not something anyone could have envisioned. However, the coronavirus is something we had to deal with, adapt to, and overcome. I know that we were all disappointed that we did not have convention and that some of our programs had to be canceled. However, American Legion Auxiliary has never been about a self. It's not about us, it's about our veterans, our children, and our community. We need to work together in our communities and, and let our light shine to help where we can. For the ones that have lost their jobs or just struggling, for as American Legion Auxiliary, we are needed more now than ever. I need you to stand up strong, the American Legion needs us, and our community needs us. Let me read you something I saw on news and was on Facebook last month. An Army veteran, Ronnie McNute, age 33, a Mississippi man who served two tours of duty in Iraq, who wrote, unquote, Someone, someone in your life needs to hear that they matter, that they are loved, that they have a future. Be the one to tell them. Quote, this was written by Ronnie McNute, who live streamed his suicide through social media during this pandemic, as he shared his heartbreaking final message. Did we catch that final message? Be the one to tell them they do matter. I know we are not professional counselors, but we are people who care, and we belong to the greatest organization in America. So please reach out. I know our commander, Rick Johnson, has asked the American Legion to reach out and do buddy check for our members. And all Ron Minute was asking someone to reach out love him and our veterans. I know at Unit 129, Jacksonville Beach, 
Not just the Legion does the buddy checks, our auxiliary also does it for our members. We listen and see if there's anything we can do for them. Be the one to tell them you matter and you are loved. Tell that veteran that they matter and thank them for they defended us and this wonderful country. If there is one request that I would like to ask of you for this year, start doing that buddy check once a month. Reach out. Some people won't ask for help. Encourage your members at your post to reach out and offer assistance to other veterans in your area. Please be particular attentive to seniors, a population that is especially at risk to this virus. The important part is to let that veteran in your community know American Legion cares and is here and can provide assistance for them. The coronavirus pandemic has affected all in one way or another. Some have had especially hard times. Some have lost loved ones. Some have lost their jobs. The pandemic has taken its toll on all of our members, their families, and loved ones. Now, especially now, through our social media distance and our mask wearing, and everyone seems to be on edge, unaware of what the next uncertainty is going to bring. And we all have lost our patience. We need to show more patience and, ki and be kinder to one another. Yes, I'm with most of you. I am ready for 2020 to be over. However, this could be one of the American Legion's Auxiliary's finest years. 2020 has made us think out of the box, step out of our comfort zone, think differently, brainstorm new ideas for our programs, listen to each other, share resources, and to grow. We are meeting differently now, parking lots, Zoom meetings. We are serving our members differently. This pandemic does not get, a, this pandemic has not gotten us down. We are still standing American Legion Auxiliary, and we are still serving our veterans, children, and our communities. Remember, it is not the price of, of a mission to be a member, to belong to American Legion Auxiliary. It is the price of someone who paid that price for us to be eligible to belong in this organization. If you need to share a thought or two, drop me a line. I guarantee you, you won't be interrupted because I care about you and everyone in our Legion family. So in closing, I want to remind you all to get out and vote November the 3rd. If you have not done early or mail-in ballots, voting is one of our Constitution rights as American it is our duty to vote. Remember, we are eligible to be part of this great organization because someone we, we love has fought for, someone, someone has died for, to give us that right to vote. Please be informed of the issues and vote on November the 3rd. Stay strong and healthy until we meet again, and thank you. Our department secretary will now be reading some of the department awards from the 2019-2020 auxiliary year. Hi, I'm here to present a few awards that were not presented in the chairman's uh, programs earlier in the day. We have the American Legion Department Award, Doris E. Hahn Award, for the 2019-2020 Best All-Around Americanism Activities. And it goes to Unit 200. Nancy Howie is the chairman. Congratulations, Nancy. And then we have a National Award for the 2019-2020 Americanism Essay Contest Award, Southern Division Class 5 Best Essay written on how can we address the health and well-beings of our veterans, military, and families. Presented to Delaney Oliver, Department of Florida. Congratulations, Delaney. And last but not least, we have the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida Shirley Harbor Award for 2019-2020. 
And this award goes to Unit 286. Congratulations. At this time, our department secretary, Patty McDonald, will read the endorsements for the upcoming auxiliary year. The following endorsements have been received at department headquarters via USPS certified return receipt mail. Six district president. Unit 80 has an endorsed Paula Fox as the district six president. Department third vice president. Unit 80 has endorsed Charlotte Bass for the office of department third vice president. Department second vice president. Unit 158 has endorsed Denise D. Bell for the office of department second vice president. Department first vice president. Unit 238 has endorsed Jane Hardacre for the Office of Department First Vice President. Department President. Unit 129 has endorsed Wanda Brandt for the Office of Department President. Madam President, that concludes the endorsements at this time. Our department chaplain will now lead us in our annual memorial service. Good morning. Welcome to the American Legion Auxiliary Family Sunday Service. Our flags are in place. I will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As our journey has brought us together and our world is changing, let us pay tribute to those men and women who have been working so hard throughout this pandemic. Without their dedication and their will to continue through it, we would not feel safe. As we approach November, let us also pay, pay tribute to those men and women of the armed forces who are still fighting for our country. And let us remember those who have sacrificed so much for us and our fallen soldiers. Thank you to all veterans for your service. We honor you and appreciate you. You are our heroes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and all that you provide to our world. We ask that you heal all those who are ill and please heal our world as we continue to fight and stay healthy in this pandemic. Please help our veterans stay healthy and safe as they visit family and friends. We need to keep them in our hearts and minds and we pray that they will just stay with us. All this we ask on thy holy name, amen. There comes a time when we all just have to sit back, take a breather, and listen to our hearts, and listen to our country. We are hurting. We all are. We all miss each other. We miss our hugs. We miss our handshakes. We just miss seeing each other. Let us all remember that our new world is changing. Our old world we love and will never forget. Hopefully we can get back to those days. But as we change, we need to stay safe. We need to stay healthy. So let us all remember to just check in on each other. Even if it's just a text by phone or by email or on Facebook, any kind of social media. Just check on the elderly. Make sure they're okay. I had a neighbor last night call me at three o'clock in the morning because she fell. I got up, I went over and helped her. She was in the hospital most of the night. She's home now and I told her, don't bend over. She had vertigo, very badly. I brought her home and I told her, I will take care of your cats. You are not to bend over for two days. 
She's going to see her doctor tomorrow, and hopefully that will be fine. Once the doctor clears her, then I'll let her bend over, but until then, she knows better than to try and pick anything up without me being there. I know it was personal, but I hope you understand what I'm saying to check on the elderly. They need us more than ever right now. Just give them a call, go over, say hi, just be a friend. We all need that right now in this pandemic. Thank you for listening. Quote from Mother Teresa, I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. Together, we can do great things. Let us all remember that. In closing, I would like to say a prayer. Father, as our service comes to a close, we thank you for your love, your guidance, and your wisdom as we continue to cope with the virus that exists in our world. We ask that you help us to remember our veterans and help us to honor their service and remember those who have sacrificed their lives for our freedoms. Remember our fallen soldiers and their families. Help us all to remember the POWs and MIAs that are still missing, but most of all, Father, help protect the men and women of the armed forces who are still fighting for our country to keep it free. All this we ask in thy holy name, amen. Our flags are in place, hand salute, two. This concludes our Sunday service. I'm sorry it was so short and we didn't have music, but convention memorial service will be a whole lot better as long as we're together. And even if we're not, it will be much better than this. Thank you all for watching this. And I hope you enjoyed my service. Have a great day. God bless you all. Father, we thank you for helping us have a very successful conference. We thank our officers, office staff for their diligence and knowledge to be able to put this all together. Thank you for, to the presenters for their presentations. And we are sure that it will help our members learn from them and continue with our work. As we leave here today, may we pass this information on to those members who could not be here. We ask that you protect our department president, Ann King-Smith, and her staff as they continue with spreading our mission throughout Florida. Protect the men and women of the armed forces and bring them home soon. And never let the POWs and MIAs know that we are still searching. Never let them forget that we will not stop. We also ask that you protect our fallen soldiers and their families. Protect our members and bring everyone together again soon. All this we ask on thy holy name. Amen.